Audiobook title, When I Got Reincarnated as a Spider with My Goddess by Noel Alicia Volume 04 Prologue, Lily that's the name my parents gave to me. I the daughter of the true hero and the true demon lord and being a member of the royal demon family I also possess the title of a true demon lord candidate. I love my parents so much because they always get me what I want and always play with me. There was never a moment I felt alone or sad with them. Until then I had been living in a mansion with only my parents. I did not meet anyone nor anyone came to meet me. One could even say I was left to believe that we are the only living beings in this whole world. But when I turned 10, mother and father suddenly started talking to me about going to the surface. At first I was amazed to hear that there was a much wider world on the outside and lots of people just like me lived there. All these years I had been learning magic from father and wielding weapons and also practicing martial arts with mother. Though I had always hated learning spell casting, languages of different races and other long literature which I find to be utterly useless. Mother is always right if you want something just use your raw strength, who needs to study tactics, etiquettes, politics, laws and administering nations. That's why I used to spend most of the time training with mother than with father who would always insist or try to teach me whenever possible. But I still loved both of them equally because when it came to matters related to food I could only count on him for help. When I had completed my swordsmanship training and chose my main weapon as a death scythe, I then learned to manifest a soul weapon. My soul weapon manifested into binding chains which I can coincidentally attach to my scythe's handle and use it in combo attacks. It was a perfect fit for me to tackle mages and for my weapon to reach far distances. 6. But when we started talking about Demon Academy, I learned the truth that my parents won't be accompanying me to the surface. Th at all this time, we had been living inside a dangerous labyrinth, where not even light can reach from the surface. If I uttered a word about my correct address then people would consider it akin to hell. But that did not bother me. I was frustrated by the thought that I would be traveling alone. There will be no one beside me whom I would know. And when I was told the reason for them not accompanying me, my heart was broken. How dare those people on the outside could do this to mother and father when they were only trying to protect them. They took their help for granted. Even a child like me could understand that. I began hating each one of them. It was not my parents' fault that they can't go with me. It was the fault of those people who are in joy and gee their peaceful lives after the war ended. For maintaining peace, my parents had conceded their own freedom. They had to pay the price so that those of the future generation did not have to worry and could together work to reach new heights. But I too being their only child had to understand their situation and since they wanted me to not be bound by those foolish ideals, I had to venture in the outside world on my own corporation. On the outside it sounded a joke to me. When I reached the surface and enrolled in the Demon Academy under an alias and my identity hidden with the help of a father's acquaintance who was aware of their existence, I realized that all their sacrifice was for naught. Even though on the outside it might have looked peaceful but everyone was trying to get ahead of one another. While some of the races worked in isolation, humans tried their best to lessen the power of demons while pretending to look the other side. Same went for the demon lords and generals who secretly plotted against humans and other species pretending to be neutral. 7. Simply put it was a cold war with everyone holding back each other. Everyone yearned for power and the best solution they could come up was to push others down than to focus on self-growth and become prosperous by their own hard work and intellect. Race protection rights held no meaning when slave trade flourished at the same time, producing surplus food had no meaning if they store them to hoard money instead of sharing them with deficit areas. Races that boasted of their supremacy had no credibility if they remained isolated and cut off from the rest of the world and reject everything that did not fit with their own obsolete views. I hated each one of them because they separated me from my parents. They made me feel lonely and sad. My parents too must have felt the same. Here I was as happy returning to home after such a long time and I find another being in my house. Nonetheless a low level human. This was supposed to be my home and only we three belonged here. So I did a fourth one showed up. Out of pure anger and jealousy I launched a frontal physical attack with my death scythe. That would do it. It's all over for her. 
That's what I thought when I was hung in midair, the blade of my scythe softly held in the intruder's hand. A beautiful human girl may be three or four years older than me, but this attack would have killed even a high-class general of a human kingdom. What's going on? Did she fake her status? That's not possible her level is lower than mine. Does that mean her stats and skills are far above mine that I cannot see them? And when I ask for her identity after I honorably declared mine she calls herself my sister. I did not let anger consume me, but I rechecked her status from top to bottom. How can she share the same family name? 8. And even have the same title of true demon lord candidate, though some titles still appear hazy to me. How ridiculous, I will never accept this. Never. She too must be from the outside. This house is only meant for me and my parents. They have no right to be here and interfere in our happy lives. There is no place for negotiation. She is dangerous if she can pretend things up to this level. Stopping a direct hit, maybe she is physically strong. So how about magic? Even though I might not have yet mastered it like father. I would still be considered one of the strongest magic user in the outside world. Oh halos of fire, scorch the wind and purge my enemy. A large blast of fire storm rained on her from every direction. The earth shook and the nearby trees got burnt with the exceeding temperature. But after a few moments when the red flames got cleared, she was still standing unscathed and smiling. How could she still smile? She is my enemy so why is she not even fighting back? Does she think I am too weak to be bothered with? I used another spell and large boulder floated mid-air, while this time I added fire attribute to them and launched several of these projectiles at her. I needed to figure out how she is blocking my attack. Just as one of my giant flaming boulder was about to hit, a blue transparent cubicle plate blocked it and instead of the rock shattering into pieces or the shield being damaged, the whole thing simply vanished. It was different from anti-magic as if my magic had just suddenly disappeared or clearly put became non-existent. It was similar to father's unique skill, but this time there were no traces left behind, as if she herself had consumed my magic. That's the feeling I got. No matter. I just need to use a much stronger spell break through her defense and attack at the same time. This time for sure I will get to her. 9. After Alicia had introduced herself, she thought she would be able to talk to her sister but it seems that she did not take to her liking, even though she greeted her with a smile. She decided not to fight with her own sister and settle matters peacefully. Maybe she might be a bit of an aggressive type, comparing her to those of single hot-minded little sister who pretended to be an adult. That's the kind of analogy Alicia came up with when she compared it to one of her family drama books she read before. Though she blocked a physical attack single-handedly and for the magical attacks she used divine barrier magic and gluttony at the same time. Suddenly she felt a tremendous surge of magic particles in the surrounding being manipulated by Lily. A black sun appeared mid-sky still growing in size and black fluid dripped from its surface which even melted the ground. She felt that she had already seen such kind of dark magic before. Not just only that but it seemed to have been combining with the things around because of its huge revolving mass. The black sun came flying at her, but Alicia did not flinch for a second. Black thin threads out of the blue manifested out of thin air and stopped the growing black sun, slowly consuming it before it could do any more damage to the beautiful forest where she came to read books. At the same time the barrage of multiple strikes Lily launched with her scythe on her body. She without putting much of effort matched up with Lily's quick speed and her hands covered in some sort of blue flashy light blocked all the attacks. Lily had no choice but to retreat and come up with another strategy. She was now shocked to see her strongest magic vaporizing in front of her, just because it got stuck in a weird net. With all her strength tested, she had no choice but to use her final trump card. 10. Soul Weapon Manifest Signet Chains As Lily spoke these words her vicinity got surrounded by thick black chains. Alicia was shocked. She had never seen something like this before. She felt that those chains were not made of any matter nor they had any physical form but had a totally different composition entirely which made her even more curious. But she could not let it get the best of her. She wanted to prove her sister that she was strong. 
That's what ALICE thought of it to be one of the tests where you prove your worth to form kinship with someone. Till now she had just blocked and was not on the offensive, but this time she started taking the fight seriously. Absolute zero. A thin crystal sword made of ice formed in her left hand. She thought that this would be enough if she was going to use a weapon. On the other hand, Lulai failed to recognize the sword made of absolute ice and the huge absurd amounts of magic spent to form it. In her eyes, she thought that she was being mocked as not worthy of using a real weapon against your opponent, even though she was giving her all. She launched her chains trying to bind her in a single throw, while at the same time trying to strike with her scythe at the right moment. But things did not go as she had thought. It was not about only the strength of her ice sword but the way she moved her sword was in such harmony that the chains were drifted in messing up or rather following the wheel duress instruction were dancing on the tune of the enemy and colliding in themselves. Then with the hilt of the sword she blocked Lily's attack at the same time bringing it to a stalemate. 11. Lily could not help but feel that it was one of her mother's single sword techniques. She was not only defeated badly but all her claims were slowly being crushed by her fearsome foe. And yet instead of laughing at her or mocking her, she was still giving me that warm smile. She was unable to come up with another strategy and felt so helpless in her own house. But why? At that moment Caroline and Xylan teleported to the part of the forest which was turned into a disaster-prone zone by a small exchange of punches between their daughters. Caroline gracefully nullified the soul weapon on Lily while at the same time drifted the scythe and sword away in diametrically opposite sides. Lily and Alicia stop fighting and destroying this forest, we should be having a family meeting now so let's go into the house. Lily had nothing to speak anymore. She thought that her mother had finally come to help her, but suddenly she ordered both of them into the house and stop fighting most important of all the person which she up till no w had considered to be an intruder, but she was baffled when her mother called out to her by her name. What was the actual truth awaiting her? Why is she the only one still in the dark? She thought to herself. 12, 13, Chapter, 1 How to Conquer Your Little Sister But Mum Listen Lily she is your big sister now, Alicia is also a part of our family, and Flora too is now our housemaid. Caroline every time felt so excited when she saw Flora wearing a maid outfit from her original world and behaving exactly how a maid should do. Actually the maids in this world wore completely different attire which makes them look more like slaves and only those serving under royalty would live in better conditions. But isn't she just a golem, that looks like a human? No. No Lily she is a humanoid robot, or so your big sister calls her. She is far from a golem, but she has a consciousness of her own. Zal tried to explain to her daughter how brilliant of a creation Flora was. A totally new field of magic research was underway. Yes, Miss Lily I am here to serve you till you find me useful. I am looking forward to your stay in this mansion. What Ms. S. Me. I was too flustered by her calling me like that because I never had an attendant before, not here since we three lived, 14, alone, but even on the surface too because I had to hide my true identity from everyone. Dinner is ready. The one personating my sister who calls herself Alicia, no rather my parents gave her that name walked in with a huge clay pot and placed it on fire in the middle of the table. I bent a little and inside it fresh vegetables and tofu were simmering in hot soup. Different dipping sauces were also served by Flora. After praying I saw my parents enjoying the food while dipping the meat in the sauce and savoring every bite. It really looked mouth-watering and the smell it released in the atmosphere drew me in even closer. I followed what my mother did and it was so delicious, I had never eaten something so tasty before, not even on the surface, it was as if the food itself was speaking to me and asking me to enjoy it in every bite with freshness. Even my body started feeling a bit energetic. Papa, did you cook this tasty dish? I have never eaten something gee so yummy before. Since mother don't know cooking, Father was the only one who could make something to the point to say that it was edible. Maybe at last after staying here for so many years he finally learned cooking magic. Well, Alicia cooked it. Why don't you ask her? My opinion broke in an instant. Lily did you like the hot pot? She smiled as usual at me, as if my heart skipped a beat. 
I wanted to shout in joy and tell her that how awesome the dish was, and I can eat it all day, cook me more. Well, I am sure I can get better dishes for myself on the outside. Oh, I see. Then, next time I will try something even better just for you. 15. Really, just for me? I almost jumped out of my seat in excitement. Can there real why be something tastier than this? I couldn't just blurt out that I am looking forward to it. Amu, just for my little sister. My heart started beating even faster. Her childish sweet voice was unbelievably charming. Why doesn't she realize that I don't hate like her? And why has she chosen to sit just next to me? I wanted her to hate me, but instead the opposite was happening with me. Wait, could it be dot no that's it she is using some kind of charming magic. If I free mother and father from that charm magic then, we will kick her out. Wait but who will make this hot pot for me then? I know as a punishment we will make her cook delicious food for us. I will make her work to the bone and make her beg for mercy. I am going to show her who is the boss here. I will not let her interfere anymore in my personal life. So, how do we free people from charm magic? Exactly, by giving them a shock. When I will have my chance I will strike when she will least expect it. Just you wait. It's better you start counting backwards from now. I looked back at her and gave a sinister laughter. Hua hua, Lila you shouldn't disturb other s while eating. It's bad manners and correct your stupid expression. I am sorry mother. I quieted down and started eating my food without making another noise. Is something troubling you Lila? Why don't you try this piece I specially picked it for you. Say R. 16. I turned to the voice and seeing a meat piece cooked so uniformly from every side and covered nicely in all kind of sauce approaching me. I could not help it but take a bite. Chomp. It's so good. I spoke as I munched over the piece, but I quickly realized that I was letting my guard down. I so easily took her bait. But it's really good there's no denying it. I quickly left as I took a full bite and in embarrassment started looking in another direction. She thinks she is very clever, roping in me and mother and further by her devious cooking. But I have seen through her plot and will unveil her true hideous nature today. I am glad you liked it. No, it's not like that. It was good, dot no I am saying, that. Just stay away from me. I quickly needed to make my move or I will too be charmed by her good nature. I know that's all on the surface, she must be plotting something, maybe she wants all my stuffed toys, or, has she already raided my room, I need to check my room quickly after finishing my food, Alicia, the food was really good, I never would have thought I would get to eat this original dish ever again, I could have eaten more if only I had more space left in my belly. Both mother and father complimented the meal. I really liked it too, but I think we should not encourage her that much and get her a big head. I know from inside she must be laughing at us now, thinking that how easy we are on her and so easily allowed to captivate our decisions. I will try other variant of the same dishes again. Flora why don't you help me clean this up? 17. Flora produced a giant water ball and put all the plates and other cutlery items in it. The things started rotating inside at a great speed, while white froth got added to it all on itself. Within 10 seconds all the dishes started flying out of it all neat and tidy and ranged itself in the cupboard. Wow, I have never seen a golem use magic before. Well, Flora has magic veins or rather in her case magic circuits similar to humans made of magitite threads so fine that are invisible to naked are mixed with your sister's special spiderweb skill. But as per the research we have so far progressed into each robot excelling in only one magic attribute. As you can see for Flora she can control water element and they don't even need to chant spells. Golems in this world were only supposed to do manual labor. Some advanced golems could be excellent physical fighters with exceptional strength which can be later strengthened by fortification magic. Usually golems are mindless creatures who only follow the orders of their master from whom they receive their magic powers, but a golem to conduct magic on its own is unheard of. If the outside world knew of such technology existing then this might even lead to a war, since golems are primarily used for construction sometimes as soldiers to increase military strength or as special bodyguards. Usually the dwarves are the ones who produce the best golems in this world, 
If they knew about Flora then they would die of jealousy. After this mother and father sat and told me how Alicia ended up here. Honestly, it still did not struck me that she was so much younger than me in age and I still had to call her big sister. How can she be so mature than me? It was unbelievable to also hear that she had been traveling the floors of this labyrinth for a year and finally decided to stay here and learn magic from father and swordsmanship for mother. 18. I was at a loss. Wasn't father and mother job to teach me those things, then why are they teaching it to her? Does that mean they will spend less time with their own daughter? Do they not love me anymore? But the one who suddenly appears one day out of nowhere. I know this is the right time to strike. Alicia is preparing for desert so I can do whatever I like. I beckoned to father to come near me. I covered my mouth with my palm and he understood that I had to speak something to him secretly. He brought his left ear closer to me, to listen to what I had to speak. W-W-A-K-K-E-E-U-U-P-P -E -E I shouted as loudly as I could in his ears. I even used wind magic to increase the amplitude of the sound by oscillating the wind faster and reverberated near his eardrums. Further fell down with some white foam leaking out of his mouth. It's a good sign I guess the spell must be wearing off. He must have been paralyzed for it. Mother on the other hand was just watching us as if it was our usual father-daughter playing whisper games. And I won. I have prepared a sweet dish. My so-called or now going to be so was called big sister walked into the room. I knew she would come to check. But with that amount of shock any kind of charm magic could be lifted. I was elated with joy. Her game is over. Now I and father will work together to wake mother up from her allured state. It was going all according to the plan. Ah. Pass me one here. Mother helped Alicia to pick up the tray from her. She doesn't had to be so nice to her. She could even lift me in her arms. Which she every time did when I was young. But this time she didn't even gave me any attention or asked how my experience in the outside world was. Let me have one too. A familiar voice uttered his request. 19. Hugh. Father was up again, but for some reason there was no difference in his demeanor. He was still acting the same and affectionate towards Alicia. What about the plan? What about me? What about having fun with only us three? When I was leaving the academy, every one of my classmates told me how they are looking forward to meeting their family and I was in the same boat. No I was much more enthusiastic about it. What? How could this be? What about lifting the charm spell? What are you talking about Lili? Is it something related to shouting in my ears? No, I mean, Lili, you are acting a bit weird. Did something happen? Why can't they see? What's happening here? This was not how it was supposed to be, I did not have this in my mind. It was going against all my imaginative experiences in which I was going to enjoy with my family and tally all the love they were supposed to give me when I was away. I started running. And as I passed her, I gave a scornful look. Lily had left the living room, leaving all the others in confusion. But Caroline smiled and assured everyone that things will turn out fine. Alicia, don't worry, she will eventually come to like you. We just need to give her some time to adjust. 20. I know, Mum. Saying that she took her seat near Caroline and passed the sweet dish to them, while she later had it in mind to give one to Lily too. Mom, I wanted to ask, what kind of weapon Lily was using? You mean the soul weapon? Yeah, I think that's what she calls it. It did not have any physical presence but gave a totally new kind of feeling. Since, you can tell the difference now, I think it's time for you to get your own soul weapon too. Get mine. Yes there is a way to activate it. Sometimes forcibly, through training or it manifests on itself when in dire need. Well there is no exact way for anyone. Wait isn't it too early for Alicia? Why don't we reconsider it? She is already so powerful, I don't think having or not having a soul weapon would make a difference to her. Xylan the demon lord sounded a bit in distress with the decision her wife was making in behest. You are too of a were I were Zyl. Always worrying about your daughters more than required. You had the same problem during Lily too, but isn't she doing well with it? It's time that Alicia learns it too. One week from now so get ready. Well, I wonder what her soul weapon will be like with almost limitless and immeasurable life force and magic power. 
Well soul weapons are based on the form your life force takes place and even its special ability. I would like to know what that will be for Alicia. 21. I am too excited for it mum. So let's do it. I want to learn every kind of fighting technique from you and get stronger. 22. Lilius Callon Ashbourne. I kept on running until I reached my room on the second floor. It was intact, in the same pristine condition I had left it but it was still clean as new with no amount of dust loitering on ground or the furniture. The bed cover and other fabric material smelled so nice and fresh. Maybe Flora that humanoid golem might have been looking after my room in my absence. All my toys are safe, so she was not after them then. I sat on the bed and tried to think harder. How could I have forgotten that mental attacks don't work on father and mother, after all they are the strongest in this world. So. They do really see her as their own daughter and she is a part of family now, but why do I feel so left out? I want to talk with her, but it's as if there is a virtual wall preventing me to do so. I had been hostile to her from the beginning, while she kept on being nice to me. What does she really think about me? What am I her to her? Or what I want her to be for myself? I always wanted a friend here to play someone of my age, similar to me, but she is so bright in whatever she does. I can't even come closer. Oh, I can't even think properly now. So I will all let it out at once. I tease all her fault. Asking me what was happening? Can't they see I am feeling lonely? Telling me about how great she is both in magic and swordsmanship. How she can use all six attributes. I too can use four basic attributes. You should know that. And that is considered to be exceptional. If she is good at handling swordsmanship. Then I too have my soul weapon. She doesn't have it. Huh. She is still lagging behind me in training. 23. Did they stop liking me because she is better than me? She has got good looks like a princess. I lost to her in a battle and she can even cook such delicious food items. What can I do? I know they told me about our adventures of defeating monsters on the other floors. If I can defeat one too, then... Will they start liking me again? Then we can finally be together as we used to be. I waited in my room till it was night and everyone would have retired to sleep. I used wind magic to scout all the hallways and found no one there. It was all clear and everyone was in their room. I leapt out of the window and like a cat landed on the green turf without making any noise. I had to maintain stealth in my secret mission. Meanwhile Alicia, who had been asleep till now in her own room, opened her eyes and lifted her head from the book she had been reading. The barrier she had put up around the mansion received some movements in the vicinity. She instantly knew who it was and what they were planning to do. After all she herself committed such fool's errand once. She needed to look after her family and so had decided what to do next. I left the outer gate and started moving down the floors. To my surprise everything was cleared up till floor 89. There were no monsters left. With each floor the monsters get stronger and stronger and have much more unique abilities. If I am able to take down such a strong monster then my level will surely skyrocket. If I find it too much for myself than I can handle then I will simply retreat. 24. Floor 90 turned out to be a wasteland with rocky terrain. While some points had higher elevation, at the same time there were deep craters too. It was a huge floor expanding more than a kilometer in diameter. As for the monster I couldn't sense its presence, so I moved in even further. I searched behind some of the huge boulders but it was nowhere to be found. Could it be that it is hiding its presence? But I had realized it too late, because until now I couldn't feel this humongous existence behind me. I quickly turned around and drifted myself backward in flash conjuring layers of barrier as they got scorched in deep crimson flames. A great shadow came upon me blocking all light. It was a 40 meters tall and 8 meter wide crimson fox with 9 tails each extending outwards up to a length of 10 meters themselves. The beautiful crimson tails with golden lining and fire surrounding them really displayed its glory in being a mythical creature. This 9 tail fox loomed over me like a huge building with the wind blowing on his command. So. It's a demigod. Who would have thought that a being like this would be residing on one of the floors? I have heard mother and father mentioning about them participating in the Great Wars. They are just about at the same level as the High Tier Angels. Since they are not a god I should be able to defeat them, but underestimating it will do me more harm. The Nine-Tail Fox stared down at me, 
to whom I would appear like a blot on grey paper. He raised his head towards the sky and howled, Don't look away, your opponent is me. I brandished my scythe and brought it on full force over the nine tails belly, but before it could make a direct hit, its paws interrupted midway and pushed me away. 25 26 they were huge and at the same time the sharp fangs were as sharp as my blade. Should I retreat, it seems to be beyond my capabilities. Maybe I will first level up and then fight against it. No, I have come this far. If I leave now she would make fun of me and I would be considered a disgrace. What would mother and father say? I just can't give up now without trying. I am not a loser who would give up and just run away. I needed to try harder. To prove myself I had to go beyond and do things myself. That's the lesson I learned on the outside world, if I wanted to enjoy the life there. I summon forth water, water storm. A huge vortex of water throttled at full force towards him, but from behind its enormous body the nine tails flicked about like thundering clouds and the blast was repelled. I had not given up. There were still so many things to try. I summoned my sole weapon. Signa air chains and started throwing them all over the wimpy fox while running round and round the huge beast, my shadow movement and drift skill at full work. Oh halos of fire, scorch the wind and purge my enemy. Several huge fire orbs surrounded the beast in a circle and launched at it at the same time. The attacks continued for a while, on the other hand the preparations were complete. My chains were now all around this monster and all I had to use now was its special ability. Bind the oracles, and siege the power. The fox let out a huge shriek. While it could not move neither it could use magic now. My chains up to a certain extent nullify the user's magic and at the same time absorb its life force and vitality. However at this point I am usually left vulnerable so it's only useful in a one-on-one -on -one fight. 27. And that's how it was supposed to be when suddenly the tails of the fox started glowing brightly and from the tip of the tail new giant foxes dropped on the ground. On appraisal it showed that they were the summons of this demigod and are called Cinder Fox. This was bad, if I had to protect myself either I had to leave the nine tail fox or let myself be bitten by these inferior monsters. The sheer number of these cinder fox kept on rising from ten to fifty and then in hundreds, producing so many at once meant that it had kept reserved power as an autonomous defense mechanism to be activated when its life force depletes at a drastic rate. It's fine if I let the chains go now, better than be surrounded by these many numbers. I am sure I can take nine tail fox on the next strike. My scythe will carve you into fine dressing material for my new stuffed toys and I will use your soft hair fur for making mufflers. You get that? Saying that I leapt into the sky and reaching almost half its height I aimed for its chest, maybe a little below the heart, hoping to leave a fatal blow. When unexpectedly the cinder fox reached a little above me and tried to attack, they must have used fire to propel themselves. This was not part of my plan. I had not thought that these summons could even do such a thing. I twisted my body and used the scythe to cut the two cinder foxes chasing me. But in my falling and before I could react one of its huge paws came straight at me. I used my scythe in a rough manner to block its huge claws from tearing through me. When after a cracking noise I was sent far flying off. Crashing into the ground falling again and again on the dusty hard ground. Blood spilled out from my mouth with several tearing marks on my body. 28. I suffered fatal injuries but thanks to my self-regeneration I had already started healing. But when all my attention should have been towards the approaching calamity, my thoughts were directed towards my scythe. Half of its blade broken while the rest was grumbling like sooth in my hands. How dot how dot could this be? It was supposed to be one of the strongest weapons. Just because I got overconfident and overstepped my boundaries, I lost my weapon. The gift from my parents, which they entrusted to me, it was gone, and before I could realize, tears started flowing through my eyes. I kept using my hands to wipe them. I am strong. I should never cry. Mother always told me not to lose heart even for a single moment when you are up against an enemy, whether weak or strong. But I was outclassed here. Without my scythe, I felt like I was nothing. My magic would do no good and I came here without informing someone. 
I looked around and hundreds of cinder foxes were watching me from an alleviated land with their hungry squinted half-moon-like eyes. While the earth kept on vibrating as the mythical beast approached me, he led out a huge howl which echoed in the sky and magic power started collecting near its mouth. The amount concentrated went far and beyond I had seen anything before. It could be comparable to one of the strongest spells of my father which he once showed it to me. The fire turned from yellow to red then to orange and finally a mixture of blue and red. For the first time I was experiencing fear in my life. Being outside the protection of my family and this regret to go overboard just because of my pride and greed to keep my parents all to myself. Maybe I will regret not talking to her to tell her how good the food was and 29 wait but why I am thinking of H.R. when I am about to vanish, I see it must be because I too have started liking her, her long white hairs wafted in the air as if I could feel their cool shade even in this burning place, her bright skin brilliant than the crimson flames and that calmness around her vanquished the fear in my heart, everything is going to be fine, you did great Lily. My body suddenly started feeling so light and this warmness was so comfortable than the high temperature of the surrounding. Watch out, it's going to launch a super powerful attack, run away. But she did not move but I was sure that she had clearly heard my words. Her posture was so stable and focused that even I could not move my eyes away from her. What is she doing here? That's the only thought that could cross my mind until the last moment before the strong beam of light from the beast's mouth would reach us. A small blue square barrier appeared in front of her and the attack got nullified. It was similar to what she did to me during our fight. The nine-tailed fox's scream shook the earth as it whipped its head around. It was much angrier than before after we were unharmed by one of its powerful attack. It let out a large shriek and all the hundreds of cinder fox started howling and directed their intense predatory pressure at us. For a moment I was scared by all the noise but later all of it turned into blank when I saw her smiling. Was she really smiling when there are so many going to attack us at the same time? Why don't she bring out a weapon? Might be that ice sword could prove useful against them but as if she wasn't even cognizant of those monsters surrounding us but staring at the giant nine-tailed fox analyzing it from top to bottom. 30. Suddenly many of them pounced upon us from the greater height with fireballs about to be launched from their mouth. She narrowed her vision and then all she did was raise her hand and utter a word. Dismantle. All the bodies of the cinder foxes split open from within with their blood bursting upon us like rain. While the corpses of the monsters got consumed into some kind of black threads, it was weird and I did not understood. Within the next few moments all the small foxes met the same fate. While I sat in disbelief, my hands on the ground and stream of tears still flowing through my eyes, my pain was gone. It must be she had casted a healing spell on me. No it was much more than that, I was feeling much stronger and livelier than before the fight began. And yet when I tried to lift myself up, my legs gave away, they were still shaking, let's leave, we should, run, we can't defeat it. I uttered choked out words between my sobs, just sit tight and watch as I take care of that animal who tried to hurt you, that's the simple reply she gave me, but those words instilled confidence and a sense of safety within me. That all is going to be fine with her around me. A red and blue long scabbard appeared near her waist. She put her hands backward and with a screech sound unsheathed a pair of two stunning white and black sword, the air around it as if vibrating at the sudden appearance or such a new chaotic power. I could sense that those weapons were stronger than any weapon I had ever seen before. Not even one of mother's weapons came close to the amount of magic and life force radiating out of those two. It was as if the two swords were, 31, alive, my high level appraisal skill failed to supply me with any information regarding them, taking a fighting stance much similar to mother she dashed towards the beast in a reckless charge as if all thoughts of death had been erased from her mind. Surprised by the sudden ambush, the nine-tailed fox instinctively swiped its paw from left to right, the air screamed as it got split into four directions. Whoosh. That's how big it was. S imply because of its huge size. It could play with the laws of nature, but she twisted in midair, 
stepping on its paw launched herself higher and within a second was neck to neck with the nine tail. The fox instinctively led out a huge fire breath, but she dodged it by drifting herself with the wind at its rear and swinging the black sword severed two of its tails. Kayak K-H-H-H. The nine tail fox's S-C-R-E-M shook the earth as it whipped its head around. My sister pulled back at the same time, while the tails had started to regenerate it was still shivering in pain. It prepared yet another powerful beam with five times the energy than before ready to burn us to our deaths. All it had to do was kill us two who were even smaller than its paws and yet it feared to act in a rushed manner. It was afraid of just the amount of magic particles being released from my sister's body. At the same time my sister rushed in again with her swords towards the fox. The white rays of the beam torched the entire area and I could feel the warm currents even this far, but my sister parried it with the black sword and all the rays as if got absorbed into it. The next thing I saw was, 32, the same beam being released by the white sword which burned the face its face. My sister continued her march and with a similar jump as before reached the rear of the wolf and swung her sword vertically upright. But this time the fox whipped its body around and crouched down to protect its tails. It was not going to fall for the same move again. That's what I thought when one of the limbs suffered a deep cut. Blood started to pour out and the fox lost its balance. Suddenly the body of this fox started glowing in divine light and explosions started occurring on the ground with destructive shock waves. But several blue colored hexagons appeared before me and I was unhurt. On the other hand, my sister was still engaged with the fox that was regenerating at a much faster rate. It moved its paws frantically and spitted crimson flames everywhere from its body. Even the blood which was flowing from the cuts turned into huge flares of fire. Even in that kind of harsh environment where the enemy had absolute advantage she was still overpowering the fox with her overwhelming combat ability and devastating magic prowess. Usually you fight such strong beast with all your seriousness and yet she was smiling and seemed to be having fun in the middle of battle. For a moment it felt that the battle was already over, and she was now just playing around with the fox and tormenting it. What thought actually struck me was who was more fearsome, the demigod or my sister. But things were not over yet. The fox was a demigod and was using a high-grade healing spell with divine attribute to heal itself at the same time. We needed something to blow it off in just a single hit. Is there really something she could do to blast off such a huge body? Maybe I could help but my legs were still not able to move and then I had lost my scythe. I had no way to support her, only a helpless child and a 33 burden. I was so pathetic to put her in a dangerous situation where she had to protect me and fight at the same time. I looked up and saw that my sister was for some reason amassing a lot of magic power around her hands. She launched herself even higher. Black threads appeared around her whole body and then suddenly two horns grew out of her head and two beautiful pair of black wings similar to mine spread out from her back. She flew up even higher in the air while using her wings to control her pace and balance herself. Absolute zero, saying that my sister unleashed another SPL. My eyes followed its instinct and on itself got shut down. The next moment I looked the entire floor was covered in crystal ice and the body of the fox lay frozen beneath a thick white layer. The temperature at which the ground was freezing in a moment turned into tundra barren coarse land. And yet the ice felt so different that the normal existing ones or rather the ones we produce with magic, it appeared to be much stronger with no weaknesses. I wondered why the scorching heat of the fox couldn't melt it, but there was no movement from within. Its body laid still inside at peace, with no one to guess that it was rampaging just a second ago. I looked at its stats and was shocked. Its MP was reduced to zero and its HP kept on dwindling and regenerating at the same time. My sister in midair flew down at a much greater speed than at which she made an accent. She revolved gracefully like a tornado releasing a horizontal white light and a black light lashing out cutting the body into upper and lower half. The next movement even those two halves got crushed into small fine crystal snowdrops which rained all over. The scene was breathtaking, 
as if the entire thing got imprint on my soul where my sister landed on the ground where a moment ago a demigod was standing. As far as I remember she only used one spell to defeat it. A demigod. No one, 34, would believe me if I told anyone about this and compare their actual levels. She did not even have a scratch on her entire body. Just what in the world was she? She quietly walked towards me as her wings and horns disappeared. I tried to move. I wanted to say something but lost my balance and then everything became plain to me. 35. Monster Diary 9 Tail Fox. World Disaster Class. Name, Igniska and an Age, Dash Race, Demigod Level, 7500 HP, 185000 MP, 190000 SP, 200000. Skills, Advanced Fire Magic LV10, Earth Magic LV9. Divine Light Magic LV5, Cinder Fox Summoning, Burning Dunes, Magic Resistance, Fear Howl, Ultra Self Regeneration, Titles, Fire Calamity, Mountain Crusher, Mythical Infernus, 36, Alicia Ascalon Ashbourne Who would have thought that I would have to fight a demigod? To be honest these monsters are not much of a challenge anymore. Of course, I was more interested in that soul weapon. But she is all right now and I was able to make it in time. I turned my head around a little and looked at the face of Lily who was sleeping soundlessly on my back. She was still so cute that I wanted to keep looking at her. So this is how it feels like to have a little sister in another world and look after her. She didn't even try the sweet dish I made especially for her. We were almost halfway to our home when she suddenly woke up after losing consciousness from fatigue and shock. I felt like I was drifting in the air but when I was surprised to see being carried on her back. I wanted to complain at first but I did not have the strength. Later it felt so nice that I did not mind, though it was still embarrassing for me. Lily thought to herself as she had just woken up from her unconscious state. She remembered her sister defeating the demigod Nine-Tail Fox so easily. She still found her to be unbelievably strong. Big sister. That's the only word I could hear from her mouth and she fell asleep again. This was the first time she called me that and it felt so good. I was so happy because no one had called me like that in my previous world. So she too considers me now a part of the family. Well let's celebrate it after going back home. The day since I came here, I had always felt that change in me, that I was able to interact with them much easily than those in my previous world. Both mother and father have been always nice to me and teaching me everything they know. Unlike my previous world where I could not even 37. Meet eyes with my guardians or have food in the same place. Usually I would cook for myself separately or early in the morning before everyone would wake and leave the kitchen neat and tidy. But here I not only cook for everyone but together with Flora and later enjoy the food with my whole family. I wonder will the same happen in the outside world, or Will I again lose my ability to be this open to people when I need to win their trust or will I revert back to my previous self and restrict myself in the corners? It was all up to me and the time when I would leave this home and finally leave this labyrinth after conquering the last floor. Mother and father always told me that I can use the teleportation circle to go to the outside but I w and to complete this labyrinth so badly that I can't wait though they keep on telling that even they don't know what thing lies in the last floor. Even they are afraid that it could be something abominable that they together can't defeat it. But all I can think of is what kind of magic and unique skill they could possess and how can I obtain them for myself. 38. Lilius Callon Ashbourne. My eyes squinted as the light flooded in my eyes. In that haziness I could see the ceiling of my room. So I was finally back. At that time I remembered my big sister defeating the nine-tail fox and then carrying me on the back. How embarrassing. What is embarrassing? Lily? Who? Nothing it's not, big sister Alicia. She let out a small laugh on my sudden outburst of dumped up words. I was taken by surprise when I saw her sitting next to me. For how long has she been there? Did I speak something funny while I was asleep? As far as I remember I don't have the habit to speak in sleep, so it's fine. But who knows what actually went down. Now that I think about it then I am safe today because of her. I should thank her for that. But is that all I need to do? No, I have been so cold to her while she always thought of me as family. So I should ask for forgiveness for making her to go through all that trouble. 
but on the other hand she seemed to have enjoyed the fight. No I can't make up excuses. I W'd be honest and this time fix everything and try to know her better. Big sister dot dot I, I wanted to say dot so dot so or. Vumph. I gulped down what was suddenly fed in my mouth. Before I could complete what I had to say she had gently pushed her spoon laden with something soft and spongy into my mouth. The moment it went in my mouth it melted and it was so sweet and tight with richness of fruits. I had never eaten such tasty fruit jelly before. 39. So tell me how does it taste? It's super tasty. Then there is more from where it came. After all I specially made it for you from your favorite fruit, big sister. I wanted to say. I wanted to say that all I did, that I am. She suddenly held my chin lightly and brought her face closer to mine. I could feel her light breath leaving her pale pink lips. She looked so matured up close and yet somehow her status showed about two years old. I don't know much about humans. Even mother is actually half human and half elf. Though for most part she would be considered human. Her long life is thanks to because grandmother belonged to the royal family of the elves. My eyes started moving round and round as every second passed by I was being drawn to her closer and closer. The more I tried to look in her red eyes, the more I wanted to keep looking at them. Those eyes they were so violent and calm at the same time. Lila your body temperature is increasing, it's nothing. I pulled myself backward into sheets as fast as I could. That was a close call, indeed, now that I think about it. For a moment she had black wings and horns similar to mine. I asked about it to her and was surprised to know that she can supposedly turn into any other species. I had never heard of this kind of ability before and she might be the only one able to do it. My big sister is really special. And now we have same wings and horns. Now even people would identify as sisters and I don't have to be alone on the surface anymore. My family has finally grown with one more member. Forty. But suddenly my facial expressions changed and I remembered that I had lost my scythe forever. Could I ever get a new weapon that would fit with me as nicely as that? Lily? About your scythe if you want I can fix it. Was I too obvious with my sadness that she caught up with my worries? Big sister. But it's a legendary weapon. So they cannot be refused? No, I am telling that I will actually make a new one exactly similar to that. It is actually possible with my skills since I have already analyzed and stored its data with L during our fight. Really? Can you really do it? For some reason she was talking about something that has never been done in the past. Any other person would have blurted out and called her insane. But I believed every word of her. If there is something that others think cannot be done, then my sister can do it without any problem. Not only that I can even make it better. Your ultra super powerful dark scythe. Wait didn't I just added some similar sounding words with her weapon. Alicia thought to herself. It sounds so amazing. I want to help big sister too. Well as long as she thinks it's fun. Alicia came in terms with her mislead thoughts. Then why not next time we go hunting monsters together on much lower floors when you get even stronger. That whole night instead of sleeping I kept on talking to big sister. She too was unaware and total amateur about the outside world. So I did tell her some of my exciting hunts on the outside. Though it might be possible that I added some spices and extra thoughts of my own here and there. But I think she will figure it out. I couldn't help it after seeing that. 41. She was so cool while defeating that demigod. When in between I got hungry and complained about it. She took out another dish from her dimensional storage and gave it to me. Try this pudding. I made this too as part of today's sweet dish. If big sister made it then it sure will be heavenly. Then all I could remember was eating dozen of plates while we continued sharing our experiences. Sometimes in between it felt like she was really a four-year-old kid and sometimes it felt that she was too mature for her age. At first one would call it weird, but eventually I came to love even this side of her. While someone who had been listening on their conversation through a small crevice left at the door, rose up from her bent posture and started walking in the opposite direction of the room. Those two got along pretty soon. I am glad Lily got a big sister of her own who would look after her. She deeply cares about her too, which is good for her. I wanted her to make more friends and people she care about and can trust at the same time. 
but it was only possible when she would stop being stuck up with us. Caroline continued walking down the stairs where she took a deep sigh. She too wanted to eat those puddings but at the same time she did not want to intrude in their merry talks. She had been too cold with Lily today and did not spend time with her. From tomorrow she decided to be giving a great deal of care to her and properly listen to what she did at school and in the outside world. Isn't it every parent's wish to hear it in their own children's words? Alicia too will one day leave and next week it will be her training to materialize a soul weapon. 42. She was standing outside her bedroom while the snores of the true demon lord run rampant and could be heard clear as day. She placed her hands on a door handle and stood still for a while. So, she defeated a demigod in such a short amount of time without getting hurt. Didn't she take my rules too seriously? Her powers are growing too fast, at this rate the day is not far. No there is still some time before the worst can come. I can already feel that she has started developing the same kind of aura, but I know she can handle that. Swoosh. She pushed the door and the snores became even louder. Dear you are too loud. She picked up a clip from the nearby desk and measuring its tightness she sealed the demon lord's nose. W hen things quieted down she fell asleep the exact same moment. 43. 44. Chapter. 2. The tip of my blade. I will be defeating the boss monster of this floor today and this time it will bend before my almighty black scythe. I flailed my scythe in the air and finally balancing it on the ground looked at my big sister who was making preparations. But I know it must be something amazing and an impossible feat as usual. WL that's what anyone would describe with what she has been doing in the six days I have been spending with her. But it makes me wonder that why I am not surprised anymore. Even the current black scythe I am holding is similar to the legendary weapon scythe I had owned previously. No. Better said it has even gotten even more powerful. Not only Big Sister made it stronger but it also feels lighter than before and the range of the scythe has been increased to fit my size unlike the previous one which was still a bit uncanny for my size. 45. Original magic spells that she created on her own. While usually it takes years and so much valuable resources to create a spell. Then the delicious food she cooks every day which I never had before in my life. Usually for blacksmithing to create magical swords one would need a special magical hammer and a large magic furnace. But to make legendary weapons which are from the age of gods and cannot be actually copied. She used a special kind of magic to store its information and magic specifics and then alter it to synchronize with her own magic. Even though she made it sound so easy I think even further would have trouble going through each step. No I think even he won't be able to do something that ridiculous and then finally using some kind of skill that can rewrite the molecular structure of a substance and magic flow that I had never heard before and bringing everything into place. And behold there was my new black scythe. Lily, I am done. I think you should prepare for a one-on-one -on -one battle now. I wish you best of luck. We were on floor 92 where everywhere you look, you will find red and blue colored trees spanning all across the floor. This floor supposedly is the dwelling of a special kind of wolf species that is an absolute control over fire and ice element. Big Sister has been using magic to create fake presents over various places in the entire process luring all the wolves in numbers of thousands towards us while keeping the boss at the opposite extreme side. Since she is ready now means, that all the small minions of the boss which are at level from 5000 to 5500 have left the boss's range. All we need to do is for Big Sister to wipe them out. I was hoping that she would use those two special swords. But maybe today's not my day. She torched a small black flame in her hands, much darker than what fathers would manifest. I wondered what such a small flame could do and how it will handle those large numbers. Yes maybe she will turn it into a huge firestorm. 46. The next moment she gently pushed the flame which hit one of the trees and later the whole forest was burning black as if light itself had been snuffed out of this floor and a mysterious grim shadow befell upon us. The black air flames had spread across the floor in an instant. I couldn't understand what it was. How could such a small flame become this huge to burn down an entire forest? Kaya dot dot woof. 
I hear dot 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 kaim. Several cries could be heard in the midst of that forest fire. According to Sister, it's her original spell Black Flare which actually burns on consuming magic energy in the surrounding or the target's body. It is a culmination fusion magic of fire magic, dark magic and gravitational magic. All three of the attributes mixed at advanced. How is she even handling that? In simpler terms if something is alive then there is no escaping this fire. Five minutes passed and the entire forest had been burned to grounds, on the scorched ground except for black soot. There did not lay a single corpse. Em used to have been consumed by one of Big Sister's skill. I looked ahead and saw that a blue shield had covered a small part of the forest where the boss was supposed to be dwelling. For me to fight to have a good match. The boss needed to be intact and unharmed. Since all the minions of it have been cleared out the boss was sure to make an entrance. The earth started to tremble and the next second when it stopped a huge body leapt above the blue shield and took flight in our direction. In that moment I looked up and could make out a gigantic wolf with half of its body in red fur and other half in blue fur. It was a bit smaller than the nine-tailed demigod fox. Nonetheless I had come to hate dog type monsters for the rest of my life. 47. Even in Madeira I could tell that the wolf was frustrated and angry with what we had done to its habitat. Opening its mouth wide magic particles accumulated and launched into a thick pillar of ice ray. I kicked the ground and gaining considerable height cut through the ice pillar into two using my black scythe. The cut was smooth like a knife passing through melted butter. The wolf looked agitated while it moved its bones and landed on the ground maintaining a fixed distance between us and itself. Big Sister had hidden her presence and her magical aura to the point that even I could not pinpoint her location. This was supposed to be a test of how much I had improved in the last few days and also for the testing of this new weapon which I was holding in my hand. So, no help would come for me, unless I gave up, which was never going to happen. Not when I can exact my revenge. I dashed towards the wolf with my curved blade pointed at my enemy while its hand protecting me at the same time. This time massive heat rays rained down from the W wolf's mouth, which was supposed to surround me. But I smiled and swinging my scythe in a circles and dispersed the flames. Ultimately the range of my scythe and its effective length was increased by concentrating wind magic overlapping the tip of my blade which was also an idea given by Big Sister and it works better than we thought. I did not want it to waste time anymore in gaining the chocolate cakes which she promised to make if I finish this monster quickly. I dashed in full speed towards the monster and cut through its hind legs avoiding the several ice crystal projectiles it prepared in advance. Not a single one hit me, while those headed for me were blocked through barrier magic reaching its hind. It got confused and started running in an odd fashion. This was my chance to cut through its legs and aim for the neck. 48. Making a deep cut at the back of its two legs it sunk down, while dodging its tail swipe I jumped over its huge body and ran directly towards its neck to chop it off. I wanted to finish it in one blow, but just like every monster it had a hidden card. From inside of the fur flames rose up and started following me. I had no choice but to retreat and make a proper distance to start my next attack. For now I needed to know what the ability of this monster actually is. Big Sister pointed out that how I would jump in battles without figuring out the attack pattern of the monster and this could end up in getting me injured badly. Big Sister cares so deeply about me so I had to make sure that I do not make her sad and end this fight without me sustaining a single injury which I had set a target for myself after looking how she defeated the demigod. I wanted to be as cool as her and be equally strong. The annoying skill of these monsters, the ultra self-regeneration kicked in. T.O.B. Frank it's a skill upgrade of self-regeneration which I possess with an added effect of body and magic enhancement in emergency situations. Just like mother and father, big sister also has the skill, most probably, I too will earn it if I defeat this monster. The flames got denser and denser as the fur straightened itself on the wolf's body. The red part was glowing with flames while the blue part was now covered in dense ice with protruding sharp ice blades. This kind of body had both offensive and defensive stance at the same time. Not to forget the annoying healing ability. So just die. Death Incarnate. 
A black mist formed over my blade and the front lining of the blade turned blood red. Actually the tip was covered now with my own blood, it's just a small amount so it did not matter if it is for proper conduction of magical powers over my blade. 49. What makes legendary weapons stand over all other weapons are not only various effects imbued on it like other high class weapons but it is its own skill. This skill was added to my scythe by Big Sister, Death Incarnate. Its ability as it sounds nullifies all healing ability. That means the ace ability of the monster is done for. All I needed is to do now is to behead it. With the new skill activated, I jumped up high in the sky, while the wolf did the same but this time it curled up its body and rotating in a loop headed in my direction with all the heat surrounding it and the ice blades covering it at the same time. The fox monster looked formidable in first glance but in this one exchange and after landing at diametrically opposite sides the one coughing blood was the wolf with a deep wound inflicted on its black with my scythe, blood rolled all over its body which later burned in its own flames releasing more magic to intensify it. After all the blood of creatures is a powerful source of magic energy in itself. With this special new ability it wouldn't regrow the crushed bones, shattered flesh, and d its gnawing tail. That worked for me. I didn't want to have to deal with a beast healing from time to time. Ugh. Letting out a huge howl, I think it was preparing itself for the final blow. I too got excited. It must have realized that its healing ability is not working any longer and if the battle prolongs then either he will run out of magic or excessive blood loss through the back wound will surely guarantee its loss. The earth started shaking rigidly. As I quickly sensed something coming from beneath my feet I braced myself for anything to come my way. Intense energy was welling up from deep underground, heralding the break of the surprise attack the wolf had prepared for me. There was an 50 eruption as the ground broke apart and the below glimmered a brilliant red as chunks of molten rocks and flares blasted outward. The molten magma continued pouring into the area and anything that the lava touched liquefied immediately. There was no point in trying to cut the exploding magma with my scythe, so I used the barrier magic squares to climb Madeira as I used them as temporary steps, but it did not stop there. Molten rocks started raining from above too. But I guess it comes with the territory, when I think about it, it was getting chaotic and managing to block everything and go on defensive. I don't like it. So, get ready to face your doom. Swoosh. Now. What? White fog suddenly engulfed the hula place, but as soon as I cleared it by swinging my scythe with massive force. Dot dot the wolf was nowhere to be found. Gah h h. How did such a huge beast vanish so suddenly? The air around me froze over, coalescing into dozens of enormous sized dice arrows that shot in my direction at a massive speed. I leapt far back from the previous step to another barrier step. A pillar of ice grew out of the ground but it was much denser than before it broke through my barrier from below and headed in my direction. With a two step jump I aimed higher to avoid it. That's when the wolf appeared from above with a giant sized circular piece of ice falling from above. Even if I used shadow step and teleported some distance away it would still end up hitting me. No choice, I will face it head on. 51. Crunch. The ice creaked shattering into thousands of fragments with the scythe which was now densely enveloped and reinforced with my magical energy. But that was not the end, flames broke apart just when the ice shattered. It was just a thick outer covering to keep me there and use the flames as the real attack. Radiating like a beam and a giant flame ball it engulfed me from all sides, while the wolf landed safely on the ground howling at the top of its voice. <laughs> The monster was glad as it thought its enemy disappeared in the blast unable to do anything, but the fox's face agitated again as it looked in despair at the sky. Boom. Tens of thousands of flaring embers were now spread across the whole sky. Your senses are quite sharp to realize that I am still kicking alive. The smoke cleared and a ball of shining black chains coalesced into a sphere floated midair. It was clear to the wolf that it heard the voice coming from inside that ball of chains. It's taking too long and so I am going to really end it this time. The chains rattled as several protrusions with needle-like tips started flailing in the air and rushed in the direction of the wolf. It jumped trying its best to dodge the heavy chains, 
but everyone was a close call as each piece landed it pierced the ground reaching till its end. There's no escaping it. I unleashed all of my chains at once on him. 52. Kick. It let out a roar as it shook in pain. One of the spear chains had finally got him in the leg, halting its movements while others soon made it through its whole body. The wolf tried its best to move, but after lot of struggle and its energy vaporizing at a considerable speed it realized that it was no use. But it still did not want it to give up, so it started rolling in the ground. Big Sister was right, the monsters over here are surely persistent. The monsters on the surface are always so easy to deal with. Just a single punch is enough to make them run away, the most important part being that this guy had gained my respect for doing everything to survive against me, but even so, I am here to kill it just because I want to let out my frustration of defeat from before, for a monster it must be slayed, that is its destiny, and since I am the hunter, I will decide on how to end its life in a way that it deserves, with all of my might and power. Holding back in this labyrinth meant certain death no matter how much your enemy is in pain or weakened, with the last of its energy it kept on pulling me, while a torrent of wind was now surrounding me as I assigned them a shape and casted it over my blade giving it a final transformation, it held, a ball of rage and fear as it foresaw its death. It tried to open its mouth wide and gathered a charge for another roaring blast aimed directly at me, it still showed its will to live in the terrific stare it directed towards me, even in pain it knew that if he succumbed to its weak side even the last glimmer of hope would vanish for it. I closed my eyes and gripped my scythe tightly in my hand. I decided to use my remaining magical reserves in a single blow as I got drenched in a black aura akin to the color of my blade which further accentuated its shine. And this was it, my final strike. With my black scythe I banish you from this world to eternal sleep. 53. A sharp edge light emerged out from the blade possessing overwhelmingly strength, strong enough to slice the wolf monster into pieces. The energy beam forming in its mouth broke in two halves around its origin, dissipating into particles of light. My attack didn't stop there. It continued straight through the sky and sliced the monster's body in two halves. My attack was of such power that it carved deep into the artificial wasteland, previously a forest, cutting a deep crevice in the earth below. Into that pit hole, the two halves of the monster submerged. It was finally over. As I tumbled toward the ground and lay on my knees, about to lose consciousness from excessive magic consumption and obvious deficit, but I did not worry about such small stuff. In that moment, I felt an odd sensation like I could achieve anything I wanted. I heard a familiar voice reaching me as my head was about to crash on the floor it landed on something soft. Trying to prevent my eyelids from drooping there and then, I allowed them to finally set down. Ah, sweet warmth. I woke up to see my big sister's face which was as charming as ever. Still not fully aware of my surroundings, I looked into her eyes as she stared at mine. Good morning Lily. I studied my surrounding in haste and still foggy vision, I realized I was not in my bed and it wasn't morning. Wait, is my head on her thighs or something? I rolled off to the ground to escape the situation. How long was I sleeping like that? Wait maybe I should have stayed like that a little longer. I could feel my magical energy was back and for it to be brimming this high. My sister must have transferred it to me. Usually people would use magic recovery. 54. Potions or take magic from others but it is always done in small amounts because for the transferer it takes more than twice just to transfer a fixed amount. For my sister to fill my deep magic reserves her own magic capacity is unfathomable. She rose up from her sitting position and facing the corpse her eyes glowed with a deep blood red color. The corpse of the huge monster suddenly started vanishing as vortex of black threads appeared to consume it. This was also one of my sister's skills, to turn the body of a corpse into a source of magical energy of her own. I soon forgot about my embarrassing situation, and ran to her as I remembered the promise. Big sister how did I do? It was quite amazing seeing you go all out with the scythe proof that it was a successful creation. She said breaking into a smile. After all you made it for me. The giant wolf monster stood no chance against my special skills and the new magic spells I have learned from you. Fine then let's go back home and prepare a chocolate truffle cake together but first you need to take a bath. I tilted my head confused. Was I stinking? 
does not seem to be the case. Nor I was hurt around anywhere, well a bath would do no harm if I still get to eat my fill of cake as quickly as possible. I had leveled up a lot and it seems that I have acquired some new skills. Well I will check that later on. 55. Monster Diary Fenris. World Disaster Class. Name, Zone Age, 5000 Years Race. Wolf Progenitor Level, 7000 HP, 140,000 MP. 180,000 SP, 180,000 Skills, Fire Magic LV9, Ice Magic LV9, Dark Magic LV5, Flames of Purgatory, Magic Resistance, Misty Ice, Ultra Self Regeneration Frostfire, Freeze Flame Manipulation, Titles, Blue Crimson, Frostfire, 56 Status Window Name, Lilias Calon Ashborn Age, 12 Year Race, Demon Level 2500 HP, 90,000 MP, 100,000 SP, 90,000 Unique Skill, Demutator Skills, Fire Magic LV8, Water Magic LV7, Wind Magic LV8, Space Time Magic LV7, Ice Magic LV7, Dark Matter Magic LV7, Pyrokinesis Umbrakinesis, Abnormal Status Infliction, Barrier Magic LV7, Ultra Self Regeneration, Magic Immunity, Title, True Demon Lord Candidate, 57, Status Window Name, Alicia Escalon Ashborn Age, 2 Year Race, Human Level, 26, HP, ERRMP, ERRSP, ERR Unique Skill, All Seeing Eyes of the Gods First Form, Eye of Investigation Second Form, Kinetic Eye Third Form, I of Adrana 4th form, I of Soul 5th form, Equivalent Exchange 6th form, I of Being 7th form, I of Vox Duis skills, Glutton ELV 10 Eternal Poison, World Severing Webs, Sage of Advanced Fire Magic, Sage of Advanced Water Magic, Sage of Divine Light, Sage of Advanced Wood Magic, Sage of Advanced Wind Magic, Advanced Sound Magic, Sage of Advanced Space Time Magic, Sage of Advanced Ice Magic, Sage of Advanced Gravity Magic, Sage of Dark Matter, Sage of Advanced Lightning Magic, Sage of Advanced Earth Magic, Bioengineering, Element Manipulation, Abnormal Status Infliction, Barrier Magic LV10, Title, Legacy of Goddess Aragni, Secretive Plotter, Immortality, Merciless, True Demon Lord Candidate Master Chief, 58, Black Scythe Wielder, Lilias Kalonash Norn Class, Legendary Weapon Creator, Alicia Kalonash Born Skill Dash, Death Incarnate, Magic Absorption, Magic Cutter, Description Dash Death Incarnate Ability to Nullify All Healing Abilities of an Organism which has been cut through the scythe, dealing it permanent damage with a long term effect. This ability manifested with being conjoined and in synergy with the unique skill Demutator Dash, which is a chemical reactive ability to rot slow disintegration of organic and inorganic matter. Remarks slash uses. Initially skill demutator came with various disadvantages of excessive magic particle consumption and condition to touch the target, but with this scythe's magic absorption and its efficiency to conduct it along the blade enhances the ability and also its range and time period. 59. Alicia was Scalon Ashbourne. Mother and Lily had already headed for the hot spring, while I originally thought that it was better to mix the dough first and then leave the cake's batter for it to settle down. On our way back seeing both of us heading to the bath mother too showed her willingness to join us but I could tell from the look in her eyes that she wanted to get her hands on something. No matter I just need to prepare myself to take on anything and keep my guard up. I too headed for the hot spring. I had resolved myself for any accidents about to come. I slid the door open and white steam from the bath attacked my face transferring a heated and comforting sensation. As I passed my legs through the surface of water which formed several concentric ripples on the surface. While I felt a bit unsettled with the intense gazes the other two were passing on to me. Mum. Lily gasped as she appeared to glance at me from top to bottom. Don't ask me Lily. I know it's tough to believe Eve, but you must not lose hope. I am sure you will I'll get there one day. Lily started walking towards me slowly yet steadily creating drifting motion in the water, closing in the distance between us. Big sister, teach me too. 
her eyes shining with the sincerity. I was taken aback by her sudden outburst. Was it magic or something else? She did try to learn cooking but each time messed up. Every time she goes for it she messes up between salt and sugar. They both are white. So why do they taste so different? That's what she always ends up sulking about and destroying the dishes. 60. I don't know what you want to learn Lily. She deepened her glances. Your secret. I want to know. I took a look at mother while she wore a fervent smile and trying to look the other way when I gestured for some help. Just what talk did she feed her with while I was away? Suddenly there were forced movements inside water, and before Lily could herself realize it, her grip on the floor had slipped away. As we careened downwards in a free fall, I gripped her tightly so she wouldn't get hurt. I fell on my hip, but it did not hurt much because of the water. Click. If I was not wrong mother stole one of our photo in that embarrassing posture during our bath for her special collection. Saying that it's a research on how we grow up, or that's what she has been telling us. She held a black box with a long tunnel fitted with a glass lens at the end, or rather a camera which I made. People in this world for pictures would use a skill called, magic pen, which is quite rare and so they are too costly and only falls in the hands of few nobles. But with my knowledge and creation magic making a camera is not big of a deal. I stared up at the sky and at that moment realized that how many months have passed since I started living here. I needed to hurry up and get stronger. Tomorrow was the day for me get my hands on a soul weapon. I was quite happy about it. My dual blades do not allow me to wield other weapons which I have not made myself. Usually they would send a stingy sensation in my body. So sometimes to hold back I use ice magic to make my own weapons or rather create from scratch with magic titles. 61. Looking back from the day my swordsmanship training started with mother it was a remarkable and such a wonderful experience. I can still vividly remember how things went down that day. A month ago my training with a single sword started. I had already mastered all wielding techniques that existed in this world for other weapons. I and mother were standing on the training ground, which appeared to be a vast grey brick stage placed in the middle of forest surrounded by mountains and huge boulders that can withstand the impacts of our attacks from our training. Listen well Alicia you have been till yet diligent with the training but from here on I will be strict than before because when it comes to swords it's a matter of a shirt. So without wasting any moment we will start with our training and I am going to make sure that wielding a sword becomes a second nature to you. Yes mother. So, playing a part of yes and no was the right thing to do so that no time would be further wasted. Right so take out your sword trainee. I manifested a nice sword which was fit to be for my arm length and height. Now keep swinging the sword until you are exhausted. Wait. This was not how we trained for other weapons. Don't look around. Keep swinging as if your life depends on it. Hey, hey, hey. I panicked there but soon gained my composure. 62. 15 minutes passed. An hour passed. Keep swinging the sword as slowly as you can that it makes me yawn. And if the tip of the sword wavers start again. Wait but isn't that too much? It's not. So don't question. Don't think. Keep on swinging. Wait. How is she even reading my thoughts? Another hour passed. Two hours later. Three hours later. I was getting a bit worried about mother. She had kept me cheering on and explaining different positions while I swing the sword repeatedly in the exact same mannerism. Make your muscles remember how you move and keep on moving. She was getting sloppy with her words and a damaged vocabulary. Maybe she forgot that if I want I can switch off my fatigue or heal myself to keep on with the training. Should I suggest a break here for a minute or two? It seems that mother was at her limit and was earnestly seeking for water. Mother, should we take a break and then maybe restart again? I tried to sound as apathetic I could. Yes, we definitely should. I mean it's your first class so taking some rest in between should help you relax your muscle while they get accustomed to the changes. We sat under the shade of a giant oak tree as the artificial sunlight rained over the training ground. We had been at it from morning. Tell me Alicia, why do you work so hard? Shouldn't you spend some time playing around? 63. I felt as if the question came out of nowhere, but mother wanted to just know more about me and what I have in my mind. It is only proper if I respond honestly. Back on earth, my health conditions were not that good. 
If I ran too much I would end up with fever, then I could not even stay under the sun for too long since it would end up with a whole day headache. So, I usually did not attend any sports activities or group events and was then isolated even from the class. Even if I wanted I could not travel very far off. Then there were no others with whom I could play even if I wanted to. Don't tell me you still feel down because of that. Mother looked worried. Not at all. In this world I can run for all I want. I won't feel any pain and keep doing what I want. When I would exit this place I would travel around the world with Athena. But maybe first I would have to search for her. Mother stared at me for a while and holding my head gently pushed it down as my head landed on her thigh which functioned as a pillow. It felt so wonderful because no one had done it for me before. Not that I can remember up till now. Stay like this for a while and rest. I may be too old for you to play with, but when you leave this place I know you will make lots of friends and connect with people with whom you can enjoy and live a happy and fun life. How about today I share with you the secret of how to survive in this world. Never forget these two things I am about to tell you. Mother had never sounded so passionate before. Usually she would be enthusiastic while showing me other weaponry and their various techniques and stances, but when it comes to sword she gets hella serious. Why wouldn't T hey when it comes to other world, you have to do and live with sword and sorcery. 64. Mother continued with her explanation as she made a victory pose at me. There are two things you must always remember. Number one. The strong in this world is always the right, with strength of yours recognized. People consider it absolute justice, no questions asked. The sharpness of your blade can cut through any obstacle and can take you anywhere in this world. Might reigns over the all, truth, good and also when it comes to lies and evil. I could even compare it to our world and things that happened at my school, at home, everyday lives of people and in entirety. People loves to listen and believe for what the strong has for the masses to hear. Whether that's really tea pristine truth or a tainted one. But isn't that unfair for the people who will be weaker compared to those who are overwhelmingly strong? Mother's face stiffened and now she wore a much grave expression. The air around us seemed to be changing. That's why you must always use your strength to defend the weak and not misuse your authority. Always remember this Alicia. A true hero is not the one who defeats his enemy for some superficial cause, but the one who realizes what's needed to be done and acts on it. Even the weakest person can at times be strong. I was late in understanding this and lost so many precious things in my life and having my regrets. I don't want you to suffer the same fate, for what you are pursuing it will make you an enemy of not only this world but the gods in the divine realm and devils of hell. So search for people in whom you can believe and know that I will be always there for you. Yes, mum. My feelings overwhelmed me as I gulped. The space which was until now still under the grip of solemnity turned into a bunch of emotional and a teacher's lifelong lesson mingled into one sentence. 65. Well coming to the second secret, which is could be considered a special convenience for us her voice a mixture of marvel and relief, and that is, I wanted to hear what followed next more than anything, the people of this world love s filmy and over dramatic dialogues, wait dot what, I was dumbfounded for a second, the secret, yes, you heard it right, the people of this world like s motivational and action oriented lines that pack a punch, they fall madly in love with anyone who does so, that's how you captivate their hearts and earn their trusts, but, but for real, isn't that what a conman or a politician does? I tried to raise a valid point. Well as long as you keep your heart pure, everything is fair, but to what extent does that hold true? I am telling you with my more than 200 years of experience, the people of this world are a sucker of fancy lines and courageous words which instill hope in them. After all this is a land of miracles, a world where once gods themselves used to reside among the mortals. A world where wishes comes true and every forces in this world comes together to make it happen. To me it sounded so beautiful and stellar at that time. Even if it had such a typical and weird character. But, a place where wishes comes true and miracles happen. I was living in such a world. I said to the stillness, is this really it? A place I am searching for to call home? Did my wish really come true? Can I say to myself that miracles do happen? 
when you accept who you are and live your life to the fullest. 66. But, now that I am here I was already at home as I forgot exactly when I ended up sleeping in my mother's lap. 67. Training grounds. This time both father and mother were present for my training. Usually he doesn't come here, unless we wanted to practice magic. This comes to show that how special this soul weapon could be. I couldn't wait any longer, and in excitement I could feel my heart beating faster. It was like a lottery gack where you will always end up winning something good and so you will be always looking forward to it. Are you ready Alicia? We will be starting the ritual. So let's begin with the explanation. Wait. There was a ritual. I can't wait any longer to find how my soul weapon looks like. Amu. Um, I nodded in a yes. Soul weapons are supposed to be the reflection or materialization of the shape of your soul. It will consist of that attribute to which it is the most affinity with. Father paused there for a moment. To be able to realize your soul weapon you first need to learn to see others soul realm and identify their soul core. Where you can even say all the life force and magical power of that individual is stored. Everything in the living has a soul core. The monsters, plants, humans, demons, demi-humans and elves. So, how will I enter this soul realm? I am hearing. A broad smile appeared on mother's face. As if she wanted to say I would have never told if you wouldn't have asked or, I thought you would never ask for it, or something along those lines. By forced means. Unlike Lulai who learned it naturally by training from childhood. Since you have less time, we will force it out, though with. 68. Your high affinity with all kinds of magic and life force in nature there shouldn't be a problem. Otherwise. This method could make your brain and heart go puff. Wait doesn't that mean I will ultimately die, but I was ready to do anything. If something was about to happen then I would use thought acceleration and then heal myself. And there was nothing to worry since I have the immortality title but I shouldn't depend on it in this case since it does not imply and take into consideration about the spiritual damage. I am ready for anything. That's the spirit so embrace yourself. Dear I think you should do this. It would be much safer this way, leave it to me. You are in the care of good hands. Further for a moment there he sounded high on proud. Well that's just show how confident he is and the lesser the chances of accident. Though it might also be signs of a flag appearing. Now that I wonder, can there be a skill to spot doom flags too? It might be good to know about the predictions of your future. Maybe I will search about it later in the library. He closed his eyes and meditated for a minute. I was waiting for something to happen when I suddenly realized that the things around me have changed. So, you did notice Alice I.A. Eh? Even without practice you have such sharp senses and good eyes. Yes. Is it really? This world is not real. I looked in confusion everywhere and I could tell that even though the place looked same, and it appears that my body is here, but everything is just without any material or structure. 69. Isn't it like a soul without a body? Aren't that what you are feeling in the present moment? Further suddenly appeared out of thin air and his analogy sounded quite reasonable to me. Alicia this here is only your consciousness and this world is what we call a soul realm. Engrave this feeling and when we would exit this world you will be able to see others soul core. I see. For those who excel in spiritual arts and spirit magic can create such small dimensional worlds where you can transfer your and others consciousness with ease. Isn't it like a dream world Alicia where you can create anything you like? The person who makes this realm holds authority over it. But if your soul core and mental fortitude is stronger than the one who created it then you can alter it at your own will. To me it sounded more of a challenge thrown at me by mother. Is it something like this? I pointed to the snow falling in the sky. Wait, she is already doing it. Isn't it just too fast? I can understand Zyle. But we need to move forward with the lesson. Didn't I tell you everything will be fine? Yes, they're correct. I am the one who imagined a snowfall and it occurred with ease. B but dot but father was still under shock. Seeing the true demon lord and the magic emperor losing confidence in himself sounded a bit pathetic, but mother kept on tightly slapping on his back until he cheered up. 70. It's fine. It's all in the name of trining after all. Shouldn't you be glad that your daughter is learning so fast? Let's move on to the next step. So, 
we will be returning back to our original location, saying that it did really happen when I felt the surrounding change and the snow I brought vanished abruptly. Now I could take it on from here by using Analyze I needed to look through my memory and access all the information related to the Soul Realm. I could feel my eyes glowing and the sensation of burning though it does not hurt anymore. Why don't you try looking around us near the heart and tell us what you see, when you think about a soul of a person. Mother pointed at her left chest. I did the same as mother told me to. At first things appeared to be moving fast to me apparently then finally the view settled down. Next when I focused my eyes near the heart of mother I could feel my senses being drawn inside. A totally new black world with a huge shining sphere was in between. The golden yellow light radiating from the orb was like a small sun in a dark room. When I looked at father's it was a fiery red sphere in a similar dark room. So this is what they called a soul core and then I reported my findings to my teacher. Both of their soul cores were so huge and covered most of that dark room. Though I did not know where it stood since I didn't have anyone else to compare it with. Moving to the next step is the manifestation of a soul weapon. Want to guess who's what it is? Yes. Dot yes. For Lilies it's the Signet Chains. 71. Exactly. Lily has a higher affinity for dark magic than all other attributes and it manifested as those black chains of her. Do you want to know what our soul weapon is? Hum. Dot hum. Yes I really want to know. I got eager. A childish excitement was visible on my face. Since mother is a hero and father is a demon lord. It's obvious that their soul weapon is going to be something super special. There's no doubt in my mind, but what it could be and what would be their abilities. I can take a guess based on their liking, preferences and personality, but to reach an exact conclusion, don't stress your mind I will give you a hint. Mine is a glamorous sword. Mother stops for a moment and then taking a laugh at father she continued, but unfortunately your father ended up just with a stick. Father's face puffed up with anger. For the last time it's not a walking stick of an old man. It's a magical scepter. So don't forget it and stop with your rumors. My mother smirked. Further soon realized what mistake he had committed. Don't go on putting words in my mouth. Now I have gone and said it without any reason. My life is over father was back in his depressed state with hollow eyes gazing at the plain ground. I would too love to have a magical stick made of wood and curved at the top in a loop just like a sage carries around with him. Father's eyes beamed with eagerness. You see I won the bet, didn't I tell you it would be something along those lines. 72 TCH, but I thought she would choose a powerful sword for herself or some other weapon. No. No a sword sounds amazing but I already have my dual blades, and a decorated stick of a magical girl won't look good on me, but an ancient staff sounds awesome. A magical girl staff. Didn't I just tell everyone it's a magical scepter? Why doesn't anyone listen to me? Stomping his feet hard on ground father was back to his depressed state where he would keep on gazing at the growing grass without getting bored. So mom I wanted to ask how can I look at my own soul core or can you tell me how mine looks which color it is mother and further for a second there became wary of this question it was as if they did not want to answer so I stopped pursuing it further since I may be later able to find it out if I use a soul weapon myself usually some people use chance to summon their soul weapon but it's fine if you can just use it without chanting to soul weapon manifestation lumen sword between the empty grips of mother's hand a bright light with increasing intensity. A thin golden blade appeared which seemed to be translucent at the same time. According to mother this sword has the ability to tamper with the properties of light which would be equivalent to her having affinity to light attribute. As for further he did not want it to be left behind in the race and still eager to prove the mantle of his so-called scepter, he hurried with his summoning soul weapon manifestation. Ignis Caesar. A long red color staff decorated with golden lining with a red crystal ball on the top appeared in his hand, but more importantly with his fire type attribute most dominant the scepter too had just say excellent firepower. 73. Now everything was clear to me. No matter what I had to know my favorite attribute and get an awesome weapon for myself. So, how do I summon my own? I was exhilarated. Didn't I tell you we are going to take it out by force? That means. I tilted my head in confusion. 
What now? Mother sounded a bit weird and thrilled about it. I am going to stab you with my soul weapon and force it out. Don't worry I will use a phantom mode so it won't hurt. Mother passed a glance at further as if they had planned something from before, while I was still comprehending what was about to entail. Wait. Stabbed. In a flash before I could complete what I was about to say, Mother was standing right in front of me, wherein she had crossed this long distance in less than a fraction of second. I looked near my heart and a translucent golden sword was passed right through it. It really did not hurt. But I still looked at my mother passing on a surprised look. You should take a deep breath here. She completed the sentence faster than her lips could move. She moved both of her arms in a fashion of opening a lock and in turn the sword moved from its vertical state to a horizontal state inside my heart. The next thing I remember was hearing Elle's mechanical voice when everything blackened out in front of me. Soul Weapon Manifestation Delia Sphere 74. You have leveled up. You have reached LV 27. 75. Xylanus Kalon Ashborn. As we have planned she quickly learned through all the steps to see others' soul core. However when the question arrived of how her soul core was perceived by us, we really couldn't answer because we had never seen something like that before. It looked more of an anomaly. Something that shouldn't be like this or it is truly impossible. Every living thing has a soul core with a fixed color pertaining to their attribute. When a person dies the color fades away but the silhouette of the sphere still remains like an empty glass ball. But for our daughter Alicia, when I looked at her soul core there was neither any sphere nor any color. The pitch black surrounding did exist but in middle something existed that I could not properly explain. It was like an empty area much darker than the surrounding without any fixed dimension. And even if I tried to maintain my gaze, it would feel like the darkness would consume all my senses. Even at that, this incomprehensible thing kept on growing in size the longer I looked dissolving everything into it the moment it touched something. So we really couldn't reach a conclusion without more information. Now with the next step in order after Caroline passed her sword through her heart, all we needed was to wait. I was already prepared to take action if something not went well. After stabbing Caroline had to pass through some of her divine light magic through her sword to stimulate the target's soul realm. And as it did happen, there it was. 76. Alicia's eyes started glowing in our red, just like when she uses magic in response to the stimuli magic. In the next moment I watched Caroline jump far back twice the initial distance between us, realizing something was about to go wrong. I looked at her to know the direction. Sile so quickly used the stones. There's no time left. We never should have done it. I was unable to understand such a vague response. Everything looked fine. About any time the soul weapon would itself manifest and we would know which attribute she has affinity for in the shape of her soul weapon. There was a huge blast of magical energy and a sudden jump in the life force emanating from the surrounding. The density of magical energy kept on increasing and before I realized it was about to reach to a point that could lead to a magical disaster. I glanced at Alicia and she just stood there silently. She lost consciousness while standing. Zyle what are you doing? Don't prolong it any further. Stop it before it completely manifests. Caroline shouted at the top of her voice. She was that loud without using sound amplification magic which to an extent pained in my ears. A white lining transparent sphere surrounded Alicia of which diameter was twice her height. But what caught my attention was the phenomenon taking place inside the thing. While Alicia stood there unconscious without knowing what was happening around her, the ground, the grass, and the air inside it everything appeared to be vanishing. Instead of being disintegrated due to magic, it was as if their existence was being erased and wiped out from this world. 77. It was bad, the diameter of the sphere was increasing, and its dimension was not fixed. As it grew a bit further, though the growth rate was relatively slow, the land appeared to be vanishing the moment it came in contact with the sphere, the air being sucked in because of the low pressure inside the sphere. Some of the trees got uprooted and when they got drawn in towards the epicenter and touched its perimeter dash that's when I realized the extent of danger. The trees too vanished with their presence gone out of this reality. When things are transferred to another dimension, even then you can't remove their traces of existence from this world which is tied to it. 
but this time I was unable to identify such traces, it's eating the world raw. That's the conclusion I reached. Something was needed to be done. It seems that Caroline's magic power was sucked in it when she made contact. Write the stones. I fumbled in my pocket to search for them, but I did not know what amount to be used. Last time we used five tenia stones, but now that she has become stronger than before, I was in a bind. This uncertainty. If the amount exceeded then the sealing spell might endanger her life. Using these destructive stones which is actually a curse on a little girl was something we hated to do, but with no choice left and to bring her back, I started casting a double layer pentagram star seal, that means using ten stones at once, what an absurd amount, but even while it was at work and the things around us was being destroyed, the surge in power seemed to be strong enough to even withheld the seal the magic diagram complete, the star shone in purple color and as it came in contact with the sphere, peace once again returned to the land. 78 79. Alicia body lay still on the floor, it was a perfect picture of harmony, but around her all the chaos defied every logic. Caroline quietly walked towards Alicia with broken footwork drawing heavy breath. At the time I was unable to see her face. She picks up Alicia from the ground in her arms and glanced at the completely annihilated ground, the missing ground carved into a hollow hemisphere, the still are and the uprooted trees that are no longer to be found. Zal let's go back, I think it's time to meet. She sounded stiff in her words. Wait. Meet who? I tried to follow and getting close to where she stood. Someone who knows everything and is responsible but thinks that it's none of her care in this world. That time the look on her face reminded me of the gazes she had on her face was one that I had last witnessed more than 200 years ago during the Great War. It was completely expressionless. 80. 81. Chapter. 3. Protect what you have to. Caroline straining her arms pushed the heavy doors of the observation chamber. A grey room completely devoid of any materialistic value came into picture. It had a circular rooftop and the walls had a special luster to them. There were no windows and the thick walls almost made the room sound proof. I brushed one of my fingers on the wall and there was not a single speck of dust as usual. At a first glance it might appear some kind of a special storeroom, but it's not, since it's empty over here. I prefer to call it an observatory while it also works as a communication room and for the reason that we are here is still unclear to me except for the fact that Caroline was desperate to meet someone, whom she didn't want to or apparently didn't like much. Caroline plucked out a necklace from her pocket and maintained a constant stare at it. Her hands squeezed tightly around the ornament and her whole body shook with anger. Getting impatient I tried to make 82 things clear. Attempting to uplift the seriousness and exorcise the heavy tension the room was drenched in then. Are you okay? Crap. I did it again. That was a dumb question. It's obvious from her looks that she is not okay. I am fine. As if snapping out of reality, she fumbled for the right words after staring back at me. Let's begin. She placed the necklace in the air which floated for a few seconds and then hovering in an upward direction got transfixed to the center of the hemispherical roof. The necklace had a golden chain imparting light and a medium-sized red pendant attached to it. Like a crystal radiating light, the pendant glowed form above and the walls started to show images. Now, I knew why the red stone in the necklace looked so familiar. It was an ancient communication magic from the age of gods and primarily used by them. I wondered who would have the receiving necklace. Indulged in my own extrapolation of thoughts, the images on the walls blurred and then suddenly gained drastic clearness and sharpness. Both I and Caroline had petrified looks on our faces. Dead bodies. Blood. Dark. Corpses lay scattered, some in pieces, around a giant hall that would have been considered beautiful otherwise. The beautiful laden tiles on the ground seemed to have been once white, but was now dyed red with blood and a tiny flow of water flowing in the square grooves on the sides of the floor in a symmetrical pattern was swirling with blood in them. 83. There must have been about hundred corpses spread throughout the ground, their weapons lying next to them mostly broken. The bodies revealed signs of torture, some had had their limbs torn apart, faces crushed beyond recognition and other beheaded bodies showed signs of pure genocide. 
just what kind of entity brought down such a catastrophe, but I just couldn't seem to peel my eyes away from it. Searching for clues, I concluded that this hall was a part of a huge royal castle and quite extravagant for there to be such beautiful gems embedded everywhere in the wall and emanating radiant magical energy. Thud, thud, thud. Following the sound hours eyes befell on a figure wearing a black cape and punching at something enthusiastically. Even the resonating sound of the throws had a rhythmic tone. The person in question turned back and I was stunned to see a beautiful tall young woman in a black tight suit and black gloves with blood stains all over it. What really shocked me were the physical features of this person. It was like looking at the adult version of Alicia, with only difference her height and azure blue eyes which shone like lightning. She had the same long white hairs and a very similar face to her to the extent to be called identical. Most important of all she appeared to be the cause of what was happening around and that ecstatic smile on her face was slowly damaging my nervous system. The next shocker was another dead body which she seemed to have been using as a punching bag, its face deformed and his blood-stained body resting on the arm stand of a huge throne. So this really was a castle's hall room. So, who is that man dead again? 84, 85, it has been a long time teacher. Caroline made a small bow to the person in the film. She sounded so plain and trying to conduct herself properly. I followed her example and too made a small bow. If Caroline is calling her teacher then she is to be one of the 24 pillar goddesses, Alicia's lineage and the previous wielder of that principium weapon. Long time no see, Caroline. How long has it been maybe around 200 years since we fought together during the war? Her careless response smiling disposition and that still grin on her face. Has she forgotten the kind of place and situation she is in? Teacher what are you doing and where are you? Caroline was still trying to act calm, as if she was expecting such kind of brutality. I found women every time scary when they try to act so normal. She vigorously shook her hands which got rid of the sticking blood to her hands. She looked around in amazement as if for the first time realizing where she could be. Well I wonder about that. You see in this world the demon lord succeed in murdering all the heroes and was now playing around with the populace, since most of the gods had abandoned this world. Thinking that no one would mind I decided to join in the fun. And then it sadly became a one-time game. Wait and you just went and did whatever you liked? Caroline tried to counter. It had been so long since I wanted to have fun but the world has become quite peaceful now. I tried to hold myself the best I could but maybe the opponent team were all just talk. Ah. Don't tell me Alice you want you to join me too. Sorry but it seems there is no more opponent team left to compete against us. She made a seductive and yet innocent smile. 86. Which made the whole conversation seem like an invitation to a popular one-time exclusive game event. But a demon lord defeating all the heroes is something quite rare. Those two titles are authorities made to counter-interact with each other to maintain balance and prosperity but for one to overpower other showed just how strong the title holder could be. Wouldn't the fight would have been too deadly? but by the looks of it, was a one-sided massacre, and she did it with bare hands nonetheless when she is a dual wielder herself. Now I understand what Caroline meant to not joke around when asking for a sparring match with her, because I would get obliterated even with their holding back. So that's Tihi power of one of the top clans of the main Apostle Council of Gods. Caroline for a while stayed silent and so did she. Caroline. She sounded a bit normal there, which showed that she might be getting to the point of the discussion now. Yes, teacher. Caroline seemed to be still maintaining some sort of rules that she would be speaking less in front of her. Totally adverse of her true nature. Kind of scares me, to think that a person like her has such command over a quick-witted and prankster Caroline. Do you have a band-aid? It seems that I have scraped my knee falling for you. I am going to call the cops. It must be illegal to be as fine as you are. This is not the time for such frivolous talks and flirting. If you are this free then you shouldn't be acting so ignorant. Is it about Suki? Her name is Alicia now. Right Suki. 87. A L I C I A. Both of them seem to be adamant with their choice of names. At this point of time I started wondering why I was even attending this meeting between a student and a teacher. But isn't it too late to back out now? Then let me reintroduce the kind of relationship between us. Suki. Then, 
and now Alicia is be my biological granddaughter from the world she came from, but since she possesses immense magical powers just like me but not a divine body, so that it would make me her mother, she is my daughter now. Caroline doesn't seem to be going down so easily. I know and you have my thanks for looking after that child when she was so alone. Regarding that I found your traces of magic in her soul realm, there was a sudden silence, in which neither party spoke and the goddess seemed to be in a dilemma whether to reveal the cards or not. You got me. I did place a twofold seal on her to permanently negate her magical energy and life force. How could you do that to such a small child? knowing that it would hinder her personal life and growth, the chances that she could even die and always remain sickly would be too high, but didn't she break through both of them on her own, isn't she awesome just like me, am I right or am I right, she lost her parents at such a young age and you weren't even there to support and guide her, you say it like it's all good and fine but dot how could you even call yourself her, Caroline you know that, it's not like I had a choice, Possessing such great magical powers and life force, you do realize what kind of attention 88. She could have fetched for herself from other gods who would crave to get their hands on her powers in any way they could with nothing good to do or the devils from that world. If I had stayed with her, then I might be able to support her but never completely protect her. The only way was for us to part W.I.s. I don't ask for that child's forgiveness for what I had done to her and when I should have acted responsibly. But she is my only granddaughter and I do love her. It's still so unfair even if you put it like that and sound so reasonable at the worst moment when you yourself are so carefree. So, from now on I will look after her and make sure that she would never have to compromise or depend on someone in the outside world. Alicia is growing into a beautiful maiden just like me and is able to do so many things she could not do in her previous life. So thank you for looking after her and I am glad that you were the first people whom she met to take care of her. How about I come there and let's celebrate together? To be honest, her switching flips too quickly makes it difficult to say whether she is really serious or not. It's hard to keep tabs on her mood, really. Don't try to run away. You are still hiding something. So please tell me. Why of all times now? Why such an elaborate plans to reincarnate so many people at once? You know I am bad with a lot of questions. So how about I answer one by one? I am in a good mood now, so hurry up with your questions. Her true attribute. Just what is it? So you have reached the conclusion that it's not the six basic attributes. Well that was fast. Just what you can expect from my number one disciple. But didn't you say to me that I was the only disciple? 89. That's true. That's why you are number one. Hooray. Hey. -e -h. A small cackle left my lips. For the first time I saw someone making fun and pulling leg of Carolyn. But then a murderous eye made contact with me and I stood in attention position immediately. Hurry up and just answer the question. Ah. You don't like me giving you special attention Carolyn. Fine then I am putting the transmitter off. Since this conversation is getting nowhere it's better to postpone it. Wait. Wait. It's just that you look even cuter when you are angry. So bear with Emmy. Buttering me up won't do you any good. Caroline was straightforward with her thoughts. Jeez. But your red face tells me something else. I bent a little and pulled my eyes to the right to take a glance at my wife's supposed to be flustered face. But before I could get a peek, she was about to pull the string of necklace and switch off the transmission. It's nothingness. Dot what? Carolyn, stopped in her movements, most probably pretending to cut off the chat. You heard me. It's none of the six attributes. Her soul core does not exist because it's empty. You can also call it void. What do you mean by that? Even I don't know how exactly it works, but you know what? Almighty world God created life using this very attribute by mixing his will in it. The attribute which is the origin of everything. 90. So, you want to tell me that all the six attributes are resulting breakdown products of that void or nothingness that you call and that's why her spirit realm is like a void. But why allow something a singular existence like that? Beats me. It's not like I'm in charge. Except for almighty world god no one knows what's up with the divine world system to create an irregularity like this. But it seems that even the tree of life has the same goal but a different mindset to achieve it. 
That's why it offered its fruit to her and she was able to survive the backlash and outburst of energy from time to time when the seal was being broken. So, you are telling me that the tree of life is in a way trying to protect her, while the divine system is trying to use her for a specific purpose. How bothersome. And on top of that learning about that fruit makes it even more realistic. So there really is something going on that the world god decided to take such drastic measures and reincarnate so many. Well, that was a quick conclusion, but things have taken a turn again when the Principium Dual Blades chose her as the next wielder. That would have been an unexpected event for both the Divine System and Tree of Life. You know exactly what those blades symbolize and that she is of my lineage. What are you thinking of won't happen? Caroline passed it out straight to her. Even if you deny it how much you want, those are the swords of calamity and having a wielder means another war is inevitable and this time it may be on a wider scale than the Great Wars. Wait. If that happens then wouldn't the world itself get obliterated this time? Didn't you yourself said it? Remember you told me that whenever a world is about to suffer from a big disaster that can threaten the systems. 91. Existence it always transfers a sacred weapon to the world to be used by someone worthy and prevent such events. Then what of it? This time the divine system though chose a human with a power that would have allowed it to make her under its absolute control by putting restrictions on her, but the tree of life decided to give her a meaning as the best course of action and set her free from that ugly path, and now that she has a will of her own, I see I won't let that happen, whatever the divine system has in accord for her, as her mother I will not just stand by and see her dance according to its plans, but she will be strong enough to choose her own path and make her own decision. Even if you say that, why the trust in her so much? Wouldn't it only bring back uncertainties, pain and the misfortune for you? Because she is the daughter of a true hero and a true demon low road the strongest out there in this world. In the times she has stayed here I have come to love her as her mother and I still want to look after her, and the same time realize that there is nothing to worry, because unlike us, who were at that time weak and had to sometimes run away, compromise and lose things dear to us, she would crush those who would oppose her. Even though seeing her leave on the same path, as to save the world, I trust her that she would come at the top and rise above every Oni's expectations. Doesn't that sound so much like me to destroy everything I dislike? So, you wish it for or not you are going to send her on a bloody path to hell. But are you ready to even able to lift the heavy burden for that? She will kill humans, other races, lose close ones and make more enemies, and even then you can say still keep on making the same claims. No, you are wrong. She will defeat all her enemies, keep her closed ones safe. That's just how strong she will be and that's why she can be. 92. The only one who could do it for the sake of you know who. Didn't you yourself say something you cannot achieve by your own hands is something you cannot protect. One cannot easily escape their fate in a world where the will of the gods is supreme and stands above all. One's fate is sealed when they are born whether it is a burden to become a king for someone for a noble family, to be born with titles like sage, hero or demon lords. When people have expectations from you and you fail then your fate blurs and you think it's all over. But I have learned that every time you lose it's just a single ball in life you were unable to hit. Life will keep on throwing new challenges at you, but if someone stops at the first ball, he would never be able to hit another even though he has to swing his sword for the hundredth time to hit for the first time. Not like I am one myself to believe in strings of fate and my own rambling. Well, I accept nothing less from my pupil. Talking after you for such a long time just like old days refreshes my mind. Then I hope everything comes true just as you say. How about we have such chats regularly? No. On second thought I think I need to go and take a look at her. Well, you are no fun. How about the one standing next to you? You are the true demon lord from the Ashbourne family correct? Yes, ma'am. I stood in a tension position after a quick response. Doesn't she know I can still see the blood-stained walls and corpses behind her? Thank you for taking care of my student and my daughter. Well, how about we have some fun together too? What do you say? We didn't have a chance of sparring during the war. No, no I am more than happy to look after my family. 
and I am happy living like this without having to fight formidable opponents so let's postpone the match for now. 93 Huh. You are a boring G plain guy. I see. Times surely have dulled people. Even after playing with these guys I am not having that much fun any longer. Well, if I am dull and plain, it cannot be helped. Once again you have my sincere thanks for telling us about Alicia. I tried to maintain a poker face and not to show my anxiety. What is she even talking about? She KO them all without breaking a sweat. And that smile on her face though charming and attractive it might be, how can she still say she is not satisfied? Will Alicia eventually turn like that? I really do like when she smiles but for some reason like that. Well, then bye bye, call me if you ever need my help. Thank you for your help teacher, take care of yourself. Goddess Urza was now holding the pendant in her necklace which had stopped radiating light and also cut off the transmission. Carolyn, there are so many more things I wanted to tell you, but that have to wait. About how the grudges of the previous war had left that world unstable and the revolts of devils who would be stronger than the previous ones with much larger forces and more enemies to speak of. But I don't want to make you worry. I am happy to see that you are living a happy peaceful life just like you wanted to. So stay where you are. Let us entrust our hopes to the next generation to those two. They too might make a good team after all. I am sure she will meet Athena pretty soon. Now that Alicia has broken her two seals, her attribute of nothingness is something even I may not be able to handle and it will keep on growing with that special body of her made by Arachne. She did tell me that she wanted to create a new most supreme species that would have a high growth rate, but no one knew that she actually succeeded in making one. 94. And hid it. Maybe she realized what a frightening creation she had made that could eventually threaten her own existence and the position of gods. Not like I care, but her desire to live far surpasses than any problem that could be thrown at her. Maybe everything was to be fated like this. Now then, that's over. Which one of you was the demon lord again? She glances at the pile of corpse without any glint of hate or hesitation in her eyes. Sorry. My bad. Maybe I killed everyone here before they could even speak, but wasn't it their fault? Though I might have walked into the demon lord's castle without an invitation but they were to attack me first. What if a fragile woman like me would have got hurt? Maybe I'd stay in this world for a while and keep e watch. But I wonder what she would do when she awakens the second ability of the white and black swords, the kind of power which even a god would desire, but can never be achieved. 95 Caroline S. Callon Ashbourne Just when the transmission was cut off I took a deep sigh of relief and caught the falling pendant and put it back on my neck. It had been so long since I talked to her and it felt so satisfying and wonderful that we could talk like old times. So, Zyle, you kept on talking about how you wanted to compete against her, but then why did you reject her offer? What are you talking about? I did dot don't mind me my brain might not have been in the right place. I must be talking crazy that time. Zyle looked here and there without making eye contact with me. He always seems so funny when teased. Let's go. We need to make lot of preparations. One month from now Lily will be leaving and someday. Alicia too. Things might be getting too quiet again. I hurriedly started walking towards the exit gate. Hey, now. Don't leave me behind here. You. Don't I get a say in this? It's me who you're gonna force into preparing everything beforehand and coming up with presents. Right? Right? Boom. Sile caught up to me in no time. That me GHT have been Lily practicing one of Alicia's magic. She never showed such enthusiasm with me. Zal tried to voice his thoughts. These days I am just glad that we don't have any neighbors to complain with the noise. Otherwise we might have been reported and called to the police station several times. 96. Is that a candy shop or a toy shop? Do they sell presents for small children? Never mind. Zile. What do you think now that you know all of this? Well, you always mentioned about that clan. Now I understand they are some kind of die-hard battle junkie. No, you are wrong in your assessment. But that's what it looked. The Nivis clan, one of the pillar clans of the main Apostle Council, though has very few members but is considered to be one of the strongest pillars in the council. What's so special about them is that they can't stand anything which is not to their liking. That means they will kill anything that they dislike. For them there is no good or evil, it's all about their whims. 
destroying something you hate with all you have got, is it for an or, is it that terrible a thought, I wondered, and then Alicia has the same smile as her which troubles me. Will she turn out the same? After all she is a unique existence. What are you talking about she is not alone or something special. She is a part of our family, as for her smile, I love it more than anything and she should keep on smiling. As a true demon lord who once ruled almost more than half of this world, even I hated many things. Wanting them to disappear was the only thing I could think about. Subjects that tried to betray me, humans who used their semantics against us to wage wars for their own benefits, evil gods who plotted for their own entertainment. And when things got worse I would want myself to disappear, wouldn't it had been better if the demon lords did not exist, who were sometimes made the enemies of. 97. This world. If there had been no enemies wouldn't the world be more at peace and I could get some rest too. But that's when I realized after meeting Caroline who made me realize how sad that thought was. It was just the adverse of living a peaceful life. Being alone and invisible to others would not only make my life colorless and boring, but those who care about me will be sad too. Leaving them behind. Giving up on your dreams is what cowards and losers do. To live I had to decide for myself and not be led by those around me. Their expectations, thoughts ideas if cannot follow with me then I can just ignore them. No one has the right to blame for the way I want to live. If I chose not to fight, then I won't. In some eyes I might have looked like a coward, but I know people who are more happy with this ongoing peace at present moment between races. And if this is about to crumble, then Caroline is right that we should entrust it to those who are going to live on this world now while we are receding to the background. Providing support is the only thing, no, it is the best thing to do for them to make their own dreams come true in their own way. Just a little bit more of time and care will surely give rise to a great tree laden with fruits of happiness and harmony. Yeah you are right, 98, Alicia was Scalon Ashbourne. I launched another black fair arrow from my bow that was made of flames too at the monster standing on the tree which pierced through his heart and turned it into dust in an instant before it could even make a scream for its vanishing life. It was an ice elf. Though they might be called an elf just because they have long ears but according to this world's standard they are monsters. Their body almost frozen blue color with well built thick muscles it seems they specialize in ice magic. This was floor 94. Both Lui and I were amazed to see this floor covered all in ice and with trees that had growing ice needle-like leaves. Under the light the reflected seven colors formed amazing patterns on the wall. We decided we would preserve this floor later for fun and sightseeing or picnic. With our status infliction and some magic we can easily detest this cold even in summer's clothes. What I would like to do is cultivate those ice trees and make money by selling ice creams in winter. No. Wait that won't work people already can use magic with water attribute. Yes, the trees might sell for good as decorative purposes on Christmas. Wait do they even celebrate Christmas over here? Maybe there are still too many things left to know for me in this world. With magic there might be a possibility Santa does exist, but if it really turned out to be a myth of a thief who tried to escape from police by pretending to give gifts to people who caught him. No maybe I have read too many story paths regarding the same character and jumbled them up. So, the best way without causing much damage was to kill every monster stealthily. With analysis magic I found that there were about hundred ice elves with one of them producing immense magical aura. That could have been their chief. While fifty of them are out scouting in this wide, ninety-nine ice forest. The other fifty lives in a dense settlement close by to the next gate. Sounds like a secret ops mission to me. Even Lily was excited to go covered. She decided that she would take things from left while I will set off from right and head to the settlement. As things stand now and that the monsters are still quiet it seems that the plan is working well. We just need to keep the forest safe and the rest can just disappear. They are not needed here. I launched another arrow while running between the bushes and using wind magic to remove traces from the snow trail. Though it's quite a hassle and much difficult than burning down the forest at once and killing them all along with it, but it's all worth it. After five minutes I met up with Lily at the rendezvous point which was a tall tree just outside the settlement, the best place to keep an eye on their movement, big sister after it's all done. 
Then let's make it our secret hideout. Yeah this territory belongs to us two sisters now. We will claim it by all means. Then we can come and do ice skating here. Ice is skating. What's that? You don't know. It's fun maybe I will teach you later. Wait. What have I promised to her? It's not like I know how to do ice skating myself. I didn't even own an ice skate before. I just watched some videos and thought that's amazing. It would be nice to do it someday. Maybe mother would know and I could make some ice skates with creation magic, big sister. Look what's this. Lily was holding a round object which almost looked similar to fruit. Is it edible? I applied analyze and found it to be safe for consumption. Just to be on the safe side I took the first bite. 100. Amu. Um, who would have thought I could get to eat that tastes exactly like blueberry pie. And that too nonetheless in a fruit of a frozen forest. My next successful business idea. I am going to be an entrepreneur and make big with this rare fruit. But is it really rare? I took a look back at that fruit. Not that I care. If it's tasty I can eat it and it will surely sell well. Just need to grow these trees properly. After all when I go outside I need to earn a stable income and have a proper source of income to fund our travels and living expense. Seeing me Lily took a bite too from the fruit hanging near her from the branches. Sweet dot so sweet. Big sister let's take some home too. Lily, resolve yourself. We are taking everything and not just some. Yes. Thinks big. Do crazy. Wait who is teaching Lily these kinds of sentences? Could it be me in my sleep, talking in dreams? I made a quick note of this to fix this problem and find the source of it. This time Lily wanted to train herself while fighting enemies in numbers and not just a single opponent. She is a diligent worker after all, though she only does things that interests her. Even if it means neglecting her important day-to-day -day work, that's a bad habit, for which mother and I are working hard to improve it. We came up with the idea of giving rewards on completion of daily work and exemption from household activities like cleaning your own room. Usually Flora did it during her absence but now she is back home she must learn to properly take care of her own from now on. 101. Lily jumped from the tree raising some noise and attracted every ice elves attention. Then as usual she flailed her scythe in the air and dashed towards the horde of almost 50 ice elves. These monsters can manipulate ice and usually use ice projectiles to fight, but they specialize in physical combat and grappling techniques, so it's easy to win against them if we maintain a fair distance and attack. Within minutes Lily had already cleared half of their population and was hacking through them without any trouble, they were no match for her in close physical combat. It doesn't matter whether their bodies are hard and they have home advantage, in front of Lily's scythe everything grumbled. I had just now leveled up and gained my soul weapon, but my father and mother forbid me to use it, since it went berserk and I need to do more training and learn more about the soul of a person. It also seems T hat now I don't need to use those white strings to level up and form a cocoon and whatever purpose that thing served for can now be directly done with my own body. I can always feel the connection between the magic molecules of the surrounding directed and absorbed by my body. Though I was still asleep for five days, that's the only drawback. I need to ask how to come up with a countermeasure to keep myself safe when I level up, like making a guardian or either when I am sleeping. Al can take control over my body for some time during emergency. That doesn't seem to be a bad idea at all. Speaking of which it's for the first time Al has no memory regarding when my soul weapon went berserk, it's quite odd. Well I will have my chance to try it again very soon. For now I don't need to lose sight of the chief and when he comes out I will take him down in one shot by my new magic which I came up with recently. 102. From behind the temporary shelters. Though I thought they would be igloos but simple huts made of clay were standing tall, loud footsteps could be heard. I thought here it was. But at the same time about ten ice elves twenty-five feet tall showed up. It was clearly the chief, boss of this floor, but wasn't there supposed to be just one of them? I used my appraisal and was delighted to see that it possessed the shadow clone skill. This is for the best, 
that means more target practice for me. For some reason all those clones which seemed to be real were heading for me. One of them tried to throw a punch at me at a rather high speed than expected in this chill environment. Doesn't their bone gets jammed with all this cold? Set control. Before his hands could reach me. It vanished in the middle. For a second the huge giant gawked at me waiting for its hands to reach, but realizing the soaring pain reaching its backbone it retaliated with a loud scream. Kawah. At this point they must be thinking what I could have done. So others tried to do the same thing but I casted the same spell. All of them lost few limbs at some points. Others tried to launch huge ice lances at me but all of them vanished midair during their flight. What I had been using until now was a special upgraded form of teleportation magic. By first causing partial teleportation over a specific area I assign a new coordinate for them. But stopping the spell in between, the teleported material ends up with two coordinates at the same time which is not possible. In other terms while causing a tunneling effect between two points if the target gets trapped in between 103. It would vaporize due to the high pressure of the closing down tunnel with infinite gravitational force. Time to end it. Set control. I used this magic on each of its clones and they disappeared without a trace form. This world lost between the gaps of two spaces. Wait. Who was the real chief among them? Not that it matters now when they are dead. I ended it soon before it could use any trump cards so that I could protect this beautiful ice forest. Big sister. Lily came running at me. Seems like she is done too. Let's H she add back Lily and plan to come once again here with something good to do next time. I want to try ice skating. Yeah. About that. First let's go home. We were now at the dinner table eating those fruits as deserts which we collected from the forest. I never knew ourselves grew these kinds of fruits. Mother commented as she continued chomping on the sweet portion. It could be possible that it's a mutation of a sweet fruit which they specifically did this with their magic to survive food shortage. No W that's something I could learn from father. It will surely help me later to reproduce them. Lily tell me do you want something specifically for this coming month? Mother tried to instigate a conversation. 104. Lily for a moment stared at the air in front of her. I want to stay here and don't want to leave. Not happening. You need to go to school. Then how about I take big sister with me? Lily tried to capture me in her arms. She can't leave now. She needs to do more training. Does that mean I am better than big sister when it comes to learning from you all and she is still behind in training? Lily is really competitive, no matter how you see it. No, that means you are just so hard to teach that we had to force ourselves to send you to school. Mother smirked. No. That couldn't be true. It couldn't be. Lily sounded a bit scared there. Maybe she was a bit late to catch on the humor. I am just joking. I don't know about leaving, but I am really excited about my birthday. Wait. Birthday? I stuttered. That was news to me. A new revelation. Big sister, next month is my birthday. I want a nice present. Maybe a new weapon or a magic spell that only I can use which will obliterate the enemy in one strike. I for some unfounded reason seemed to be low on words to respond. 105. 106. Interlude. Happy birthday. Lil I don't eat so quickly and chew you food properly. Mom said pointing the spoon at intended person. But she paid no heed. But it is so tasty that I want to finish it off quickly and eat the ice cream. I might not be able to eat them anymore for a while. Lil I sounded desperate and the victim here. Don't speak while eating. Mother retorted. After some time when we were finished with the dinner and Flora came to get the plates, Mother looked at me and asked, Alicia I have seen you working so late at night recently. You should sleep early and if anything is troubling you just ask. Everything is fine. I might have sounded a little odd to hear, but there is no escaping from Mother's all-knowing senses. I was sure I had excellently buried all the trails in my work a secret. Maybe she even knows about that. Big sister have you thought of the cake you are going to make on my birthday? Still working on it. Yes there is only one week left now for Lily's birthday to come. And for a month she has been so excited about it. Big sister when is your birthday? You never told me. 107. Huh. I was speechless. Don't tell me it already passed by when I was not here. 
Actually I don't know. When is mine? I did not try to hide the fact that's not possible. It seems that Lily won't be leaving me off the hook without a proper answer, but it's true. I don't know the day I was born and if I look at my status window it only shows years with no mention of month and dates. So, I didn't really know what to say to Lily. I know Lily why don't you two celebrate your birthdays on the same day. Mother as usual came to my rescue but the plan was something she decided all on her own. We can do that. Lily inquired. Why not? As long as you are up for it. But you don't really have to do it specifically for me. I am fine with not having a birthday. It was really okay with me, not having to celebrate one. Even in my previous life I did not celebrate my birthday even if I know on which day it was. It was just like a normal day. I don't think my guardians even remembered on which day it was or maybe that they were too busy to wish me. Not like even if I celebrated it by buying a cake someone would accompany me while cutting it or I knew someone whom I could invite and have a party with. Yes, I am all for it. I want to celebrate my birthday with big sister. Then without my affirmation everything seems to have been decided in advance, but I was now looking forward for that day to come. Maybe this could prove to be a totally new experience for me. Because that is one of my goals in this new life. 108. The date came and we were already sitting on the dinner table with a huge blueberry cake in front of us made from the same fruits we got from the ice forest. Lily, it's about time to cut the cake, but what about the gifts? That is after you cut the cake I suppose. Father explained Lily and questioning within himself the probable reasons why presents are given after cutting the cake. Maybe because the giver can be sure of that they get a piece in return for their present. But didn't I bring the present with tea he intentioned to give in the first place? But if I did work in creating a present then shouldn't there be a reward for me? But isn't that too selfish? But I am the one thinking of it then what does that make of me? Ah, it's no use there are just too many buts. Maybe that's what father would be thinking with the tensed up creases appearing on his faces. Big sister why don't you cut the cake with me? No you go first. It's totally fine with me only celebrating and it's not necessary if I don't cut one. But didn't you and Flora work hard to make the cake? So, Lily grabbed my hand just like that and carried me to the spot. Putting the knife in between our hands she slashed through the cake like a samurai. Maybe her method was too rough and violent for the cake in the first place. Maybe it felt more like she was slaying a monster. Mother and father started clapping. Happy birthday Lily and Alicia. Both of them congratulated us at the same time. It all happened so quick for me to follow that I broke in a smile. 109. Thank you. Flora served us the cut pieces of the cake next and presented us with the dishes which she and I had prepared this evening. Mostly, it was a barbecue party because Lily likes grilled and smoked stuff. We had bite-sized, juicy pieces of meat, chicken skewers, sausage wieners, fried noodles and lots of sliced vegetables, though mostly neglected. And I had to finish them off. Wasting food is a sin. Everyone seems to like the new flavored blueberry cake and the good response was making the business idea of farming it on a large scale just that tempting. But I will need land to cultivate that. Or maybe not. I can just simply transport myself to the forest. But if I rely on a single place others might discover my business secret. There's just too much on the plate to think of. But getting worried about these silly ideas might be not worth it in a birthday party where everyone is having fun. Even if I tease only us four and deaf Laura again. It totally feels like a new atmosphere. Because the next part consisted of Lily's birthday present. It was first mother and further's turn. They came forward with a small pink wrapped box and gave it to Lily, who without any reservation and in haste nibbled through the nicely packed trapper and unsealed the cover. From inside came out a bracelet with a red ellipsoid crystal attached in between of a golden bracelet. Lily, without further ado put it on her right hand and it rather looked cute on her outfit. Suddenly mother passed me a similar gift box. It's your birthday to Alicia. I did not question but with a thank you humbly accepted the gift. From inside came out a white bracelet and on top of which a blue pearl with a similar shape and size to that of Lily's was fixed. While I put it on. 110 my left hand. The bracelet got camouflaged with my white outfit and the blue pearl like a small gemstone embedded on my wrist. 
big sister and I have similar looking bracelets. Well, W with these two magic crystals you should be able to contact each other whenever you want without restrictions. No matter how far apart you are you can even roughly pinpoint each other's location. I thought there was some meaning behind it, so it is something like a communication magic similar to phones of my previous world. Well the location system helps to know where Lil is any time if I wanted to meet her in the outside world. But next was my turn. The part I was most excited about was giving a present to Lilai, the thing on which I had been working so hard until late nights. I pushed a large green box in front of them which apparently looked heavy and the shaking made it look even more suspicious. Big sister, is that my gift? What can it be? T.O. be so huge. Just wait and see. I smirked. Maybe I was too excited to surprise her. From Lilai I had heard that school is a thing only for the nobility and those who can afford it. So, in this world where they have only few schools, people have to travel to other countries to get the best education from the best institute. So, just that the noble students can study properly without being affected with changes in their daily life. The staying are well equipped with all kinds of recreation equipments and facilities and also allows students to bring with them attendants to serve under and take care of them. Since Lilai needs to hide her identity, she cannot have an attendant from the outside world, otherwise she might not be able to live normally in the Demon Academy. So, Tada 111, the giant cardboard lid flipped open and I was waiting to see the excited faces of everyone in their cheers for my exceptional work, especially I was looking forward to that of Lilai's since the gift was meant for her. What's that? Is that an alien? No, I think it's a joker, you see in parties. Wait what's with mothers and everyone's comment. I turned back at the gift and a figure in black hot suit was standing in front of me with two long daggers in her hands. What that person wore was a half-covered black mask from chin to nose leaving only pink eyes to be seen. The black jumpsuit which looked a modern combination of a tracksuit and a ninja uniform fit tightly on the wearer's body. But, why are you in your combat uniform? Because my job is to protect everyone from the shadows and keep Lady Alicia safe. Not for now. Just go in. But why? I want to be in this dress. I like it this way. Don't force me to. I started pushing her head back inside the huggy box which could have easily fit two people like her while she was doing her best to resist. No, she cried, just change already back into the uniform. Isn't it this one? Not the one made you wear the last night, but the one I asked you to wear today. But I like that one the more. 112. 113. I was finally able to press her in and tightly shut the lid. Nothing wrong, just a few moments. I replied to others' confused expressions. Something is wrong thought Lilai. Something is definitely wrong. Though you'd father. Isn't this similar to abduction? Thought mother. Ta, ta. The lid of the box from inside flung open with a bang and a cute girl almost the same age as Lilai was standing in front of them now. She was wearing a maid outfit similar to Flora, with purple hairs tied in a ponytail using green scrunches. With the glamorous leap she made out of the box circling twice mid-air and with the gut pose she landed on the ground made her look like a circus performer. But the claps from the watchers made it look okay for now. My name is Rose. From today on I will be serving Master Lilai. I excel at wind magic. But my original job is of a spy and my hobby is to dodge lasers and infiltrate enemies castle to get my hands on secret scrolls. Did I do it right this time Lady Alicia? She looked at me with her bright pink eyes. Why did I make them so adorable? Just blame my imagination. I wanted to slap myself for teaching her those things or giving her that kind of personality from one of my fantasy life characters of a spy who trained his life underground and when she ventures into the outside world, finds herself fighting against a corporation that wants to get their hands on ancient relics. So before they can collect them. This spy would every time by chance tumble upon a ruin and by her instincts complete each one of them and then with those relics repel the plans of evil corporation to take over the world. 114 Well, that's how Rose primarily sees this world. The same goes for Flora she was primarily designed to be a maid who likes cute things and is obsessed with cleanliness whether it's of house or the enemies. 
Lily quietly walked to her and suddenly holding her hands and staring into her eyes she said, Be my friend, yes I will be. It seems that Rose too cannot resist Lily's childish charms. You are so cute. And after that Lily started her doll-like treatment towards Rose, though it seems that she is not liking it that very much with the resistance she is putting. Maybe it's better to teach her about people's personal space, but for now it will serve as a lesson for Rose. Am I trying to get back at Rose, maybe? Definitely not, it will be a good bonding session for both of them. Yes, that's right. Rose will be accompanying her to the outside world like an attendant and look after her. Big sister is she my birthday present? Yes, she will take care of you in the outside world and she can make the same dishes as me. You like it? Yes, please take care of me from now on Master Lily. Though my cooking skills might not hold a candle to Lady Alicia who stands above all, but I will do my best to protect you and fulfill your every demand. The next day came and we had all collected near the teleportation station which was near the forest. Lily looked happy that she was this time going to be accompanied by someone whom she considered a friend and since they are of same age they were hitting together at it well. 115. Lady Alicia, if you ever need me T hen please contact me. I will be ever ready to infiltrate the enemy's base and do everything as you command. Then take care of Lily for me and I hope that you enjoy the outside world for now too. Thank you for thinking about me so much. You are my creator and always so kind to me will do, it seems that these humanoid robots, Gillums, I make are deeply attached to me for some reason, but I don't think I have done something that good for them to be this thankful to me, the same goes for Flora who always appears to be so attached to me and always stands near me when I am at work or studying, she herself helped me a lot while making Flora and designing her body parts while condensing the refined molten magity ores with her water control magic, goodbye Moha, father. Big sister and Flora. I will be leaving now and try to come home soon. All of us said our goodbyes, but we tried to keep this short because it would just get that difficult to leave for her. I wondered what would be like that for me. I too want to live here forever, but there are things I have to do and someone out there is still waiting for me. White light swirled on the magical circle drawn on the floor and in the next instant the two vanished from our sight while I hoped that we could reunite soon. 116 117 Chapter 4 An Adventurer's Peril About 16 years ago, I and all my other classmates suffered a tragic death in a bus accident and later were reincarnated into a new world with the mission to save it. We were given to form contracts with a god who would assist us on our journey and help us grow stronger. I, Natsu Kanchai was one of these reincarnates. It might sound a bit sad to leave all of the people I cared about, mother, father, big sister behind, but to be reborn into a new magical world is something I considered myself to be fortunate of. At present we were roaming in the extreme northeastern territory of this world. My party soothing fire was heading into the Juna forest of the Calistonia kingdom. We consisted of five other members, my god in contract Prometheus, another fellow reincarnate Akain Kirigashi and her god in contract Orpheus. Then we had Jane an elf and the Martha human from this world. It just so happened incidentally that I met Akain in the headquarters of the Adventurers Guild and undertaking a joint mission and the fact that how well we coordinated during the mission, we decided to form a party. None of our gods had any problem with working together since 118. We had the same goal in mind for the moment to reach the peak of strength and accumulate as much experience as we can. We both were already S rank adventurer when we met and since we had formed team we had quickly risen to SS rank all six of us together. Prom, that's what I call him, is quite an easy going god who takes things lightly and only gets fired up in a fight against strong monsters. For some reason he simply hates monsters too much and so he can easily detect them from far away which helps our teams. Even if the monster is using some kind of concealment skill. They cannot escape the thermal scan skill of prom. Since I excel in fire type magic bestowed to me by my god I usually fight in the front, while Akane who is a monster summoner and tamer supports from the rear with supporting spells while her tamed monsters does her bidding in the forefront. 
Prometheus uses a magic sword to fight along my side while Orpheus casts a special kind of musical magic to strengthen our magic circulation and at the same time plays with the minds of the monsters. Jane is an elf who excels in water magic and archery while Marth is a body enhancement magic user who works as a martial artist fighter. Marth is also my childhood friend in this life and we had been working as adventurers since then while we teamed up with Jane in another joint quest of ours. For the moment we still haven't figured out a way to save this world, though the demons here are not involved in something usual called a race fight and tries to obliterate each other's races but things are not peaceful either, it could be that later in future we need to partake in a war with them but for now we can enjoy our lives. Even though we are adventurers who are getting experience by hunting monsters, it's not enough to bring a change in the whole world. We needed to rise to the level of world-class adventurers who can then 119 exercise great military and administrative power in any country. And when we are at it, form a familiar certified by the guild and become the number one familiar out there. For that purpose all six of us have been secretly probing ancient ruins and hidden dungeons that pops out of nowhere. According to Prometheus and Orpheus these kinds of ruins might contain ancient weapons from the Age of Gods and during the Great War which might help us get even stronger. As such these two are able to detect divine magic in close proximity. From these ruins and the strong waves of magic they usually send when they rise to the surface. This kind of phenomenon happens because of the outburst of magical energy which gets collected over time and start leaking little by little until the crack widens and ruptures completely. For that purpose these two have detected a similar strong energy coming from the extreme of this forest. According to them it's extremely strong than all the previous ruins we have explored and this might be our lottery ticket to get strong quickly, though our other teammates don't know that we are reincarnates and other two are gods and our real intention to collect these relics but they both are usually fired up in this treasure hunt. Talk about the thrill now, as I used to have dreams of adventuring, finding treasure fighting monsters back in my own world but now I am living and breathing in it. I would say reincarnating myself was more of a miracle and bliss than to be sad about something like dying, no point in deteriorating my self-consciousness over what has happened that's what my god told me and to enjoy the new life, I decided to live with the best of my ability. I think he too feels sorry for what has happened and how we had no choices but to go on with their conditions of saving this world with no leads. 120. On our way we had taken various sub-quests and had already stocked up supplies for a journey of three weeks. We never know how long it would take to reach there or if for some unforeseen reason reason we get stuck, at present we have been engaged with a goblin hunt, as a request from a small village which was to wipe out about 50 goblins, but since in the week's time we got here, it has turned into a goblin settlement of 300 goblins, the rate at which they breed is extraordinary and may be something to be curious of. But after we saw how terrified the villagers were and even though we were getting less paid we accepted the request of the village chief. Since the settlement is new there are less chances of finding a goblin wizard or a goblin king which would have drastically increased the difficulty of the quest. Well there is no backing out now, Alan just couldn't leave the people in danger. One of these days you might even earn the title of a hero said Marth as he brought down his heavy fist technique on the floor and knocked out five goblins at once. Alan was my name in this world while I can't chose to go with Arella. While for Prometheus it was obviously prom but Orpheus is still Orpheus. She was too adamant and did not change her name. Not that people of this world can realize that they are gods. Sometimes our teammates call by either of our names since they had heard us sometimes conversing in our previous names and they find it to be something amusing of having a second name and did not suspect us much. A hero's title does sound good, but if I get turned into a hero then I have to be a country's dog and wouldn't be able to adventure with you all as frequently as I do now. I was surrounded with about 20 goblins from all sides who were maintaining constant distance from me 121 and were trying to throw stone made hammers at us, but my weapon is exactly meant for that very purpose, die you green primates. I shouted as I unleashed my chain whip a mid range weapon, the moment it hit a goblin with its huge force their body got severed just with a single touch, 
the shining dart attached to it like a pencil carving out a circle's perimeter I chopped all of their heads. Akane had summoned a heavenly bull who was ravaging the goblin settlement to ground while Orpheus was leading the horde of goblins towards us attack team while Jane was shooting them down sometimes up from top of a tree or behind bushes or sometimes suddenly appear at the back of us. Shadow movement sure is a handy small range teleportation skill. As usual Prom was going all out with his heavenly fire a blazing magical sword. Even he seemed to be having fun while fighting with us together. They did tell us that heaven is quite a boring place like being locked up and watching from far, and if they have to give up some of the power and live for a few hundred years with us down here then it's only in their benefit. He too doesn't seem to be much motivated in saving the world. As it stands they think it's only the work of the title holder of a hero to do such a thing. For now until we haven't turned 18 we can still enjoy our life here and not bound by the duties we are given to perform. Within half an hour, we wiped out an entire settlement and were now on our way to report the village chief of the success of this mission. Weren't the goblins a bit resilient and of higher levels than the usual? objected again. It is possible that it go I'll be effect of the high magical density in the surrounding area. Orpheus tried to come up with the most probable explanation. 122. 123. Doesn't that mean that the ruins are nearby? Jane just now jumped from one of the trees and started following us. Well it doesn't matter if I get to level up and throw up some punches on those monsters. Marth was still fired up while plunging his hands in the air. If the ruins are nearby then we can ask the villagers who might have noticed something here since they would be better than us in knowing their way around. Let's go back now, the nights would be freezing. Even though it's summer time, since we are in north the temperature changes drastically here. It seems that the seasons and weather change according to the wind currents in the hemisphere are approximately same as our previous world. Maybe we should stay the night in the village and then continue our journey tomorrow. Since we are on an unknown adventure where we might end up astray, it's better to take REST when we can and travel in ideal conditions only. As a leader of this party it's my duty to keep everyone safe and look after their well-being. Hey Natsu why don't you pass me a leather jacket from the pocket store Aggie, it's awfully cold already. Sis the god of fire. After hearing the news the village chief was shocked at first of hearing about the goblin settlement and at the same time glad that we had completed the quest. As a thank you and a gesture of showing their utmost gratitude they gave us the best of stay service at night and since they had a good harvest of crops recently they threw us a big feast. The two girls were already tired and so re-signed to bed just after the meal while Orpheus remained to sing a song for the village ladies. She seems to actually like to do these kinds of things as the goddess of music and poem. While we three left, remained there to celebrate with the booze. It was our only salvation in this freaking cold. 124. A person is considered adult in this world when they reach an age of 16 and is free to do anything like drinking wine. Marriages can be considered from the age of 14 already, too young to be paired up I think. As for you can join in the workforce anywhere with an average age of 12. Well, it's obvious that in a magical world with monsters, people would prefer to be strong than intellectual academics when dying is a common fact in this world. I hate to say this but killing in this world has no rules for both monsters and humans. The strong can always manipulate the weir k masses. That's why I too have to do my best. Even though once gods used to rule this land, and how majestically beautiful and magical it appears there is always the dark shadow of a coin which we should not neglect. Next morning we woke up pretty soon, Though Marth had a bit of trouble since he entered in a contest of who remains conscious after the drinking and he stood at the second place. Surprisingly the village chief who was the old man was the winner in the entire village. He must have a huge tension off his mind after the goblin termination since they will have now more land to plow without the fear of monsters. According to the villagers a week ago there had been small movements in earth though not as devastating as an earthquake, that's how they described it. It seems that the ruins might be in straight west after a one day travel if we use one of the summoned beasts of Akane. For half a day we travelled on an old cart which the villagers were more than happy to gift us. Because of the frequent colds the villagers are usually low on funds so we didn't force them with the money issue. 
as top-class adventurers we have already more than in our pocket and if these kinds of small helps on a journey may count as small steps in saving the world at least that's what I think, I don't mind helping others as long as it doesn't put our lives in jeopardy and we can handle the problem. 125. It s a much better way of doing things than those of my classmates who were born as nobles and spends an extravagant leaf a. They didn't even treat me as an equal now when I met them and was looking down upon us. The thought that nobles' blood is pure and powerful might have plagued their minds or that's what I think. People sure do change. But maybe that's how their upbringing would be in this world. As nobles they need to command respect from commoners. From a democratic system to rule of a king or monarch, lifestyle and outlook of people obviously won't remain the same in a democracy citizens always pays attention to the critics more than the policy making government itself, while in a monarchy or dukedom they would rather support the policies of the king without question. Well it is its own pros and cons but as long as the king thinks of its people's welfare and kingdom, the country would prosper in harmony. Even I don't know if I would change if I were born among these nobles, as a born commoner. Though my parents themselves are retired top-class adventurers and I did spend a nice childhood in this world raised with love and training in magic with mother and physical training with father, nothing of regret to speak of and every wonderful thing a nice kai life has to offer, while prom helped me with controlling divine fire magic and he was the son of our neighbor from an esteemed merchant family who would have known that the weather would take such a turn. There was suddenly snowfall and within moments snow had already covered the entire clayey road. Marth was still driving the cart, as he is the only one in our party to be able to do this. At one corner, Jane was wiping her arrows and tightening the string of her bow with a level of concentration which I could never exert in my whole life. 126 I and Akane and the two gods were discussing the plan of action and what we could actually find at our destination. What if we find a legendary violin that can match the magnificence of my singing? Orpheus as usual has only interest in being a songstress. How about a cold resistance jacket? I still feel chilly in this outfit. Prometheus is still not accustomed to the weather changes, should the fire of God even complain about the cold. I might have sounded bit rhetoric. Human's body sure is an inconvenience. In a divine body in the first place you cannot feel temperature changes. But in a human body while taking a bath I get chills all the times. Then I think you are more close to a cat. Prometheus. Orpheus and all this laughed when thinking about how a god has fallen to such a disgrace due to a winter's change. Well if anything it would be sad if we just find a desolate grassland like the last time isolated from this world. Akane was not that excited about this expedition like she was last time with a failed one where we ended up without any profit after fighting a long line of monsters. Though we leveled up quite a lot, not finding any treasure was a bummer. But wouldn't that be good? If it turns out to be a hidden land piece, then we can build a house there and live there together in the future. W what? Akane's voice shivered in the space. I see this is how they confess in human culture from your world. Wait what Prom is even saying. Ken Chai Shaw has gotten so close to Akane recently it makes me feel jealous. Why is Orpheus blushing and shaking so much? 127 Ha! Huh, I realized my mistake soon with how I have worded the whole thing in a hurry to cheer them up. I didn't mean it like that. It means, I was just saying that if we could find a hidden land where no one can reach except us then we could use it as a secret base for ourselves. Well lol I already know that. So just stop turning it into something big. Saying this Akane turned her face away. Now I have gone and made her angry, instead of making it fun. But the idea was not bad indeed. Oh of course it's not bad. No P Rom it's not like that. How can you? What are you saying? It's quite entertaining seeing a young fiery love to blossom with passion and the heat of embarrassment. You have got a lot of fire in you, so just hand over the jacket. I can rose up from her place snatched off the jacket from Prometheus and went off to Jane to help with her work. R. Akane seeing you leave like that in future will make me sad, but you should try with coming more strong on him. It has not like that. I have more important things to do at present. Akane shouted from inside the cart which might have even scared the nearby monsters. She didn't even try to refuse, 
that means in the future I will have to see her off as a bride pretty soon. Orpheus started rubbing her cheeks with her hands maybe to rub off the cold or the fact that she was getting excited just by the thoughts of a fallout future. Hugh, are you two really gods? Acting like that when we have such heavy responsibility on our shoulder. 128. Relax. We came to the earth for the purpose of pure entertainment and traveling. So an adventurer's life is the best choice. The world itself gets peaceful the less you meddle with it. Don't you agree Orpheus? Tell him. It's not like we don't want to save this world but unless we don't know of the worst, we can only try getting stronger in the meantime. The demons won't make a move unless a new true demon lord appears. Both Prometheus and Orpheus sounded less convincing as each day passes by, which only makes me doubtful that all they wanted was to live a freeloader's life and let loose the stiffness that they had built up in their bodies. As for the true demon lord's resurrection, it still is a mystery. After the true demon lord died during the great war, a new one should be granted the title pretty soon. But it has been more than 200 years with not even a candidate appearing. Same goes for the true hero. As for us reincarnates none of us were born with the title of it. Though in this world there are people with title of heroes who usually work under the shackles of royalty and are aiming to become the true hero, but no one knows the exact path that leads to it. One could even say that at present there is nothing that is endangering the world. Do we even get to save the world or will we have to live a so-called slow life in another world? Though it's not bad if it is even that. I am still happy adventuring with my party and more than content I am with my present life than the previous ones. Hey Arella, it seems that your beast won't be moving any further. Marth shouted from the outside as the cart abruptly halted, I wondered what the problem was since we just now crossed the small passageway between the two undersized mountains without any issue. Monster detection did not report any sighting neither from up the mountains where the most danger came from and nor the front. 129 Both I and Akane rose up from our seat and headed to where Marth was sitting outside. As I drew open the curtain a chilled wind threw itself inside and kicked out the warm air currents. Natsu. Close the curtains or give me another jacket. I paid no heed to the complaints of a nauseating god not because he was my partner now but because of the eye-catching view that presented to us on the outside of the rift. Huge pile of snow was racked up in front of us and then the vast deciduous forest which should have been green at this time of year now was covered in a white blanket. Under the scanty heat rays of sun which was not enough to melt the ice surface but reflect its cold light in our eyes. It's so beautiful and unwanted at the same time. Akane sounded to me a bit happy and dejected at the same time. But I think she wanted to appreciate the view but at the same time criticize it for being an obstacle in our journey and messing up with our schedule. Everyone come out, because of the snow we have to walk the mile now. I called out to everyone one, can't you wait a bit? Jane was still sitting and checking the balance of her bow. You should be almost done with your maintenance by now so what's the wait for? I was getting tired as if to pull out prom from the cart was more than troubling enough like trying to pick up a slime between two sticks, because every time he would slip out from my grip. At last Jane stepped out of the cart while prom still seems to be complaining about the sudden change of weather to Orpheus who is probably listening with one ear and flushing it out with another. Now it almost feels like carrying a broken recorder with us with a needle playing on the same circle, round and round. 130. If I would have known about a snowstorm which might have hit the area last night then I would have made more preparations with cold clothes and other traveling accessories and warm food. From here on we will be walking to the ruin. I will use fire magic to warm ourselves up while you should all put some blankets over yourself. We have to head straight towards north. Following the path between the trees should do their job. Akane had already put the cart in the magic bag which was of high capacity value and worth quite a fortune. She was now passing the blanket from our emergency pouch to everyone. While Marth does no tea have dimensional storage. Mine and Akane's are quite small to store things like as huge as a cart. As for Jane she would only use it to store her arrows of which the number still remains unaccounted for till date and there is no room for negotiation about other items. Hey, Natsu let me get close. 
Prum was sticking to me to get the warmth of the air which I was releasing at regular short intervals while warming up the air around me and regulating and releasing it in spherical waves outwardly, and so others are trying to stick close to me and walking at their own pace, why don't you use your own fire? I tried to push him away saying this, I don't want to. He did not even flinch a bit and was adamant on not using his own store of magic. What a pain. You so ally during fights he would recklessly use magic to surround his entire body with fire and enter a fist fight with monster with no regard of his magical sword. But in cases like this he is not passionate at all and at the same time too lazy. These days I think I should just leave him at an old age home. Maybe they will accept him if I told them that he is actually older than the age of 10 old people added together that are living there. 131. Natsu. Wait don't tell me he read my thoughts. Listen we are not alone. Just as I thought he can't read my mind but complains and compla. Everyone get ready we have company. As I issued out a warrant everyone took position. Orpheus, Akane drifted to the middle, while I... Prum and Marth formed the perimeter around them. Jane vanished and must have taken cover over trees already. Elves are awesome. I think I sense ten. No maybe fifteen and still growing. As we all wondered what kind of monster it is. Two white hound wolves leapt from one of the thickets but before they could reach us I struck them down with my whip. But it seems that one blow is not enough to kill them as I had to bring down another slash on them while they were writhing in pain. It felt more like torture and it did hurt me a bit to see them in pain, so I try my best to finish them in one go, but here the possibility seems to be dim and grotesque, as the bugle of war had been announced one-sidedly by their howling and wolves numbered in group of fives attacked from ever why possible direction. All of our hands were full in keeping them at bay. Orpheus was using body enhancement magic on us since confusing dog type monsters takes time. Akane had summoned small fire bats which seems to be the weakness of these monsters. Marth and Prom's hands seem to be full with handling things on their own. While I was staring at the larger wolf which gave the impression of being the leader of this pack, it felt like I was a circus master with a whip trying to discipline and train the ungrateful animal that I just gave some meat to it in its prison, so act as I tell you to. Though I am myself glad that there are no animal protection rights in this world though the tamer. 132. Jill do exercise and promote kind treatment of tamed beasts and summons. I launched several blows at once as they produced fine cuts over its ligaments to slow down its movements and yet I was having trouble to follow its movements. Even these cuts were not deep enough to deal any real damage, while the other small wolf which were trying to stop me and defend the leader of the pack at the same time were being taken down by Jane's arrows. At first I had my reservations when she would shoot wind arrows round me without any pause and might have appeared haphazard but I know now that there is nothing to worry as her true aim is peerless, as the leader of the monsters saw its brethren die in front of him one by one, it unleashed one of its skill attack, a huge snowstorm headed in my direction, flame s that purify evil and burn thy enemy, fire shield, a wall of orange flames stood in between my team and the attack of the wolf. Just as the storm was about to vanish, a huge shadow leapt over the firewall, and its face appeared to be agitated when he saw no one around. It was the wolf who thought would be able to ambush me after it saw that its attack failed and thought of using it as a blind cover now to take me by surprise when I would indefinitely wait for the firewall to disperse on its own. But I think I am able to outwit him. As I appeared in midair near its body and taking out a small dagger from my back scabbard I slit its throat and fell near its corpse. Others too seems to be done and after a while when Jane came down from the tree, it was confirmed that there were no monster nearby. That was unexpected, but now I feel warm. I don't need this jacket anymore. Prom T H threw the jacket on the ground mercilessly to which by 133. Now he was bidding his life on and clinging on tightly. Akane picked it up and put it back into the storage realizing that he would ask for it again pretty soon. She doesn't have to be so nice to him. Just because he is a god, it would have been a different thing if he acted like one or showed signs of wisdom. But I don't care about his swinging mood now but more about the matter at the hand. Hey, Alan, why have we stopped moving? We have already kicked all of their butts haven't we? Don't tell me your feet are frozen by this early winter type. 
Marth said as he stood fearlessly without a thing covering his upper body, laughing the cold fog out of his mouth. Don't come crying to me after you catch a cold, you hear me. You are too muscle-minded to understand. Jane passed her harsh criticism. What? If you have something for me then let's settle it right here. Marth seems to have a rematch with Jane after his 48th loss again. He is still not over with it. A martial artist is useless against a long-range fighter if he fails to locate the enemy. Why doesn't he understand such simple stuff? Yeah, I forgot he is muscle-minded. So I need to explain to him. Marth I am trying to think whether it's safe to continue the journey or not. Hugh dot what do you mean by that? He seems to be confused. Meaning that someone set out this attack. You think that someone is trying to stop us from reaching our destination? At least he gets that much. Or so it seems. See only the part of land where we are standing is cleared of snow before the fight began. Then that means someone prepared this ground for this specific fight to happen. And I can smell the monster attracting potion sprinkled here to lure them out. I would. 134. Usually use those kinds of potions to call out monsters in large numbers and use wide scale fire magic on them to take them out at once and it is quite a strong one at that, but why and who would try to do something like that? We did not cross paths with someone until now. Akane seems to be worried just as much as me. If we are unable to understand how this attacker is working and what its goals are then the path ahead could be set up with traps and more dangerous monsters which we might not be able to handle at once if we get tired. Clap, clap, magnificent. You did well in figuring G that out pretty quick. So as a reward let me show myself to you before you all meet your pitiful ends. A voice resounded from a nearby tree mingled in the harsh cold weather. All of our eyes turned in that direction and high above the ground there stood a person covered in tight black and red clothing and a hood hiding his face. Who are you and did you plan this attack? I shouted out to him. Well it was clearly obvious from the previous statement that he did it but just for confirmation and to know his reasons for it before we duke it out of him by force. Hey, Alan is he the one who is trying to stop US Midway and acting all cheeky now? Is it fine if I make him spill the beans myself? A punch in the abdomen from me will probably push his organs out of this stickman. I really didn't like how Marth proposed the last sentence, but I know he actually didn't mean it of course because he is a muscle brain that's why. Oh I need to. Just in case I signaled Jane to take cover now while he is distracted by Marth. I still needed to keep my guard up, because this guy was confident enough to show up himself but at the same time was able to 135, conceal his presence from all of us and also the fact he was watching us and could easily put up a surprise attack midway and harm us. Now then. Marth got into his fighting stance and as he was about to close in the distance between them after charging his body with a huge amount of magic rush, he fell on his knees. Ah, Marth. Why you? I called out to Marth but he was already unconscious and fell on the ground after taking a punch from the stranger in his guts. It was strange for a magically augmented tough body of Marth to give out in one blow. I should have warned him too. Jane now. I can't move. My shadow skill is not working gah damn it this has never happened. Jane was trying to pull herself away from something when I saw at her shadow and a card stuck in it. As the shape of the shadow formed irregular shapes my doubts heightened. Was the card the cause? Don't tell me. I looked at the person in front of us and he was holding a similar pack of red cards crossing paths across each other in between his two hands. Why not play a card of games, but first let me rough them a bit. I could tell that this person was probably laughing under the hood but his intentions still remains unclear. Suddenly a card crossed past my face forming a deep cut and as it approached Jane, a thick black smog covered her until it cleared out on itself I couldn't make out anything and approaching it without knowing what it was would only hamper us more. As the picture came in view Jane was now lying on the ground. 136. I could not even know that he threw the card at us until it grazed and left me with its stingy paper cut pain. I wiped the little blood that oozed out with my hand and placed it near my whip just about on its handle. Jane. Jane. You bastard. Everyone including me called out to her and Akane went to tender and take a closer look. Why are you so angry whn I just put under sleep, 
so we can have a nice little reunion. Reunion. I am sure I have never met this guy and the voice is still too unfamiliar for me. What exactly do you mean by that? Wah. So boring. After meeting a long lost friend this is how you treat me. He started rubbing his hairs which were still covered by his hood. If you want the good treatment then act respectfully instead of hiding and ambushing us on our journey. A friend would never attack us like that. It's clear you are our enemy. I couldn't have even put it better myself, Natsu. So now we have declared where we stand let me introduce myself. I am Xandalift and nice to meet you Kiragashi and my respects to the two gods Prometheus and Dorpheus. The attacker bowed in front of us, just the neck but I knew it was not out of respect but he was looking down on us, how do you know that? No if you are a reincarnate like us, then why attack your classmates? Didn't you yourself say now that we are enemies? So that's what we are, sounds about right. Enough chit chat you too. If you know our status then you should be more respectful and instead of hiding your identity face us properly. Prometheus by now I could tell was furious enough with the passionate blaze of fire that his body was covered in. He was angry with two of his 137 companions put out of commission by this guy and pitying us. He was going all out with the strength he was putting behind with each strike of his sword and quick speed but each time his sword was about to pierce its enemy it was met with a red color long dagger, the hooded guy did not even flinch or appeared to put up much effort to resist Prom's attack which made him more the furious. Ho ho. You should try a bit harder if you want to even come close to me. Stop fooling around and fight seriously. Prom was going in full throttle as sparks produced from each strike met fell and melted the leftover snow on the ground. Then make me. These words were more than enough to aggravate Prom's stress which would later get converted into his flames. The angrier he becomes the stronger he gets, but it was clear by now, that the hood guy was still playing and only making small moves with his dagger to slide the tip of the blade and put the sword play of Prometheus off terms. It was clear he had more combat experience than us. Appraisal was not working on him that means this guy was absolutely stronger than us even though we were now above level 2000. You have bought enough time prom, now get back. It was clear Tom was trying to buy us some time to recover our magic reserves from the previous battle and prepare spells, while Akane succeeded in making a huge summoning circle with help of Orpheus. It's not done yet, I am going to teach this brat a lesson to not mess around with us. Prom neglected my offer and was still on the offensive. Maybe I had wrong thoughts of him again. You idiot get back. 138. You h h h h h h. As Prom led out to a large bestial roar, huge fire waves formed a trail of flames behind him as he increased his speed at a tremendous rate and his sword clashing with the dagger, slid across it and went right for the face of the enemy. That was unexpected. Maybe I should take you a bit more seriously after all. But that was all you had in you. No wonder. With that speed no enemy should have been able to dodge, but this guy made it sound so simple as he titled his neck in the last second with an inhuman agility and dodged the sword, but the force of the strike was strong enough to send a stream of flames on him regardless and making the hood fall down on his shoulder, as his long red hairs flailed in the air and two thin red horns were protruding out of his head, his mask cracked with a chick, sound and finally crumbled and fell on the floor. A familiar face poured into my ears. Even his voice which was sounding still a bit distant, now was resounding the memories of this person in my mind. He casually caught the tip of the sword without worrying about its sharpness which had no effect on his thick skin, and bringing it right in front of him, he started walking towards us, while Prom was being pushed back. It seems that he has burned out and reached his limit. If only he had listened to me rather working on impulse. You two are getting in between our reunion. This familiar voice no more had the softness in it that it used to convey. But it sounded so cold that even the winter wind felt a bit warmer. Akihiko, why are you doing all of this? I said in a state of being unable to catch my own breath and frenzy. Took you long enough to realize that it's me. So it's really him, and he is not denying the fact. But why him? Why here of all places after he went missing? For him to appear now like this, it doesn't make any sense. 139. 140. 
Natsu stay away from him, if he is one of the reincarnates he has already killed his god, I cannot sense an ounce of divine energy from him, rather his mind has been corrupted with black miasma and he is bursting with it, it would appear that he has reached a level of resistance where my tricks won't work on him, Orpheus warned me as Akihiko was approaching me, stay quiet, stay put you too, saying this a blast of magical aura I had never felt before was radiating out from Akihiko's body, several card shaped projectiles started flying around him as they swiftly moved towards its target and taking Prometheus and Orpheus hostage he tucked them up high on the trees as the cards with unimaginable strength half pierced through the dry wood, Akihiko wh why are you doing all of this, stop won't you rejoice meeting me again, don't mess with me, as I approached my comrades, two cards were now flying around their neck close enough to their skin to open a small opening and let out a small stream of blood, suggesting me what can happen if I approach them without caring about the guest in front of me, leave them alone they have done nothing to you, so why? I shouted back at Akihiko, you ask why? Because it disgusts me to see how you get along with your gods acting all friendly with no care in this world, going on long journeys like some kind of tourists and enjoying this damn wretched world. Akihiko though talked about how frustrated he was but like a maniac sounded exalted and disturbed at the same time. What happened to you, tell me. So, you find me disgusting too, this appearance, me being close to a monster kin, is that it? 141, no, of course not if it's you, I knew it you were just like the others, you find me repulsive, no matter what you say you are doing it all wrong, give them back, otherwise, that's right, the reason I came here for, if you do want them free then fight me otherwise I will be taking something precious away from you, <laughs> but I don't want to, remember we are friends, you must be foolish to think that, but that naivety will only bring you suffering, in this world there are no friends if you want to live you need to be alone, if you want to be strong you have to be independent of others, of course not, without my companions I wouldn't have come out here alone, without them I would not have made it this far, so stop hurting them, you know w what, you are sounding more and more like those pathetic heroes who are about to meet their ends, this world really turned you into one of them, maybe this falsified peaceful setting has put a damper in your brain, if you want your friends back you have to kill me for that, I see, I don't know what you are doing this for or someone is forcing you to do it, but I will stop you but I won't kill you until the real Akihiko shows himself, whatever you say my friend, don't pretend to be my friend if you don't want to, without any second delay, I was now standing behind him, I used fire burst in my body to move and in an instant, I launched the tip of my whip on 142 his back, but as it was about to crash on his body it landed on the ground instead leaving intricate cracks wherever it hit, you really were not holding back, that's the spirit, I heard a sound from behind me, and to my horror he was quicker than me to do the same thing to me, how did you, I felt my hands being touched by something icy but could not move myself, snatching the whip from my hand, he instantly charred it and threw it on the ground, what are you a kid, playing with soft weapons, you would need more than that to defeat me, Natsu use that, Prom you are okay, I turned to Prom's voice and it seems that he is still tired after his super fast attack, there's no time to talk, use my divine energy and defeat that guy for us, Akane use my powers too, and use your unique skill to summon a magnificent beast, we are counting on you too, Orpheus called out to Akane and cheered us both, had it really come to a fight, even though we are classmates, but if I don't do something about it, then my comrades will have to suffer the most and they are the most important person to me right now, before that happens I will stop him, no matter if I end up hurting him a bit, unique skill, furnace color, activate, the next second I knew my whole body from inside out was engulfed in flames, my hairs, my eyes everything I could feel myself in was engulfed, 143, in fire and the energy exploding inside me was all aimed at defeating the person in front of me, that's more like it, use your full force and then despair while I show you how pointless your efforts have been, shut up, as I moved forward with a punch toward S his right shoulder, it was blocked by the mere force of a card he was holding in his hand, 
but it was just the start. My true powers laid in my hand-to-hand -hand physical combat which my further trained me in. The whip was only a weapon, just a means to an end. I had decided to end it by going all out. I launched a kick at his abdomen but he blocked it with his hand. That strange feeling of an icy cold hand crept on my leg and I drifted a bit back. The flames over my body turned a bit more dense and hotter than before. I went in for another round and this time with more speed and power behind my blows he was pushed back a little. I see as time passes your offense and defense both increases, isn't that fun? I think it's time to distribute the cards. That's right. My unique skill allows my body to behave just like a furnace which increases my physical abilities with thermal energy. As my unique skill remains active my body heats up and at the same time increases my body durability and the damage my each attack deals. Tell me Akihiko why are you doing this? Is someone forcing you, then we will help you, just tell us. I said to him as he caught one of my flying kick midair, help me. Didn't I say I am independent? You see you are causing him trouble going around and exploring old ruins he has his eyes set on. 144. Who is he? Is he the person controlling you? I said to him as I flung in Madeira and released myself from his hold aiming for a double kick on his chin to make him lose his balance. Controlling me. It would be more like I am just interested in what Zero plans to do with this world. Akihiko gently moved back without making much movement. It's as if he can read my movements and where my next attack will happen. What do you mean by that? Who is Zero? This name I have never heard it before. What has he to do with us and him? And why the ruins especially? Hundreds of cards appeared in Madeira and made me its target. I projected heat energy from my body and created a barrier of pressurized heat. I thought this would work as I could not move away otherwise it would hit Akane and others. She was still in with the ritual forming a contract with the summoned beast. I need to hold out until then. While most of them got initially burned but suddenly the cards started passing through the holes in the barriers the previous ones left and impaled me. A soaring pain made my whole body shake and left me immobilized now. Giving up already. I thought you were going to protect your comrades. Akihiko you were not like that. You would never hurt people you knew. So why now? Is it because of that guy you mentioned? My name is Xander now, and my weak self is all in the past now. No more better to say I abandoned it just like I was stripped of my humanity. Monster that's what he called me. No, you are not a monster, so please talk to me. Stop this useless fighting. I was desperate, because fighting an old friend is something I still L couldn't accept. 145. You are just a weakling who ended up having peaceful good nights with the blessing of your gods. But me, he called me a monster and slaughtered my family. What really happened between him and his god? What changed him so much? He is not like the friend I knew him from before. Even if something terrible happened to you. I am sorry I was not there to help you, but if we work together we can figure something out. I was slowly condensing the fire barrier strengthening it as his guard attacks ceaselessly continued but I still was being roughed up badly with several cuts all over my body. I had lost a lot of blood. Tell me, is this how you are going to save your comrades? I haven't even started trying and it is already getting boring. Maybe I should end it so in a and then look at your face. Stop spouting nonsense. I know you can't kill anyone. Before you were even afraid to see blood. So how can you change so much in so little time? I put all of my remaining magic into the shield and increasing its radius I pushed back all the cards at once, but with that I was only left with the divine energy which was being supplied to me by Prometheus. For all I knew I could only launch one attack. That's right. At first the mere sight of blood would make me vomit but now, I can kill and that too with peace in my mind. Tell me have you ever killed any of your classmates? Akihiko tone totally changed to something ecstatic as if he was talking about eating food or indulging into something fun. Why are you talking like that? What's your point? This uneasiness inside me as I try to gulp in the dried spit in my mouth. It's just as I said. Killing a classmate. Yumika Furata was she. She is dead. We killed her while she begged for her life. 146. The air cleared out. The smoke receded and the heat condensed as water vapor on the icy surface of the woods. 
but both of my and Akane faces were frozen cold, as if something hard had hit us that we couldn't release our voice. What is he talking about? Killing your own classmate, people whom you once knew, from your own world. This isn't a joke, you can't joke about killing a human. You must be thinking that how can I kill a classmate, a human, but can't you see I am not a human myself. This world identifies me as a savage monster, wherever I go I will be hunted. So to make a place for myself, I have to wipe out those who cannot accept our survival. You are lying. She is not dead. Silver dragon lay waste to that enemy. Slaughter him. Akane cried and shouted at the same time as tears fell down from her face. She and Yumiko were good friends back at school, but in this world when she met with her as a noble princess former country in southeast she acted awfully cold, but Akane did not mind, she thought it was okay as long as she could had a good life. She still considered her a good friend, but the news of her death must have hit her hard, no for me too it was something unacceptable. We were all handed down a mission together so why kill each other? Even so Yumiko, how could she be killed and when? She too had a unique skill just like us. Absolute magic field, it allowed her to negate magic and counter attack or reverse it and even block a physical attack by a shield which her goddess had put on her. Something impenetrable and a power as untouchable like that. How could she be killed? Unless they tried to ambush her in that case her unique skill won't register it as an attack if Yumiko can't perceive it or they did something to her goddess beforehand and then killed her. 147. You are a liar. Stop spouting nonsense. All of my friends are alive and you cannot harm them. I will stop you. Silver Dragon finish him. Yes that's right. For all we know at present we cannot trust Akihiko words. We don't even know that he is an imposter but it's most unlikely. Even so if anyone can do something about it in the present then it's going to be us. Akane hold him, I think it would be best for us to work together and stop us. Yes, she was holding in her tears pretty wl, she had not given up and so won't I. The silver dragon she summoned from her unique skill beast symphony allowed her to summon a heavenly beast and it would be almost impossible to defeat it for Akihiko and after that we just need to restrain him. A heavenly dragon huh? That's pretty rare, I wonder how its meat tastes. The elder dragons where I used to live had a tough meat but they were considered a delicacy there. Rag. The silver dragon led out a huge roar, its scales silver and its eyes glinting a majestic gold. It was as if it understood the taunt of the man and did not need to be described what to do with him. Every time the dragon flapped its wings, an unbelievably powerful gust of wind blew past the surrounding area, the trees shaking as if they could get uprooted any time. I was glad we were not on some snow mountain to be swept away by a snow slide. The surprising thing was that, Akihiko did not look a bit concerned but excited to face the dragon. Even the strong wind attacks of the dragon did not move him an inch from his original position. No wonder it's a heavenly beast with its majestic and the overwhelming pressure it exuded was far greater than any monsters we had ever faced. I would never like to fight an opponent 148 like that without making preparations and would avoid it if I could make a choice. Maybe I should take this a bit seriously. Unique skill, Khan world, activate. Just as Okihiko activated his unique skill a red or who engulfed him and then dispersed running amok in the surrounding. What bothered me was that I could feel its overwhelming strength and hatred for us at the same time. Several huge guards appeared in front of him as it formed into shape of steps reaching all the way to the dragon. The dragon sensing the approaching danger opened its mouth wide, revealing its saw-like teeth. A massive amount of magical powers started collecting near its mouth and it turned into a huge jet ray silver beam. Akihiko did not stop moving or try to change his trajectory to avoid the focused attack, but climbing higher on his step cards he brandished his hand and the ray of beam turned into cards which started raining on the ground and disperse into shining droplets, like water. I could sense him focusing his magical aura in his right leg. What was he going to do? Dot just before the thought crossed my mind I let out a squeal of astonishment. No way. Akane followed my astonishment. Akihiko just now kicked the dragon on its lower jaw causing an intense shockwave which rippled out from the point of contact. The beast cried in anguish and was sent several meters away from its original position. 
This time the dragon furious it moved its paws to launch wind attacks and let out streams of lava jets from its mouth. Akihiko dodged all of them using shadow movement skill. I could tell because Jane uses it too. 149, but it was on another level, the shadows were discontinuous and that too in midair. He was using the shadows that formed over his own cards as an original point and the guard underneath it as the exit point. One could describe as the situation being explosive and as those heavy attacks landed for which would have usually left huge craters on earth or the wind claws that would have bisected all the trees and grounds into half, all were turned into cards. What kind of unique skill is that? Is this some kind of illusionary world? I don't think so. It is too real to be an illusion. SHHHH, we can't even figure out his unique skill, if we don't do something sooner. But still we had hopes on our dragon and to some extent we were bidding our safety on it. Useless beast, trying to ruin my shadow coat, it's pretty much getting late. I am going to end this business now. Saying that, all the cards that were now lying on the surface started rotating in circular waves around him. The numbers as if exponentially quintuple every time you looked at them. Flame hell of the jack. The cards suddenly started burning in a pink flame they started rotating around him gaining momentum with each rotation. The small procession within a matter of few seconds turned into a raging firestorm of cards and all we could do was look at it clashing with the huge sturdy body of the dragon as it got ripped into shreds. Thud. The dragon fell at a high speed on the ground like a meteor leaving a huge crater which gave an example of its inexplicable mass. And yet those paper cards annihilated it in a blink of an eye. 150. Akihiko stood laughing there as we were frustrated and tensed up at the same time. Because we were going to be his next target. What was he eventually going to do with us? Akane was almost flat on the ground with all her magic powers exhausted in that summoning. She could not perform a new one. Even if Orpheus supplied her with more divine energy she needed to have her own amount of MP to support its existence in this world. At present only one was her limit. This time I was the one who needed to do something. Something that could save us all from this crisis. But what? Now then which one of you is first willing to suffer an insufferable death? Or should I start with your gods or put your so-called comrades out of misery first? Akihiko was pointing his dagger at us again, he was bold with his words with no hesitation whatsoever and firm in his stance, was he really going to kill us? An old friend, from the time I had known him. Just an ordinary guy, how did it turn like this? I thought it would be a good redo life for everyone. So why does he look so hurt? Akihiko tell me is this what you really want, would killing us really satisfy you? I questioned him. No matter how many times you ask me, my answer won't change. This world disgusts me and I am going to change it according to my wish. Does something like that go old really be done? Of course we would have enough power pretty soon. We will destroy this world, put it in turmoil. Conflicts and wars would be all around. And then we would finally seize all the power for ourselves. 151. Something absurd like that may have thought but never succeeded. Prometheus he was still conscious. And it seems that Orpheus has regained her strength too. You gods run your mouths a lot. Maybe your supremacy and commandments have gone into your head. So it's rightful for me to put you in your place. So how about this? Two colorless crystal stones materialize in Akihiko's hands as he put them on display to show us properly. Wait what's so special about them? They look so ordinary and I can sense no power inside them whatsoever. Why you have those? They were supposed to be all gone. Oh, so you do know what they are. Ha huh, so you can realize what I am going to use them for. Akihiko gave a stern look at Prometheus, who my first time saw back down or looked afraid of something. Akin and Natsu get away from here. Tiho's Bectus Tenio stones are absolutely dangerous to even us gods and if used on humans it would kill them. Run away. Ah, so you do realize what they are. But these are now called origin stones and they have been greatly improved after the great war, or so I have been told. Akihiko what are you planning to do with them? There's still time we can fix it all. Everything will return back to how it was just talk to me. Yes, Totsuka. Talk to us we are willing to help you. Akane supported my words and it seems that she really meant it. Help me. 
you cannot help someone being this weak yourself. Things can never return back to how they were. There is no point in talking. You should enjoy your last moments and say farewell to each other. It won't be long. We would create a new world where those things will never 152 happen to us again. This is the path I chose and the only way to do it. Those gods, they betrayed our trusts and pushed us into something of a mess because they themselves can't figure it out. I know wh why don't you join us and I will let you two live. I would save you from their falsified so called protection in name only when all they just do is sit and watch and only act with their mighty power when it suits them the best. I would never join your side where there is no place for all of my comrades. If that's so then I will snatch those comrades away from you. Akihiko threw those stones in midair and chanting a small code of bright light unleashed from inside blinded us. The moment we opened our eyes we saw a colorful aura being drained out of Prometheus and Orpheus into the crystals. After a minute when even if I tried I couldn't get closer to that dense magical aura and was always repelled dismally. It's useless. You are too weak to stop with what is happening in front of you. The then colorless and now shining stones fell into his hands. Prom. Prom. Why aren't you answering? Orpheus. Orpheus say something. Both of them were unconscious and didn't answer no matter how long we called out to them. Something heavy struck my chest when I couldn't sense any power coming from them. It was almost as if they had no life inside. What did you do to them? Waving me the stones, he answered, you see these stones snatch every ounce of the divine energy these gods have and make them even fragile than humans. See how carefree they are sleeping and wouldn't even know when I would have killed them. 153. Akihiko you have gone too far with this. I will stop you right here and now. But if I kill you before, then that won't happen now would it? Kill. 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 That's all you have been speaking of since we met. I always think of you as a friend and even now I want you to be my friend. I still want to hold on to the fact that you are the same person who was back then so kind that he would never hurt anyone. Because no one could better understand what real pain meant that time. So stop hurting me and my friend and wake up. I could feel a huge energy swelling inside me. Was it my frustration? My magic reserves are already null. But this strange energy dwelling inside of me. I could tell it was Prom's power stacking up inside of me now. So even now that his protection is gone for the moment he helped me out turns out to be like this. I could sense my own energy mixing into this strange sensational chaotic energy. My life force SP parameter depleting at a tremendous rate. Natsu. Akane called out to me as if she too realized my awakening. While when I saw Akihika he was tearing apart his hairs. That stupid old friend of mine. I knew he was still the same crybaby like back then always confused about what to do. So I will stop you with my own hands and make you atone for your sins for hurting my friends. As I compressed all of my energy swelling inside into my fist I brought them into my right hand and concentrating it near my palm and supporting it with my left hand I pulled my arm in front from my back and a huge gigantic waves of blue flame rising as high as to touch the sky launched out from my palms. Why? Why it suddenly hurts so much? What a joke. I can't hurt someone what does he know? How can a happy guy like him know about real pain? How does it feel to lose everything in your life in an instant by the 154 same people you put your trust into? Always acting the good guy who tried to support me in my hard times when everyone avoided me like I was some sort of criminal. I was fine with everything a minute ago so why does it feel so strange now? Huh. This surge in energy, Natsuyu. Before Akihiko could continue his thoughts in the previous beat the huge blue flames engulfed him. Is it over? Akane said trying to look through all the smoke with almost zero invisibility. I fell on the ground, but Akane caught me as we both twitched our eyes in search of a common person, but suddenly my attention went to my status screen where a new title message was displayed. You have earned the title. Voltage Nova. The smoke passively cleared out and a dark shadow stood out in between. The forest in my front had been totally obliterated while my behind one was still intact. Everything in front was erased out of existence as far as I could look. Was that really me? Did I really do this? How did I get this strong? 
The pressure of the flames had gouged out part of the land and incinerated the entire spot. Steam still coming out of the scorched parts, the half-burnt grass under the snow and the trees still covered in a heated orange lining. It was a sight so absurd that it had to be a dream or a hallucination. And yet to our surprise and devastated looks a huge black ball stood in between half broken and half burnt. 155, 156. This ball was made of black cards which were radiating a much stronger roar than the previous cards we had seen before, and inside that sphere was a man standing facing opposite to us. It was though expected and yet surprising to find a Kihiko standing there with few burnt marks and tattered clothes. He put on his hood back. This time I am leaving you with a warning just like we gave to the others but if you stood again in our way next time I am definitely going to kill you. Saying that he with his deck of black cards mingled with its own shadow. His presence extinguished from the surrounding. Damn it. I couldn't do anything. I repeatedly kept on punching the ground even though my burnt hands from the blast were still being recovered by the healing magic of Akane. Hey, Natsu do you really think Yumiko is dead? Will the same happen to us? I don't really know, we will need to contact others and find ourselves. As for us next time we meet I am definitely going to defeat them, them specifically because now I definitely knew that he was not alone in this mess. Some strong and dirty power is at play which must be stopped at all costs, and it would seem that other missing classmates from the start might have been a part of it. Or maybe I am thinking too much into it. We needed to find our missing classmates and ensure their safety. If they were going to end like that, stop crying I am sure we are going to be fine. Let's put down these two hanging from the trees down first. Otherwise they would start complaining any time soon about how we air forger about them. 157. 158. Her dot right. She wiped her tears and did as I said to her. I pulled out the cards from the trunk and detached them as she casted healing magic on them, but it seems to have no effect. According to Akihiko they are in deep sleep and d so it seems with their condition that it's true. But for how long? Since we have been together this has never happened to us before to end up in a dire state. How are we going to defend this world if we are so easy to beat like this? But when I think about it, we were asked to save the world. But we were never specified the way we could chose to do it. Or how the saved world would be envisioned. According to what the common folk of this people imagine, the imperial kings who rule the countries, or the person who puts his life on the line to save it. In my previous life I would always worry about weekly tests and school homework but now this so amazing fantasy world did not appear to be so bright and happy to me. If that is the path some of my classmates chose to bring the world to its destruction and make a restart, I wonder what I will chose to do if given a choice, to stand idle? fight against those strong enemies who were once my classmates or abandon my ideals and stand alongside them just to save myself. Suddenly I felt something heavy and looking back, Akane was pulling my shirt, she looked dejected and heartbroken more than ever. Hey, what should we do now? Is it really safe to keep on going like this? Yeah, that's right. I need to keep my comrades safe, my new family, the god I contracted with and my party members. For that reason alone, next time we face those guys we would be definitely stronger to make it out alive without depending on someone's mercy. So let's keep adventuring together. Yeah. You are right. 159. Hey you two how long are you planning to keep flirting like that? It's getting harder and harder to play dead here. Marth was awake. But his comments seems to have scared Akane and ruined the mood and the emotional scene of a script it should have been. How long it had been since I was out. Jane was up too now. They did not question us anymore about the attack but helped us set up a camp and take care of Prom and Orpheus and keep their bodies warm. We didn't know how long it would take them to wake up. Their statuses showed almost no recovery in their stats, which was concerning but they were not dead. Only our connection to them had been severed. 
which we could feel by the missing amount of divine energy flowing in us. After a while we tried to explain what the attacker wanted for us to leave for and so we decided it was better to back off with our dread condition and travel back to the capital city in search for their treatment and maybe some new gear and clothes should be added to the list too. The atmosphere was still grim after such a terrible loss but we still hadn't given up hope and the spirit of adventuring still burns brightly within us. 160. Status Window. Natsuken Chai Name. Alan Age. 16 Race, Human Level, 2500 HP, 15000 MP, 10000 SP, 7000 Unique Skill, Furnace Keller, Skills, Fire Magic LV7 Divine Light Magic LV4, Wind Magic LV7, Burial Magic LV4, Magic Sense, Heat Resistance, Earth Magic LV4, Title, Voltage Nova, God in Contract, Prometheus, God of Fire 161 Status Window Akane Krygashi Name Ara Age 16 Race Human Level 2000 HP 9000 MP 15000 SP 6000 Unique Skill Beast Symphony Skills Summoning Magic Wind Magic LV6 Divine Light Magic LV6 Water Magic LV5 Magic Sense Title Peacemaker God in Contract, Orpheus, Goddess of Music and Poem 162 Status Window Name, Marth Age, 17 Race, Human Level, 2200 HP, 9900 MP, 10000 SP, 6500 Skills, Body Reinforcement, Wind Magic LV5, Earth Magic LV5, Water Magic LV4 Status Window Name Jane Age 17 Race ELF Level 2300 HP 10000 MP 14000 SP 5000 Skills Wind Magic LV5 Dark Magic LV4 Earth Magic LV5 Water Magic LV4 Shadow Movement 163 Status Window Akihiko Totsuka Name Zandalift Age 17 Race, Red Demon, Devil Hybrid. Level, 3000 HP, 20,000 MP, 25,000 SP, 24,000 Unique Skill, Khan World. Skills, Fire Magic LV9 Dark Matter Magic LV2, Earth Magic LV7, Hyper Velocity, Magic Sense, Magic Resistance, Fast Regeneration, Steel Body, Empowerment, Titles, The Trickster from the Bottomless Pit. God in Contract, Loki, God of Mischief 164 165 Chapter 5 And Evil for Evil Damn it, why? I struck on the wall of the frozen cave where every inch of the wall was covered in deep white ice which by time had forgotten to melt on its own. Why couldn't I finish them? It was much easier with my other classmates or other it felt fulfilling that time. Even if I had made up my mind. Is it because I still considered him a good friend of mine? But that's all in the past now and this life is totally different. Doesn't matter next time for sure. I said to myself as I tread down faster, the stairs of this ruin which I found deep inside the snowy mountain bidden by a magic illusionary barrier just as he told me and gets wider and wider after every turn I took delving deep underground, the deeper I went the darker and colder it became. But this only made sure for me that I was in the correct ruins, I couldn't have allowed them to roam here like pests after all and discover the secrets behind it. Before I reincarnated in this world I thought I would get a totally new life to live, different from the previous ones. For me it was like a delete button of my pale history. I also considered it a gesture of God for my salvation from the hell I was living in. 166. My classmates used to consider me some sort of criminal. As if I had murdered someone and came running to school. Everyone gave me a scornful look as they passed me if they knew all of secret. And if someone didn't know then the others would make sure to tell them. People are rather quick to splash dirt on others. No one likes cleaning their own mess and someone others is considered a taboo. But he was different. Natsu he grabbed my hand and asked me to join his basketball club. At first I stared at him. Wondered why he was doing this. Did he want to stomp on me just like others did and the make fun? If that's what he really wants then let he him have it. I didn't care about my life anymore. 
neither about my self-respect. All was lost on that day. My father murdered his own friend from whom he had taken a huge loan and always refused to return it. My mother had left me after a year I had been born. I don't remember her and father threw away all of her pictures and things of memory. I was always kept in the dark. Further used to always say to me that how he was the only one I could depend on in my life. I have no one else to ask for help and even if I asked no one would help me. That's how he would always keep me indoors. On daily basis, he would used to come home drunk and destroy all the housewares. And on certain weeks time when he would be frustrated he would slap me and go to sleep. Later in the morning he would ask for my forgiveness and say that he loved me. Maybe that's how my upbringing mostly has been or that's what mostly kept me sane and going. Maybe that's how he kept me caged all this time. Or, that was his own way of not letting me go because he loved me. Day after day, as I grew up. His demeanor towards me changed. He would start complaining about how I have been an inconvenience to him this whole time and I am only alive because of him. The maniacal love. 167. He would shower on me was now turning into something disgustingly dark. Jealousy. That's how I would word it. He was jealous of me. Because he thought I had him. Because I would never leave my son alone. But my wife left me even though I loved her. It's your fault. It was just after you were born. Maybe that's how my father felt. Someday attacking me with a kitchen utensil for dropping eggs, or make me stuff stale vegetables raw because I forgot to take proper care of them. Slowly when did these little things turned into me being beaten for no reason even I don't know. I was always at home alone and even at school my father told me to never talk to someone. So, I never knew how one would describe my situation. The environment of the house soon started changing when all kinds of hoodlum looking guys who would talk vulgar all day started coming regularly to my house with my drunkard father. Then there were those who started knocking on the doors asking for their borrowed money why which my father lost in gambling. Whenever I told him to stop gamble, he would start beating me again telling that I was only able to eat everyday meal because he has been working hard. But all day I saw him resting at home, coming late at nights all drunk and then the usual unjustified beating on regular basis and the morning forgiveness. It turned into a routine, the bandages near my abdomen would usually hide the bruises and the back which was scarred with red marks which by now had become permanent. Myself was disappearing and I was slowly getting adapted to all of this too just like the previous old times. But then he started bringing women in the house and the same kind of hoodlums guys started staying at home. But one thing never changed. 168. He kept on beating me even in front of them. Calling me a pitiful kid who was abandoned by his own cruel mother and he was the only one who took care of me. That's how my father usually described me in front of his friends. When I tried to say something. He would call it business work and make me shut up. Slowly the things in the house started vanishing too, and he would blame me in front of his friends for stealing and making me naked and beating me to his heart desires. Even if I cried and told him that the one who was stealing were his so-called friends he wouldn't listen. You are just a cheater and lie like your mother. I hate you just like I did your mother. If only you would have disappeared along with her, it would have given me back my freedom. Then he kicked me. It's all your fault, it's all your fault, it's all your fault. Shouting at me like that he threw chairs at me and then came his belt raining down on my back. That was the first time I did not cry when I was being beaten because I knew now my voice won't reach to anyone. That morning after he asked me for forgiveness that was the first time I turned away and in return I got slapped for not obeying him. I was abandoned, he said it himself that he hated me. My mother hated me. My father hated me. And then there was no one else. There is no point to care about them. The only one who cares about me is me alone. Then one day, a man in black suit came and my father welcomed him properly. He brought in drinks and speaking politely to him. Though I could tell that the black suit guy was getting frustrated by each passing second. From inside my father called me and started beating me again in front of that guy. 169. It's this child fault, he tore up all the money you gave me. See how I put him in his place and punish him for you. 
further took out his belt as usual and started throwing blows on my naked back where the skin was red instead of the normal peach. The man got scared and started shouting to stop but my father continued. You are lying, stop putting the fault on your son and beating him. I did not pay heed to the pain soaring in my back but the voice of a man who was asking to stop hurting me. This was for the first time someone asked my father to stop what he had been doing for years. Others would usually smile back at me and tell me to be a good son or sometimes would lend my father a hand or new ways of correcting and disciplining me and take control over me. That's how they justified the burn on my left palm to use the candles on the cake they brought for themselves to celebrate for. Seeing that the man did not follow up with his tactic, he threw me out of the room. After a long heated exchange, there were crashing of two bottles and the sound of the tables being flipped. Ag.akahi.co. Quickly come here, help me. I quietly opened the door and seeing the inside horrible scene I puked. There was blood everywhere shards of sharp strong glass pieces scattered around. Half of the bottle slid in the throat of the black suit guy and his eyes rolled up his body and suit soaking in a pool of blood still gushing out of his throat. And from under the turntable I could hear deep hurried breaths of a man calling out for help in his feeble voice. That was my father calling out my name. Akiko you damn child, I know you Arthur. Help your P.A.P.A. he loves you so help him. Call the ambulance. 170. I went closer to take a look at the person and another bottle was fixed in his body where his stomach should have been. With the pain and his legs crushed under the table he couldn't move otherwise the blood would pour out of the wound. If I called the ambulance, probably he would be saved. But I waited. I stared at him. You monster. Call for help. Help your father. His voice skyrocketed as pain was taking over his consciousness. My ears were hurting with his voice calling me his son and a monster at the same time saying that he loves and some day that he hates me which one it is his harsh voice the blood all around here the stink of death from the man who was asking my father to stop beating was making my senses go bleak it's so unfair unfair I wondered will everything become normal if all of these things vanished what if I really disappear from in front of his eyes Thinking that I pushed one of the glass pieces fallen on the floor inside the man's neck while he looked at me with a grim look and eyes as red as blood itself was pouring out of it. When I thought the voices stopped I closed down his eyelids and went and slept in the bedroom. Next day the police came and sealed my house. They took me in custody and took my testimony. They said that they found my fingerprints on the bottles including my dad and the black suit guy. I just said that I carried the bottles in the room and they let me go. This all happened when I was in middle school. After a year I decided to change schools under the care of a faraway relative. And maybe this information somehow spread in the high school on the first day that my father was a killer. All kind of rumors started exploding. How my father was a bad guy. How I am not fit to be in such a good environment. Or 171. How I could be an accomplice in my father's dealing, or the act that I could have spent the last year of my life in jail and was hiding things. For two weeks things went on the same and I did not mind the rumors. I didn't know them and they didn't know me. They didn't try me and I didn't let them try me. But one of them still kept on insisting how I should join the basketball club because of low members. His continuous pestering got me and I went with the flow. For a month I watched. The next day just like he grabbed my hand and brought me to the club. He took me to the court. For the next two months I played, and when I realized I was already surrounded by other basketball club members who admired my talent in it, I knew this guy had in it. Akihiko get ready for the next round. Yeah. I replied to Natsu the person, who turned my life upside down. But I was liking this change. Maybe he was my best friend and I still did not know whether he felt the same about me. And I never wanted him to be bothered with the question. For the first time I thought he could be the one to accept me even if I explained him the one who silenced my father forever was me. He just might be the only who could have understood my situation back then. But after the summer vacation everything changed when we got held up in the bus accident, then it to heaven and finally reincarnate into a new world. We were told that we would get our new forms according to our personality and nature affinity. I was born in a humanoid monster tribe, Red Demon Clan. 
We were living on an island all in the extreme west of the map and surrounded by the fog. According to my father who was the tribe chief we lost the war and our place in this world, but this world unlike any other had magic, a new loving mom and a caring further from birth, as I saw them take care of. 172 Me I did not care whether they were monster or I was a monster hybrid. We never came in contact with other species with the fact that how isolated we were with the help of illusionary fog which kept strangers away and prevent them from visiting this island, though I could not find my god in contract Loki anywhere. So I waited for him, on this island you had to hunt and eat dangerous beast. But when I went on my first hunting trip I saw blood and started puking. Was it the trauma from my previous life as I froze still and lost consciousness? My father did not mind and instead told me to wait for some more years to stay away from hunting and try again later on. Things were peaceful, I would play with village children, train in everyday magic taught by mother and later learn fighting with father. I never know why train in fighting but he told me that as the son of tribe chief it was a necessity and I did my best and my father would usually praise me for being so talented in whatever I did, well I would say it was thanks to the stat boosts which we got from all of our respective gods and then there was my unique skill with which I used to show magic tricks to my friends and village children back from my world. They would still get amazed by such a simple trick to cut half a body or predict a card calling or separating thumbs. They started calling me by all sorts of name like priest or prophet or master. And swear in G loyalty to my glory and other crazy weird ritual things of a medieval fantasy world. Nothing was amiss, when one day a huge battleship similar to which I once saw in a pirate movies came sailing in. 173 Suddenly my body felt a chill as a rush of energy made my body heavy and restless with bursting magic powers. It was my god in contract because I felt the same when he made the contract with me, that day I was off in the mountains practicing the powers of my unique skill, I was unsure of its real uses but I think I was learning to use it both offensively and for defensive purposes, I could hear a massive sound of a giant horn and tried to chase the voice hurriedly as if to welcome him, now I could set off on a journey with him. I always wanted to get out of this island and see this new magical world, though I have to leave the village for that. It will surely make me sad. But I think I would keep returning here sometimes. Boom, 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 boom. Huge explosions with flames and large black clouds of smokes rising high up in the sky were visible to me. Is it some kind of firework display for welcoming? But why is it coming from the village? I hurried my steps as I ran into one of the villagers lying on the ground. I thought it was not safe and good for health to sleep in the middle of road so I wanted to wake him up. On pushing his back. Hey, wake up mister. Oh ah the ants will surely nest in your ears. The body flipped without much effort, which shouldn't be possible with our sturdy built as a huge blood stain covered his brown rags. He was already dead and forever asleep. A body as peaceful as I had seen before that makes no noise that would discomfort anyone. I could feel a gaping sword wound in his chest. 174. Wah. I puked disgusted by the very sig height. This order of quietness was making me sick. The village. I thought as I ran towards it. Co.ku. The burning dust, smell of fumes have mingled deep into the air itself which made me feel choked. As one who has been living in such bounty of nature, it reminded me of how polluted the air was in the city. Why? How did this happen? Hey you. You there, anyone. Help me. I led out large shouts tears pouring down my eyes heavily as a destroyed village came into my view, the burnt and ripped apart houses released long trials of smoke into the air. The burnt smell of ash, the smell of fresh blood, it all reminded me of death. Several bodies lying on ground, covered in blood. When did this all happen? I was just gone for a while. Who did this? The same thoughts curling up in my mind, I ran through the streets. Whoever did it did not spare even the children and women as their lifeless bodies lay on the floor. I was almost at the center of village which was under the cover of a huge magical tree which is said to be the source of magic on this island and the thing that maintained the illusionary fog on the outside. Father. I let out a scream as I saw a man in a golden armor suit thrust a sword into his neck. No, no dot no. Why? 
I fell on the ground unable to think anymore. I see you are finally here. I have been asking all of these people about you but they never opened their mouth. It helps that you yourself came running. You see I had been worried sick about you. The person smiled at me as he wiped a small blood stain from his cheek. He looked disgusted by the thought of blood smudging on his skin. 175 Who is this person? Why is he talking like that he knows me? Why did he do all of this? There were so many why questions that I wanted to know the answers from but I was trembling on the floor. Unable to speak. Unable to move. The man came closer to me, brandishing his sword. No. Don't come close. Don't hurt me. He smi led again as if wishing me to move on a happy journey. I don't want to die, don't kill me. Please save me someone. Anyone help me. My friends from before, the god who contracted with me. Someone. The light of the sword running past across my eyes, when blood splattered all over my face. It was not my blood, not the blood of person standing in front of me, but the blood of the one who protected me. I felt the coldness of the blade impaling the warmest of all hearts. Mum. Stop. No, mum. As mother fell on the ground a large wound opened inside of her. Run away, Xander. Live. Your mother loves you. So do what she says. Her pupils shook with the tears as her body slowly lost its strength. The soft voice pierced my ears and at that time I felt like waking up from a dream. My pain was gone. My heart was not aching anymore. It was not racing anymore. It felt more at peace. Maybe it was broken or had stopped moving. You monsters sure are resilient being. Well I will finish it in the next blow for sure. Monster. 176. I realized one thing did not change. My ears weren't hurting but they were itching. Itching so harshly because I wanted to hear the screams of the people who tried to slaughter my people. The family I loved and wanted to spend my life with. So you can speak after all. So do you realize now who I am? The man in the golden armor holding the bloody sword was still smiling right at me. Cut that smile from your face. Hey, come again. Why would I after all I'm doing a good job by wiping out trash. These all here are monsters. So we can slaughter them for the benefit of this world. After all this is all to make this world a much better and cleaner place. Clean. Trash. Aren't you the trash here? You are calling your god Loki trash. Who gave you this power? know your place fool. Your mere sight disgusts me. Even though you are weak, I had to form a contract with you because our magical wavelengths resonated effectively. So I thought to make do with you, but you being born a monster is such a disgrace to my honor, that I need to kill you and wipe out all the evidences of your existence. After this I would triumphantly return to my domain claiming your heads here. Are you feeling sorry for yourself? Deep down when for the first time I saw him I knew he was my god in contract, Loki and now he also told me the reason why he destroyed my family. Because he hated me. Is that the reason why my family was killed? No. It's these people fault. Fault of the people of this world that couldn't accept that passion of monsters. We are not mindless. We did not try to kill someone. Living peacefully here, just so we don't disturb others life. They came chasing after us claiming that we are the evil. 177. I feel so sad for them and pathetic myself. Taking it all so easy. So this is the world where such kinds of people live, that I had to save. No. I think I know now. Why I was reincarnated in this world. I needed to save this world from such kind of people. As if time had stopped moving for me. I was losing consciousness. My mind felt heavy. As if it would burst with the blood gathering inside. So why don't I let it out? A red status message appeared in front of me but I think I did not want it to be bothered by it. Mind contamination level breached. Exiting passive mode. Soul density contamination level exceeded. Fail to control. Processing. Fail to control. Processing. Processing. Fail to control. Berserk mode activated. Dark contamination evolved into pure lack miasma. All limiters removed. Loki's contract void. Result null. Forced expulsion. Target source acquired. Outsourcing magic power from target. 178. Initializing process. What the hell is this? Shut up. But for some reason my body started feeling light and ever stronger than before. You. Swine. What did you do to me? 
how can you cancel a God's covenant all on your own? This is absurd, it doesn't matter, I am going to finish and sever all the bonds that I ever shared with a monster like you. You should be proud that to slay an evil monster a god himself showed up to kill you. Die with the regret that this is all your fault. That because you existed in this world all these people had to die. I did not reply then. But in that instant I quickly rose up from my place, and grabbed the man by a neck, tightly clutching it between my fist. It was just a thought, but my body acted on its own. Loki's face paled and was now drenched in white as if life itself was being sucked out of him. Phase change started. Absorbing sour seas power. 0% 10% 20% 50% 80% 90% 98% 99.9% 100% .9 Transfer complete. What did you do to me? What are all of you looking at me attack him this is my order. I felt stronger by every second as the power within me growing at an exponential rate. My red hairs became longer. My body became more mature and muscular. And my short horns became much longer. Is this some kind of transformation? It hurts a little. But the sensation felt like a bliss. It felt like I could do anything in this world. Card world. Activate. 179. Hundreds of cards appeared around me as the original red color turned into black and radiating an intimidating black aura. I did not care because they felt a thousand times stronger than before. As they were launched at the other soldiers, their flesh sliced into thin pieces and blood splattered on the ground to the extent of forming a small pound. Some tried to run. Hey, shouldn't they be unable to use magic except for us? You think that the force field has stopped working? Ah, there's no escaping it. I smiled as I gouged out each of their flesh and hearts with my severing guard attacks. It was fun, making them remind the same pain and anguish my people would have felt. You. You stole my god's power, how did you, you turned into a real monster after all, your humanity was just a clothing that the real you rejoice because your hands are stained in blood, I looked at my hands there was nothing, so are you going to kill me, a god, can you commit a sin of killing a god, bow in front of me mortal and I will forgive you of your crimes and grant you your salvation, I did not know exactly who was saying all this, how did he exactly look, but my itching ears wanted to hear no more further, my ears started itching again, I looked at my hands again and this time I could really see they were red, a smile appeared on my face, I took the man in my fist by his collar and slammed him on the ground with excessive force, I raised my fist upwards higher and swung it down releasing all of my dwelled up feelings in one go, 180, pow, once, twice, thrice, I think I then roared and screamed, bashing my enemy's head until I finally smashed the Emin's skull and brain to pieces, but now that I think of it, it burst open in the first punch, I looked back at my hands and realized that it was my skin color that was actually red, but now it was even redder with the fresh blood leaking from it, a big pillar of light appeared out of nowhere from above the sky creating a hollow in the grey clouds and suddenly the body on which I had been sitting on dispersed into tiny molecules of rainbow light and vanished in the next instant, he might have returned to heaven after all I thought as I rose up and looked up high in the sky, now the atmosphere really felt in harmony, and the next thought, but now what, I suddenly looked around with a pair of bloodshot eyes when a huge shadow appeared out of a swirling fog of ashes, who are you? This strange sensation almost left me in a defensive stance as I scowled at him. Even with such a strong power flowing inside me I could instinctively tell with my now heightened sense that I was no match for this being. He wore a huge black robe with a hood beneath which I could only see darkness and black fog radiating out of other three openings. Let me help you. A strange tight voice came under from the black robe and extending a warm help to me. I heard a huge sin's voice as I remembered about the ship with which Loki came. 181. A strange purple lightning emerged from the sky and charred the ship in the next second as the burnt out pieces fell and sunk into the river filled with shark monster that would devour the corpses of the crew. There was no question of survivor with the amount of light that sparkled on the ship or to the extent that the ship was reduced to ashes. Who are you and what are you here for? My name is Zero and I am here to fulfill your wish. Isn't it fallacious to assume that you would know of my wish? 
I want you to become the part of my world which I am going to create where people like you are accepted and can live freely. It is time for those ignorant gods watching from the top to rethink about their omnipotence and exceptionalism and the disrespect they have shown to this natural world. Those words from a stranger were not trustworthy. The man was suspicious than even the salesman of my previous world, but the idea which he wanted to sell to me was more than enough for me to make me follow him through a black portal that led me straight to hell. Now that I remember, I left all my brethren corpses untouched because that was the rule in our village, whenever someone died his body was thrown into a deep pit saying that it should be returned to from where it came. Let the nature do its work. This world contains my family now and I won't let others discriminate or make it unhappy anymore. 182. I had almost reached the bottom through the last flight of stairs of the cave, when a huge door covered entirely in ice came into view. Almost 80 feet tall this door, I wondered what was inside in it that Zero wanted it so badly, according to him. This gate is supposed to be sealed and no mortal magic would be able to break through it, that's why. As planned I took out the two origin stones from my storage and placing it in front of me I smashed them on the wall with my concentrated energy fist. Swirling light came radially flowing out of it. This outburst of magical energy was more than anything I had ever seen before. So this is the true power of two gods. Having all this power and yet they act so high and mighty and aloof but still do not use it to stop all the unfair things happening in this world. Then let me have that power and I will use it myself as I see fit. The door cracked, as the thick ice sheet crumbled into small sparkly crystals and melted into the next instant by the heat of the light. In the next second a huge hole appeared into the gate and a thrust of cold storm poured to the outside. As I walked in, my mind was blown. So this is Cossetus's army. It was an unbelievable sight to behold. The gods during the Great War had sealed an army of frost giants led by Cossetus along with him and his 80,000 troops strong. Such a huge army was silently sleeping with their eyes open under a thin plain white sheet of ice. But it's not like I could just carry them to the base or wake them all up and march them there. 183 184 This was the part of the mission I hated the most of all. I took out a communication stone from my pocket and set my location tracer on. The next second the stone glowed and a black portal opened up beside me and a girl walked in holding a spear staff dressed in a black tight uniform of some kind of maniac cult who would shamelessly preach an unknown entity and claim to get salvation if you start drinking and eating the food only sold at their affiliated stores. Amazing. So you found it. Master Zero will be happy with our work. With this it would greatly boost our military strength and now we have the almighty Cossetus too. Wait. Wait why did you showed up, Chioda? Our work is still not done so don't waste my time. And I am the one who did all the hard and dirty work. Don't act all buddy buddy with me and know that I am stronger than you stronger than everyone. Even this army won't stand against the powerful instant death magic that I got from Master Zero who saved me. Kariba Chioda, another reincarnate and human who works under Zero and is faithfully devoted to him to the extent of saying in essence of soul. I wonder what's her story, but with the little information I know she was weak and was exploited by her goddess. But then when she was about to die she was saved by Zero and learned instant death magic. It's just like it sounds, she can kill anyone just by seeing the person, but no one knows know how she does it. I think it was about time when you would call me. Another person in white robe about the same height as me and of an unknown race walked through the dark hole. Sakamoto Sander, wielder of time and space magic to an extent that he can sometimes even stop time or change its flow but again I don't know how he does it. 185 Both of them keeps the secret of their power hidden and rarely shows them off. That's why they are the kind of monsters and I wonder is anyone really in the outside world who could defeat these two with such frightening powers. I doubt even if a god would descend he would be no match, unless he is a high ranking god we are the strongest in the world and will do anything to get our wishes and plans through. Hey tell me, okay did you kill those two, didn't you just say Chioda to not act so friendly? I frowned at her, I see so you failed at killing them. Well we need to report that to Master Zero too, I just gave them a warning and got what I really wanted, 
Next time if they stand in our way I will definitely kill them. You are just so pathetic, but if it was me, first I would have given them a sleep death and would have drank their blood to my heart's content. Her craze for blood is more worse than I thought. At this point of time I wonder whether the fact she is a human is even true or not. Stop disturbing me and get ready. Sakamoto interrupted. He then opened a huge portal gate on the ceiling where all the living ice statues of the army got sucked in as we flew inside the hollow and vanished in it with it. 186. Information Brochure. Current Status of Reincarnates and Their Gods. Homura Kenta. Freya. Goddess of Lust. First Prince of Lativania Kingdom. Currently studying in Grind Alwood Magic Academy. Natsu Kenchai. Prometheus. God of Fire. Adventuring together with other reincarnate Akane Kirigashi. Sudo Fujibayashi. Ares. God of War. Prince of a Royal Family. Currently studying in Grind Alwood Magic Academy. Sakamoto Sander. Kronos. God of Time and Eternity. Currently working as a Devil's Army General under Zero. Status of God. Unknown. 187. Ryuji Uka. Takemi Kazuchi. God of Swords, son of a Count family, currently studying in Grind Alwood Magic Academy. Okeren Oishima, Hermes, the Messenger God, second son of a royal family, currently studying in Grind Alwood Magic Academy. Kanata Aizawa, Hefa Estes, the Smith God, currently in Dwarven Kingdom, researching on latest weaponry technology. Suspected of some huge top secret project underway. Akihiko Totsuka, Loki. God of Mischief, currently working as a Devil's Army General under Zero. Status of God, Return to Divine Realm. Hashima Kachuragi, Poseidon, God of Sea, currently working as a Devil's Army General under Zero. Training pirates in the Northern Middle Ocean to disturb trade routes between demons, humans, demi humans, and delves. Status of God, Unknown. 188. Kenma Takeshi, Erebus. God of Darkness, Second Prince of Perilous Empire, currently studying in Grind Alwood Magic Academy, secretly working alongside Zero and Erebus to take over the control of this world and rebuilding it. Haridakatri, Artemis, Goddess of Hunting, First Princess of Alucrad Empire, currently studying in Grind Alwood Magic Academy. Yumika Furata, Aphrodite, Goddess of Love, Deceased, Status of God, Unknown, Siaka Tenma Diana. Goddess of Forest, daughter of a Marx family, currently studying in Grind Alwood Magic Academy. Akane Kirigashi, Orpheus, god of music and poem, adventuring together with other reincarnate Natsu Kenchai. Seitumi Yakta, Ikalos, god of nightmares, currently working as a Devil's Army General under Zero together with her god. 189. Sigura Kendo, Astera, goddess of justice, princess of a royal family. Arma Donjo, Ova, Goddess of Beast, daughter of a noble family, currently studying in Grind Alwood Magic Academy. Saki Honda, Inu, Goddess of Blood, currently working as a Devil's Army General under Zero. Status of God, Unknown. Kariba Chioda, Kali, Goddess of Death, previously an adventurer, currently working as a Devil's Army General under Zero. Status of God, Return to Divine Realm. Saki Kondo, Athena. Goddess of Knowledge, currently living in the Great Tathaya Labyrinth with her family. Athena is the Princess of Heart Kingdom, currently looking after her territory and taking care of monster invasions. Formed a secret spy organization to search for Suki now Alicia. 190. 191. Chapter 6. Red Spider Lilies. It has been almost more than a year since I met mother and father and started living a peaceful and happy loving life here with them. Learning magic and all kinds of fighting combat techniques from them. I have finally completed my single sword swordsmanship training and dual wielding under the guidance of the one title true hero of this world, Carolyn, my mother. Yeah. I responded to my mother, in the training grounds. Alicia you have completed and learned all the things I had to teach you to. And now, yes, but now it's time to put those things to use. Yes, so, so again, we are going to have you give a test, and you're only allowed to leave when you pass in it otherwise you will have to learn everything from basics again. 192. What? 
A test even in a fantasy world. What kind of torture is this and if I fail it's like being punished to a summer revision class session for Ian's. It does seem a good offer that I can live here a bit longer, but I need to go outside and see the world for myself. Andy I don't want to fail and make my hard work both I and mother had put in and everything look meaningless. I want to pass with flying colors if possible to make them feel proud and me happy. So, what and when is the test gonna be? I asked a bit terrified. Knowing mother, she could ask me something terrible or make me fight her one. One. Usually if we start battling we never could reach a decisive result to announce one winner. But I had to always keep myself on toes and hyperactive when fighting against mother, but to me she always occurred to be a natural. Her flawless and elegant fighting style always captures my heart and I always keep on looking how she moves during her fight. Her small movements, quick attacks, massive mid-battle hits and final decisive blows. Within time I wanted to be so much like mother that I adapted to her fighting style, whose own fighting style is the combination of best of all sword techniques she has learned and her own experience on the battlefield. 4. That let's head to one of the floors. Mother winked at me. She looked excited which in turn made me doubly super excited. I knew something awesome was going to happen. Mother and father never go to other floors to fight monsters, actually they never fight unless training us. 193, but here we were on floor 95, a marshy plain area, and the monster in front of us was a horde of titan appearance and a four-handed quad arms. Maybe it sensed our presence and shot a bloodshot four eyes towards us. But I was waiting for mother's instruction because both of us knew even if it they were a strong bunch of monster. It was neither a match for both of us. Watch me, carefully Alicia. Saying this mother closed her eyes and for a second concentrated. I used my analysis skill, my ability to observe soul core and its subtle changes and the magic energy flowing inside mother's body and in that of the immediate surroundings. I had my eyes everywhere. I had to learn fast and become strong, so I needed to observe carefully and be a good listener. And most important of all practice endlessly to my heart's content. To be honest it felt so fulfilling, I had never been so passionate about doing things eagerly because then I had nothing to do with the future. I found it quite bleak and to be utterly dark for me, but now there was a string of shining light and to hold on tight to it every day I have to wrap it around my hand, tighter and tighter unless I reach my goal. Being pulled closer to the bright ideal side of your dreams is something I could have never hoped to achieve in my previous life but now when I have mother by my side. I think everything becomes possible for me. I won't stop. I have come this far so I cannot burn out at this point of time. I wanted to know more, anything and everything that would help me to achieve whatever I wanted to be in this world, and then, it finally started happening. 194 Magical energy outputs from her magic veins were bursting with overflowing amounts of magic power. Then there was like a sudden bombing inside her soul core with ever increasing increment of light from it. She was constantly burning large amounts of magical powers and life force and focusing it all on her sword. She opened her eyes, her body covered in a golden light aura she raised her swords and taking a new kind of stance like forming the two sharp blades of a mixer grinder, dual wielding star drive. Fourth form platinum jaguar phantom spirit unleashed, in the next instant the marshy plains, suddenly transformed into an evergreen dense jungle with lights of small canopies over the lush green tall grass which grew out of nowhere. In front of my eyes several bright star-like lights appeared and joining lines to each other by connecting the dots. A jaguar sprung into life, jaws open and fangs bared, with a much larger body than the already gigantic titan moving forward to attack us. It led out a deafening unbelievable roar and running on the ground it leapt on the titans and took it into its wide open maw, tore each of their bodies into half in a single bite. After that everything reverted back to normal, but the only difference was that those level 7000 titans was defeated in a single sword strike, no by a jaguar or by. I had never seen a sword technique until now this powerful to defeat the enemy in a single blow. I really don't know what exactly it is but mother is always awesome because she always has some new kind of technique to show me. 195 196 
We returned back to our training grounds but all this time I have been thinking how to use or replicate the same move after using analysis skill on it, but I was specifically waiting for mother's instruction on what to do next, and also my concerns regarding the test which I still did not get it. Alicia, I am sure this was your first hand experience with it. So tell me what do you feel about it? It was totally awesome and that Star Jaguar appeared out of nowhere and killed those monsters in an instant. I want to learn it too. Teach me how to do IT too? I knew I had a twinkling star in between my eyes. Those were meant to show my eagerness to learn. Now that I expected you to say this is what we call oral arts. The most supreme and powerful combat technique in the entire world. Supreme and powerful in the entire world. I gasped in excitement. Now I wanted to learn this technique even more. As for your test it is to learn this oral arts all on your own. On my own. I shouted in surprise. This was the first thing mother ever told me to do on my own. Yes, you can take all your time you want but you have to create the most powerful oral art for yourself that you can use in combat. The next time we train it will be when you complete this task. That's all for today. But, but, I wanted to learn it from you. Everything, it's all right because I know you will make a totally new kind of oral art that would surpass mine. So I will be waiting. Mother gently stroked me on my head and then finally left. I was still speechless. 197 how I am going to do something on my own. I might be good at creating new magic spells because it is easier to imagine a phenomenon and ask for it to happen, but creating a fighting technique all on my own. If it is the strongest, then shouldn't mother especially teach me this, if that's the case. I think I later understood why. When I started collecting information on this oral arts technique, it is not specifically designed just for swords but all kind of fighting techniques. More importantly it's a technique designed by Godes themselves to control the flow of life energy inside the body and in the outside world that brings phenomenal changes that is desired by the user's mind into reality, more like forming a metaphysical territorial plane of your own imagination, it is like creating your own world domain of imagination and trapping the target inside it. Once this new field phenomenon takes place. The user's overall ability is tremendously magnified and any attack deployed becomes a guaranteed hit. Manifesting an oral art requires vast amounts of magic power, life force, high mental fortitude and a clear peaceful mind. Hence this also makes it the most difficult fighting ability to master. There are very few who can teach it, even fewer who learns it on their own and still even fewer who manifests it accidentally based on a crisis or an emergency desire. The longer you train in it the better and more refined this combat art gets. So the requirements are to construct a real tangible environment that I want and then use it to my advantage to defeat an enemy. Mother used a phantom beast constellation which matches with her own unique ability, phantom materialization. 198. The thing is I really don't know what I can imagine when I don't know what I want it to be like. I didn't want to rush things so I have to regret it later on. Mother did tell me to take any amount of time I wanted. But seeing mum, perform it once I wanted to do it too, so I was getting impatient at the same time. Quite contradictory, so I started hitting the library and tried to learn more about this thing and its other users. I asked father and he too has one of his own but he refused to show me saying that mother has instructed not to. It was a test after all so cheating is not allowed. Well, for now I decided to observe. Keep a look at your surrounding and try to ponder deep in your heart. You will find your answer. Quite a cliched and ambiguous statement for a realist like father. But mother did tell me that people of this world do like these kind of dramatic dialogues because gods too used it to sway the hearts of people and gain popularity. I wondered if they were having an idol contest for fans before war that they needed to get people's attention so badly, well that hint only got me fired up and I started to investigate things even deeper with much more interest and zeal, I tried to look inside things, broke things using my, dismantle, spell and later put everything back to its original using my, equivalent exchange, unique ability, anything I went around I dismantled it. I started breaking all kinds of magic stones kept in the alchemy lab, breaking all kinds of tools and weaponry in the storeroom and did not even left the antique, 
There was no problem in breaking stuff around if I could just use equivalent exchange to fix it back, though this did lead to accidents like I once allowed a poisonous gas to release from a do not touch vial, or further accidentally pressed a fragile 199 piece of actively cut explosive stone tightly, which later led him being bedridden for a week. Though I healed him with my healing magic but since I have been screwing around with his library tower, he has got mental scars and do not want to go there again until I had given my test and he had already decided to stay until then locked up in his room. Well, it's not a pleasant feeling to have a live bomb blast accident in your hand and then you are asked again to cross a road filled with landmines, but I am sure he will get around it soon. If possible a little more than sooner. So, I have now got all the freedom in the library now when suddenly the magic circuit inside an artifact fissioned into two and blew apart the right top half of the tower. Now, that's something I can't fix if nothing is left there to fix. 200 Unknown Forest Area This is not working at all. I have been at it for more than a month but I couldn't find anything of use. I raised both of my arms which had gotten tired of flipping thorough pages and stripping off of things. What a waste. I sighed. As I kept on walking G in uncharted forest land. I had never been into this area, it's not like I think I should waste time exploring around or tinkering with my free time, but the thing is, I am kind of lost, here, thanks to my almighty divine gift of getting lost, and forgetting the way back home. So I helplessly kept on walking, and walking without food and water over the tough road covered on both sides by a gateway formation of trees. I was too embarrassed to call someone for help and say that I got lost and couldn't fendi my way back in my own house, I cannot falter here. If I can't even do this on my own how I am going to search for Athena or save the world. I kept on moving my legs which eventually got bored too, just then I saw the road ending near a huge wall of bushes and a small white steel gate decorated with beautiful flowers over it was open. I quietly walked in and surprisingly I found mother there looking down on earth. No, I think more appropriately S.H.E. was looking at some stone tablets. Gravestones, was Smeon buried there? Was it mother's relative, a friend or comrade? I quietly walked in and stood beside mother, who had a sad expression her face, but I could tell that she had already moved past that crying stage or feeling sorry for those who lost their lives and wondering why we were the only ones who were left behind. 201. She had made up with the situation and I think she was just reminiscing about the happy past she had spent together with them. So you found this place Alicia. Mother's voice had deepened somehow, maybe she was overwhelmed with her own emotions. Maybe it's better to not tell her that I stumbled here since, I am lost. Well I think she was figured out that already, when she smiled at me at the same time. It's scary to know that she can predict what I am doing at any given time. I gently held her hand which was warm even with how freezing cold and windy it was here than other other places in the mansion. Mother held my hands tightly back, as though she found a driftwood in the sea. I ducked a little to see the names engraved on the grey stones, Nefania, Maltina Ethel, Leon Amos, and several other names. As I started thinking more about what these meant, my eyes stopped at another unbending sight. Near the foot of some of the stones several beautiful red flowers growing, I had never seen such gorgeous flowers that smelled so pleasant. As I tried to nail lower to smell it more up close and take a closer look at its soft delicate thin petals and long anthers. Mother was watching me like a child playing in a garden. Those are called red spider lilies. Aren't they beautiful? For them to grow here it's quite unexpected. WLUC in this world these flowers are very rare and growing them is very difficult. Just a naturally occurring bunch of these to be able to see. We should consider ourselves lucky. So they are that special. Should I pick some and take back home? No, I think you should avoid doing that. At least when they are growing near a grave. 202. 203. Why is that? I got intrigued and curiosity got a hold of me, it's related to the people's belief here that these are flowers of death and helps the souls of the dead to pass on and tell those who are alive that all their last wishes had been fulfilled, well I like to call them last goodbyes flower flowers that fulfill wishes. 
I kept on staring at them. In this world almost all of my previous wishes were fulfilled and now it's my turn to fulfill the wishes of those who love me. I wonder whether my parents in my previous life had any last wish. Did their wishes come through? There is no way for me to know now is there, so it's not worth dwelling into the past. But I think I understand, much better now, seeing mom spend so much time here quietly looking and watching the memories they might have spent with them together. People with fulfilling lives, live for an eternity in memory of others. People who are strong and courageous enough to do what they want to do, always shines brighter than others. And even if their souls are somewhere else, if there is someone who remembers them, they can come back in any form. Alicia, it's time to go. Yes, I think I asked Flora to make pudding. She would be almost done with it by now. Well, then we shouldn't make her wait any longer. Did you come up with any thought and is there any progress you made with your learning F or the test? I for some time stared at the blank in the air and then smiled back at mother. I think I do have an idea now that is worth trying for. 204. Information brochure. Nefania, goddess of fighting spirit, offered her life to protect Caroline from an evil god. Maltina Ethel, high elf, companion of Caroline while adventuring alias Mal, Leon Amos, demi-human, subordinate and companion of Xylan, died during the Great War. 205, floor, 95. We were back on the same floor where mother showed me her oral arts. I was finally prepared for the test. It took me another month to come up with this and I think it was worth the time I had put in it. We decided to first use it without any target and see its natural effect in the area. We needed to measure whether it was successfully developed or not. A slight mistake in controlling magical power can cause the whole territory to demolish and collapse on itself which can cause harm to the user. So mother was here to prevent such an accident. She had already prepared several of those stones that are able to restrict my powers after father overworked himself for another two weeks and somehow managed to create them, to be working like a black company employee, and worked to the bones by mother was not a first-hand experience for him. So everything could be said that, it's all in the good, producing them is really a big hassle and the process needs are humongous amounts of refined ores magic of the alchemist in huge amounts and top-notch precision in forming the internal structure of the crystal. By far what I understand, these Tenio stones have the ability to convert magic energy into light form and then they infinitely reflect themselves inside the crystal structure which later makes it glow and is able to store it safely. This concept reminded me of the total internal reflection phenomenon we use to study in a diamond, but now, I needed more than ever to focus on myself on what I really wanted to do in this new life and with the power I have developed over time. 206. That's right. Oral arts are not just elementary combat skills, but the metal which I hold onto and the resolve with which I have been fighting in the battle. I concentrated on my magic core and the deep magic concentration seated in the blasty K mist that covered my soul core. At least that's what mother told me when I learned how to look at my own soul core. At first I found it quite confusing because I had never seen or read anywhere of a soul core you cannot see, but I still feel an incredible amount of energy. When I try to reach deeper into this black empty mist in my consciousness, my eyes glowed and my body covered in a mixture of dark and light aura. Magic with overwhelming pressure radiated out from my body. I expanded my consciousness around me, reaching further and further to cover as much area as I can and bring all the possibilities to life. The future I want to see. The future I want to carve out with my own hands and the future I want to live in. I muttered this in my head as if I were giving myself a suggestion and conveyed the image I had developed in my mind as two scabbards materialized near my waist. I pulled out my two swords from them and poured all my life force I could muster into my swords to bring out the possibility I wanted to see into the present reality. 207. Carolina Scalon Ashbourne. For the purpose of test, I brought Alicia back to floor 95. She took her position in the middle of the floor and there were no other monsters on this floor because I had already wiped them all out. I had been waiting for a long time to see what Alicia could come up with her oral arts the granddaughter of my master, 
one whose own oral arts at full strength had the potential to destroy worlds at her full power. Even when she taught me, I had to give the same test of making my own oral arts style. The oral arts she displayed was not only just an attack, but it was like creating life itself. Even today her true prowess lies in a different plane where I can never as a mortal hope to reach. But Alicia, who has a totally new power in her grasp, who doesn't bother herself with the limits but always looks ahead and tries to find solutions instead of looking at the problem and complaining, only she can probably do it as her teacher and a student of my own teacher, that would make both of us proud. Show me, Alicia, the ultimate oral arts you developed for yourself the fruits of your hard work and your resolve to manifest your dreams into reality. I clutched my hands tightly in anticipation as it began, as the dual blades of white and black materialized. The air started vibrating in the environment just by their presence, they were truly the ultimate weapons. A weapon which surpassed all logic and can even defy the authority of gods. The force field I had put in the area was already destroyed by the magical aura Alicia was radiating unknowingly. It might be even ten times stronger of what I already showed her. To go beyond her normal limits and delve deeper into her life force reserves. 208. To be able to pour out the true desire of your soul, that's the true essence of Vora Arts. All. The magitite ores in the areas were glowing brightly more than ever in response to the increasing magic density. And then she finally started composing and deploying her own territory, overwriting the current form of creation and turning into that of her own. Brandishing her white and black swords, she brought them in a form of X and finally let them loose. A sky. A black pitch night sky formed out of nowhere and the ground covered in a shallow pool of black water which for some reason did not wet my legs. Thousands of red buds rose up from this black water, and then magically those red buds twisted and then blossomed into beautiful flowers. Red spider lilies. I instantly recognized them. No matter how far I looked, there were these flowers lying everywhere and their sweet smell overwhelmed my nose. The rare death flower and one which guides and the souls. And yet, it was such a serene and peaceful view that I failed to notice when the sky cleared and Alicia was looking at me. For how long was I lost in thoughts and the beauty of the view? The black pool was gone, that means the territory had faded away, and when I looked in front the dimensional boundary between the walls of two floors was utterly destroyed and pulverized and through the huge hole that opened into floor 96 layer wasteland wrecked ground as if hit by a stream of missiles and finally a devastating earthquake there was not a single monster I could sense in the dust cloud in that area so, mother how was it? 209 210 I again looked around to confirm what actually did happen for a careful person like me to be caught up in the moment. In that time the energy slash that came out of the combined effect of the force of the two swords, destroyed the wall. Then the dimensional space between the two floors by crossing the threshold energy and finally even cleaned all the monsters who might have been inhabiting floor 96. It was beyond expectation. That's the only thing I could come up with. Alicia you dot pass the test with full marks. Yes. Alicia was exalted to hear those words and made a short jump like a kid in her overjoyed state, but sometimes I really do forget that she is only a kid three years old, and having expectations and putting responsibilities on her is not what I should be doing. Because she was reborn some of her ways of thinking and reflexes had been reset to that of a child, but since she was about 16 years old when she reincarnated she also acts maturely because of that and then she also living in her previous life's body. Maybe that's what she unconsciously chose for herself, and is fine with the choice, and blaming everything on fate is not how I do things. Alicia let's go back and prepare for your victory celebration, a celebration. Well let's have a party. That's what I want to say. Then and Flora should start on the preparations for it without further delay, but something is still bothering me. Making a concerned look was something I do not see in her regularly. For some time I actually felt bad that she would be the one preparing food items for her own celebration but she seems happy the most while doing this for us. 211. Don't tell me she is fed up with making food for us now, while all we two have been doing is sit around and eat like gluttons. What is it Alicia? 
Marks of hesitation messing up with my face a bit. It's just that I couldn't come up with a name. What? That's what concerning her. Didn't you call out an exciting name when you released your oral arts? I want one too. It was so cool to shout it out loudly. Wait. Even I feel embarrassed a bit but with practice. I later realized that it had become a part of it already. A habit, that I just couldn't get done with it. Don't worry. You will eventually come with a cool attack name, if you keep practicing it. Amu. She made again a cute expression, which brought relief to my eyesight. But it's true no matter how magnificent the view was nothing could beat my daughter's loveliness. Maybe I need to do something about that. Who knows when scary bad men might try to attack her and she usually gets lost in her own house like that. I never saw someone with such bad sense of direction or maybe they are actually destined to get lost every time on their way if they are traveling alone. Then this world does not even have a GPS system, but for a problem of her as severe as that, even this advanced technology cannot suffice and will fail. She also doesn't like to attract attention, but honestly with such a beautiful figure it's an impossible feat. But she doesn't realize the fact herself. Maybe I already do have the perfect ideal solution. That thing which I used myself during my travels might work for her. So I am going to use it for later. 212. Before leaving, I checked back at the place and was baffled to see that the garden of red spider lilies was still growing on the infertile land. That time I realized the amount of power Alicia could exert is unbelievable, and to measure it is a foolish venture. When an oral arts lifts off, all its effects are vanished, but even for me who witnessed several gods fight during the Great War, an oral art whose territory effects lingers in real time was unheard of. 213. Alicia was Scalon Ashbourne, how did it come to this, was further trying to get back at me, for putting him through hell during my wrecking dot dot training hours I spent in his workplace library. After mother proposed of a test and the celebration party, he too announced of a test from his side. I had to master an intimidation technique primarily used by demons to exercise control and authority over other demons. Even though he did not tell me a specific name for it, because there isn't one. I call it Dash the White Room. It's exactly as it sounds. As I and father stood facing against each other in the training grounds, we did not have any weapons on us. We didn't need to. So the question was how we were gonna fight. In this process, we had to create an environment and by releasing a killing intent like overwhelming aura of magic power, we needed to shake the consciousness and will on whom it is to be forced upon. This method had its own application and I would say various advantages. We could pass out judgments and no one would dare to question us. Hence solving conflicts without having a bloodshed. Hence a brilliant idea. A strong wind blew by when both of us at the same time released vast amount of magical aura in the surrounding and tampered with it, quickly constructing the white room will definitely ensure my victory. Thinking like that, I pushed force outward all of my magical energy in a controlled blast, 214. By already learning oral arts, it became quite easy for me to learn this technique, maybe further was waiting for this too to happen. All the surfaces are smooth and the same texture, everything the same color, no furniture, everything is white. Locked in a completely bare white room. Both further and I were standing now in front of our white throne facing against each other eye to eye. Everywhere I looked there was everything painted in white and the unknown source of light would have been similar to a multitude of chlorofluorescent bulbs glowing simultaneously. Over several white stairs and a long white throne I stood from the seat and stared at father's eyes who too was standing in front of a similar throne. But since our gazes were along the same straight line, who actually won. When we think about it, since I am less in height than father, that means the height of throne which manifested by my power was much longer and had more stairs in it. The power of an individual will be determined whether he stays on the ground or if he has reasonable power to compete with then how many stairs long his throne is. Stairs are a representation of the potential and magic capacity of the individual. There is a 2x power difference as you advance in each stair. Since there is a difference of 5 stairs between me and father, that means there is a difference of equals 2 5, 32x in our magic reserves, hence claiming my victory. 
we decided for another celebration, and mother as usual was enjoying and complimenting my food while father was sulking in a corner, even though he proposed the test. The fact that 215, he had been outdone even though he has the title E of Magic Emperor is a die-hard fact for him. Well, what I really wondered about was, now that I have completed and learnt everything from here that I could, it was now specifically time I visit the outside world and the make a place for myself on the surface. I was finally going to leave in almost another month and mother and fur there were already aware of that fact, trying to spend and give most of their time to me. It made me happy, which would only make it much tougher to leave but at the same time it only filled my life with more happy memories to make, and by any chance a hopeful future by their blessings. 216 217 Chapter 7 I Tramp on a Perpetual Journey I looked at myself in the glass mirror as I came out of the hot bath and after drying myself I put on my usual dress and the bracelet on my left hand which I got as my first birthday present. I felt my long ashen white hairs which were falling beyond my waist, but even though they are so soft and silky but at the same time so strong that I never saw a single hair fall in these three years of my life. There's no secret shampoo and if it did exist. I might had become a billionaire entrepreneur in my previous life by selling such a product. Then I could have really led a carefree life that time, money rules, for someone who lived like me would never deny it. I was still wondering how I would take care of my finances in the outside world around this time. I already had surplus amount of food stored in my storage, and then I can create any amount I wanted with, equivalent exchange but doing shopping from every part of the world has also been another of my dreams. A girly expedition if one would like to call it, if possible, I would like for it to come true. 218. I looked at myself again in the mirror and thought that I am quite prepared for this. Though I looked the same, I mean like every day I have the same face and my clothes are made of the same spider silk from my skills. They are light and stronger than any fabric material I have yet to find in this world, but now that I hold the mirror and get close to it, the more I think, what a change have I made in myself at this point, and then I realize even more that how far I have come in my life, how much I have grown, better said how much I have actually changed, from one who liked to be alone and closed in a room all the time, I like enjoying spending time with other family members or reading books in the library, that part cannot be expected to change, but now I had father with me to always discuss something with and not end the conclusion with my only remaining subsidiary thoughts, I did not need to hide my face under my bangs anymore because I did not felt hated any longer, more than that I had come to love myself, it might feel a bit odd. But seeing myself smile in the mirror I felt like why I never did this from the start. And even if I am happy right now, what if I change a bit more? If I try to do something new, I wonder whether the smile on my face would increase in intensity or flatten out on itself. By bringing a change until now has always extrapolated to total and complete happiness. But from now how will this play out on the surface? A place where there will be strangers people whom I have never met nor have any idea where they came from, a place where people with different ideas and goals gather, in that environment finding friends, differentiating between good and evil, truth and lie and identifying and opposing my real foes is the real challenge the outside surface throws at me, and now even though the more the number of steps I take out of my room, my confidence dwindles, but still there is no turning back. Even though I might have been an epitome of a failure who found reasons to prove her own righteousness, now I wanted more than ever to prove my 219 previous self that indeed she was not wrong but not completely right at the same time. But what if I am afraid of finding out that I was wrong and that even now nothing has changed and every little thing I thought I had built was just an outwardly appearance? Would it be still right to prove it? but as one who wants to be the best magician in the world and learn all kinds of magic, it's only definite I try because I want to believe that these new feelings and mindset are not just for outward show or make me look better in front of others, I was now outside the mansion, where everyone was waiting for me, on the gateway to the lower floors, 
Mother and father had repeatedly told me to use the teleportation circle, because even they don't know what kind of monsters are inhabiting floor 99 and floor 100. Mother and father had used a special kind of search magic device and identified all the monsters from top to below, so that they won't be having trouble in the future when dealing with any kind. This magic device was similar to a seismograph, through which scientists choose to study the Earth's surface. Like sending seismic waves and reading the receiving output waves, in a similar way this magical device would send spherical magical currents in the region and then receiving back the reflected waves from live sources and the amount of deflection probably proportional to the amount of magic the monster is radiating and made up of and making comparison from an already formulated list. Well these kinds of devices are obvious to exist in a world of monsters. But according to further they did not find any reading from floor 99 and 100. So there were two conclusions drawn that either they were empty, or their concealment skill surpasses all logic to avoid such a delicate measuring instrument. Unfortunately I will have to avoid the first case and keep in mind the second. If I wanted to come out of this alive and yet to test my strength I had decided to complete this labyrinth and also defeat the labyrinth boss with my own hands. It's something I 220 wanted and had decided on doing for a very long time when I made up my mind to explore its lower floors. Not completing what I started would be a sin. When I have an opportunity to conquer a hundred floor labyrinth achievements all on my own, because it made me happier than doing it in games alone I used to play back in my world, I wonder how it would finally feel if I did it by my own hands. That's right, Tida why was the day to leave home and say my goodbye to all, though I know I could return back here anytime using my teleportation magic now. But I was going to take my first step to go to the surface and then get the things done which have been held up till now. Mother, father and Flora were waiting to see me off. Everyone looked happy, because sending someone on a journey while crying did not see fit for someone as high-spirited as mother. Make sure to come back anytime when you feel like returning home, and if you need our help ask away without hesitating. Now go and show this world whose daughter you are. Mother was excited more than ever. Though I thought that keeping the fact that I was now the daughter of the true hero and the true demon lord with their family titles now attached to my name I needed to keep my status and identity hidden all the time, but I had already made all the arrangement for that. Further had already said what he wanted to say to me yesterday, so he didn't waste much time and said his goodbyes and wishing me best of luck on my journey. Flora too who had prepared some cheesecakes for me and packed it in a lunch. I just put them in my dimensional storage. Lady Alicia if you need anything or whenever you need my service, please call me anytime you wish. I will miss you a lot. And dot and well for now, please look after this mansion and I would really miss cooking together with you so I think we will have to wait a bit for it to happen again. I replied to Flora to cheer her up a bit or to make her feel a little better because it looked like she was about to break in tears. 221. She is really obedient and since I made her as her creator she feels obliged to love me, or maybe she really likes me. During that time I did not have a specific reason to create Flora. After learning about Gillums and me knowing about robots and with Al's ability I thought it was possible to create someone like her and so I did. Later when I saw that usually the house is in a mess I tried to make a consciousness which is devoted towards cleaning and cooking to help around in the house. But no matter, to me she is a friend and always will be. Mother and father had already given their goodbye gifts to me the previous day and I think they would come a lot handy in my traveling. Without making it any more difficult I bend my head a little. Thank you mother and father for looking after me for these two years and always caring and loving me like your own daughter. I am leaving now but I wish to return soon. Mother suddenly hugged me and said, what are you talking about? Don't be so unfair or start with a formal speech because we will always love our kid and will be waiting for you and to hear about your adventures. It was now time for me to leave as I headed to the bottom of this abyss and then finally completing this labyrinth I would be finally able to see the real blue sky. Now that I wonder, are there more than one sun? From which direction does the sun rise? Does this world has a violet moon? The thing is I realized just now that I lack common sense and common facts related to this world. I might excel in magic and swordplay now, 
but I will have to learn everything like a kid about this world on the way. It is going to be more difficult than I thought. Hugh, by any chance am I catching father's slow drive affinity now? Probably not. Well I will figure out something, for now I need to focus on the battles I have to fight ahead in this harsh labyrinth. 222. Caroline and Silen waved their hands until their daughter eventually vanished from their sight completely. So, she will be no W finally able to leave this hell hole of this world. And yet we four call it our home? Our own little world in this enormous vast world. Isn't that right Zyle? Mother spread her hands like wings of the birds trying to take more amount of oxygen from the surrounding to lighten up her mood. Yes. Zyle responded to Caroline's deep thoughts and how she felt about all of this. Are you worried about something Zyle? Caroline narrowed her eyes and stared at the stressed out face of her dear worry -wart husband. Not at all. It's just that. I couldn't seem to get my mind off it. Are you still that worried about her? Was it really right to let her leave when she is so young and have an almost insufficient knowledge of this world? She was trying to learn common sense from two war maniacs who are dead for this world almost 200 years ago. You do realize the world would have changed? I mean a lot changed. So you are saying she is trying to shift from using a keypad Nokia to an Apple iPhone? Is that it? But you should know if you throw a Nokia phone and an iPhone from the top floor of a building, then the one to survive the fall will be the old Nokia phone. Don't sell yourself short even if old age is hitting you faster. What did you mean by that? H. Just leave it. I will miss Alicia. She would have understood it straight. 223. I don't get it. But just so you know, for a demon from the royal lineage I am still young. As for you I doubt it. Even though I am a human, I too have the longevity of a high elf, so I am too in my teens, I guess. No you are not. But I still have my concerns regarding what if she eventually comes to hate this world, as an other world or myself, even though this world has totally different values and its own way of doing things. But with time and the people with whom she will create and share bonds will help her make her own place in this world and I can guarantee it. You should know better than anyone that those who know fear of losing things they love won't be driven by hatred. I think I doubt I ever saw her afraid of anything. Do you remember when we first time encountered her, when both of you were engaged in a battle? Do you really need to bring that up? You scared? No. Not in the least. The demon lord was hesitantly turning his head away, just so that no one could catch his lie. She was strong enough to go through an attack that could have killed you and her altogether, keeping true to your ambition when it could mean life or death. That isn't something that just anyone could do. We should be proud of her, but she is just a mere child who always gets lost. I doubt even if she completes the labyrinth she could even find the way to the human continent, or to a nearby settlement. She might end up revolving round and round a tree and won't FN realize it, until someone points it out for her. 224. Ha. Huh. That's the only reason Lili doesn't spend more time with you because you are too caring, more than necessary. Don't forget that one of the things which surprised us the most was the title of secretive plotter, that is not a title just anyone could get. Even in my whole life I have only seen one person with that title and he was the most genius person I had ever met. That is another scary part of her. The demon lord sighed. Why don't you ask a Flora to tonight make a hot pot, your favorite food and relax a bit. What if she goes berserk on the outside if something bad happens to her? Well. Then the power of love will surely save her, or, the world is screwed otherwise. Well it doesn't deserve to exist if it makes my daughter unhappy. Seeing Caroline free spirited heart, made the demon lord feel refreshed again and he realized that it was one of the most special things about her that he liked the most. The journey and the stories it entails that lied ahead did not belong to either of them, but to their daughter alone and she should have every right to make her own decision and the best thing to do was support her from the sidelines. 225. The previous day. Alicia I wanted to give you something, before you leave. What is it? I excitedly asked. Could it be a top secret weapon that can flatten out a mountain in an instant? Everything mother possessed were all rare class weapons that she had collected over time by conquering dungeons, defeating strong opponents and the monsters or custom made by the best craftsmen of her time. The hero was leaning over her huge treasure chest, 
It was a rather dilapidated old brown trunk with some decorated golden lining, but for Caroline it was more valuable than any amount of gold, for her it was a treasure trove of her precious memories. After some searching, she pulled out an item from inside and handed it to me. It was a mask, or better described as a pure white Venetian masquerade mask, one would see people wearing in old-styled European balls. It's not like it could completely cover my face. It only hid my half-frontal lobe, down to the nose, and two sharp protrusions from the ear sides up to the end of the chin. And my eyes were completely visible. But why a mask? This mask will help you keep your identity safe. It has a special magical item that can help you to forge your status window and at the same time it keeps your face hidden. Why don't you put it on and see for yourself? Okay. Then. I do realize that I need to keep my family name a secret from the outside world, so this item will surely help, as I placed my mask on my face. I did not need any string to attach at the back, but magically it got attached to my face on itself. It did not feel 226 uncomfortable at all, rather it gave a cooling effect on my face. It will surely help in summers and in traveling under the sunlight. My eyes are clearly visible in the mirror in which I was checking myself. The area below the tip of the nose, that is my mouth is uncovered. But then my focus went on my hairs, which had turned black, a bit shorter than usual and curled up near my forehead. I looked towards mother, who might know something. I told you this is a special item that helps you to forge your identity. Even I used it myself on my adventures to keep my identity hidden otherwise good for nothing people would always keep on pestering you. So it may have done that thing to your hair for that very purpose, but black hairs suit you as much as your white hair. Overall you look so adorable in that mask that I cannot move my eyes away. Caroline commented as she had already started acting in a strange way. If mother thinks it's fine then it is. And I don't mind this black, it's just like my previous life, so nothing to bother with. It's just that I had gotten myself used to seeing me with white hairs, but as long as I keep my identity hidden it's all in the good, especially I was more into the mask because it gave me a hidden identity and the thought of roaming around the world as a mysterious person is very enticing to me. If I tried to do it in my previous world I would have been jailed for breaking international identification laws, but really in this world I could do anything I want. How about having a cape and a shining rod with me? No they would become just too chummy and embarrassing, I could this time be caught as a suspicious person alone. Listen Alicia, never show your face to anyone, unless you trust them, got it? Mother made sure to stress out on that point as if she was up to something and then continued, and also this mask comes with an 227 added effect to suppress your strong magical aura. You wouldn't want people fainting in your presence when they are standing beside you. Well I think mother is cracking a joke, but it helps me to hide my aura. Then it's good for stealth attack as too and won't be a hindrance in the battle. I then put the mask in my storage. When I noticed mother searching for something in her own dimensional storage. Wait there's one more thing, which I made especially for you. You made it. That's right. I have been working on it for a long time for this very day. Mother then took out a hand fan from her storage and gave it to me. As I was about to take it in my hands, I realized what it actually was. It was more of a restrainment weapon. It was first too heavy to hold, but I think I can manage it just fine now by adjusting the power in my hands. It was again a white colored Chinese hand fan. The only difference was that instead of made of paper it was made of some kind of strong plastic polymer, probably a new substance of this world. As I opened it with a jolt, I realized how sharp the edge was and it's strong built which gets stronger the more magic I put in it. It's almost unbreakable. It had no special design on it or some kind of decoration, an elegant fighting tool which I can carry anywhere without any problem, and I think my dual blades too like it, because there is no kind of stingy response from them, that means I should accept it wholeheartedly. Thank you mother, I will put it in best use and will always keep it with me. 228. Listen Alicia, this weapon too comes with an added effect. You must have realized that it continuously absorbs magical power form you and will help to restrain your total power. 
At the same time the more magical power it absorbs the stronger and sharper it gets. Also you can release this stored power at any instant you want to. I am sure you will find it useful to surprise your enemy. So these were the two goodbye gifts that mother had made for me, by her own hands. I really didn't need to ask for anything G more, because they had already given to me much more than I could ever hope to repay. After a few hours further called me in his study place the library tower, though he acted a bit on his guard, and it seems that he has hidden most of the explosive stuff and stashed it into the back drawer behind those pile of books. He should have better known than anyone that nothing could be hidden from me. Though I feel bad too to find the exact location of the things he worked hard to hide after all the accidents and trouble I caused him in my research. Let's pretend I never found out, for his unadulterated happiness. Alicia, before you leave. I wanted to pass you down something. Pass me down. Could it be a sage's staff? Finally I am going to get one. Or could it be a secret scroll with a curse or an ancient world class magic? Or could it be those finding treasure maps passed down from one generation to generation? I will find the treasure, just give the map to me, even if it is guarded by a sea dragon god. If there is one I will kill it and triumphantly return with the lost family treasure. You can count on me. Bring your palm in front. I did as he told me to and he attached his palm next to me, vertically. His hands much bigger than my own. Where my own puny fingers won't even come close to his ring finger. 229. Well, here it is finally something mysterious that my father was going to do, for a pretty simple man like him. It was for the first time he sounded so mysterious. Isla Nashborn the true demon lord and the head of the royal demon family. Officially welcome Alicia Ascalon Ashborn to the royal demon lineage and acknowledge her pledge that she would work in best of her spirits to uphold the dignity and carry on the legacy of the Ashborn family. Suddenly my black wings were forced out from my back, horns itself came out from my head, it was a forced transformation of my demon form. But why now, suddenly the back of my palm started glowing. I took of my hand glove and found a black magical circle engraved with an intricate dark symbol. That's the Ashbourne family crest. Now you are officially the part of the royal demon family. Lilite too has one on her back. Usually we are born with this symbol in our family, so I had to pass it on to you. Do you like it? Yes. I know, I might have not sounded too excited and even the little enthusiasm I was showing was probably forced. You are telling me this was some coronation type ceremony for demons dash and it was that simple. For the first time I had high hopes for father and yet he did not rise to my standard and blew his chance. Shouldn't it be something along some kind of sacrificial ritual or some kind of blood passing down ceremony? where you see lot of blood passing through a sacred chamber plate and finally fuse together into a magical fluid which you have to drink, or something along those lines. It would be one of my regret, if it were possible to stay any longer and help him in truly acting in ways of a true demon lord and continue with his training. 230. Alicia there is another thing that you should need to know about that symbol. With the help of that symbol. If ever a need arise and you want to force an authority over someone for an emergency situation, you can make obey anyone except for humans with that royal mark, no one would disobey you, it's really that powerful, but I don't think I am going to use it because making someone obey against their will is a bad thing. Those were my true thoughts. I am glad you said that. If only Lilai would have properly understood it too. She was going to abuse the symbol and threaten us that if we do not come up on the surface with her then she would wage a war against anyone who would try to harm us. T that dot must have been some heck of a daze. Yeah, you can probably imagine it. Hugh, The demon lord sighed on remembering the good old sour and backbone aching days. Well if anyone tried to go against me then I would probably kill them on spot. Suddenly the demon lord could feel an intimidating aura that Alicia could execute now after learning the white room technique which even made him shudder. That is scary just like Caroline's teacher. The fruit doesn't fall far from the tree. Those were the only thoughts of Xylan the most powerful true demon lord at that time. Ahem. Now Alicia if you would focus on the markings you will realize there is a special pocket space coordinates set on it. I see. Should we go there? That's what I want you to do. 231. I poured some magical energy into the symbol and after a faint glow in the markings, 
the space distorted around us and we teleported directly into another huge subspace which almost felt detached to this world. This is the treasury of the royal demon family, and its members are free to use it however they like. I looked around everywhere and there was gold coins covering the whole room. Even when the whole room was dimly lit, the radiance of the gold would blind anyone who would glance at it. There are a total of five rooms like this, which you can use. If you keep on adding money here, the space would itself be created to accommodate more. So, should I consider myself already rich, are the coins still in circulation in the outside world? Of course, all the monetary money was made and exists from during the age of gods. No country can forge money and these coins have a special divine magic enchantment that they cannot be faked. That's too convenient and the whole world uses the same currency. That's pretty convenient for someone like me who is traveling. Shopping will too be easy, and also it is one of the most common things in fantasy worlds. But then again isn't it a bit odd, when you think about it from an economic point of view, the whole idea of world sharing the same currency is not fiscally rational. Wouldn't the countries that manage their finances well will suffer at the cost of financially reckless nations? Then it will also give rise to corruption by hoarding. Well that will fit well for the nobles and kings, but the commoners would have to suffer the most, but maybe with magic, people don't take it into one of their problems or so, I will need to find out the reasons. Well, going into details will do me no good, but I, 232, think if I act thoughtfully then I can make use of this and take over the economy if I become a big businessman. Hey dot dot h h, Alicia dot Alicia, are you listening? Xylan got worried on seeing her daughter smile on her own. So, we are really that rich. How did we end up with this money? What about Lily? Does she use this too? You don't have to worry about Lily. She has her own dimensional money storage. Since you both are girls you would probably need a lot of money to look after yourself. You see your grandmother was quite a treasure hunter. She would go far and wide to hunt dragons and loot their gold. And since I was not that extravagant, I would only use it for research in magic and development purposes only. But you are both free to use it for your own amusement. This money has only been decaying here for these years after all. Wait isn't that like spoiling your own child? I hope Lily doesn't turn out like those rich kids who pretend they can buy anything, while in actual their money belongs to their parent which is thanks to their hard work alone. Then again. This amount in one room would have been enough for me to be the richest person in my country back on earth. Regardless I don't know its true value in this world or how over time the value of money did change in these years. Since further and mother have been here for a very long time and know a little about the world themselves. What if due to inflation this money remains of little value? I won't know until I go to a market. I did hope of becoming a president of my own business estate. That has also been one of my dreams to own a business company and take over the market of the world. 233. Now that I remember about dragons, I did defeat one of them, and he too had a lot of gold on him. From my storage I poured all the money out from it which I collected from him. Wait. The amount of gold which a dragon feels satisfied with is proportional to their strength. Your mother hunted quite a lot of powerful dragons during her time. But for you to just double the amount by a single hunt, how strong that dragon was. Well I don't remember much about him. But isn't that good we have more money at our disposal. Why doesn't she realize that, with only the money in one of the rooms she can buy an entire country? I felt proud of myself as a father that I was giving her a total of five rooms of treasury. But in an instant she doubled it to ten. I see ain't bear it anymore. The true demon lord again fell in despair as he faced his fearsome daughter, and made up in his mind never to compete with her as her nemesis and pledged to despise the very thought of it. Let's return Alicia. Maybe you should take a lot of rest before leaving. You are going to have a tough date tomorrow fighting all the strong monsters at the bottom of the labyrinth. Make sure to prioritize your own safety, and if you find it difficult you can come back to seek our help. No need to push yourself in any kind of life-threatening situation. You understand? Yes, father. And thank you for all of this. I replied to him and reached you the favor and his concerns with a happy smile. I looked at the back of my hand, 
and felt so happy with the crest of the family being entrusted to me. Even though I am not their real daughter, I always felt so much at home. Every day was way hundred times better than any happy moment if I had in my previous world. Always remember Alicia as a fellow magician you know those who know how to get stronger are the truly strong ones. So never give up on. 234. The pursuit of discovering more spells and tell me about your every new finding and discovery. I think he was more interested in my magic spells than the reason, but it makes me more than happy that someone is always looking forward to my work. The power you have developed and earned is because of your own effort and so never let anyone else make use of it. Always use your magic to help others. The greatest magic is not about how destructive or complex it is but the greatest magic is one that can change people's life for good. Magic is all about how you use it, whether it's weak or strong, a small difference can make a monumental change in the long run. The greatest, most powerful magic, even if I whip up something new, can it still be called the greatest? I always find room of improvement the more I learn. Every time I use magic, I like it because I feel connected to everyone else. If I truly would describe how the greatest magic will look like then it's the magic of meeting wonderful people like Athena, Mother, Father and Lily. If encounters themselves are magic, then I would like to still keep on using it. 235 Floor 97 I was at the entrance of Floor 97 and as I started walking forward, I spotted the enemy already. A total of 5. They were huge 50 meter tall crystal giants, and now when I take a look at their status I realize that magic won't be effective on them, but it's a totally good thing that I can test out the ability of this wind fan on them now. Even though their bodies are made up of magic absorbing crystals, and by the size of it they can almost contain an infinite amount, but they are perfect for forging material for new magical items. From where I see it, even though they have absolutely sturdy bodies to absorb magic, but there must be a rate at which they do it, so what if the rate at which they absorb magic exceeds at a single point, going beyond the breaking point, can they contain it or will they blast from inside? Why don't I find it out myself, right now, as one of the giant threw a fast paced punch at me, his giant fist approaching me at a sound breaking speed causing ripples in the air but was immediately stopped by the front end of my closed wind fan, its heavy fist technique being intercepted by a tiny object like my fan, as I lightly held it in my hand, it definitely passed the durability test, the next thing was to check on its ability that mother told me was to release all the magic stored up until now in it in a single flash, I think it has already absorbed enough magic as it is, and when I released all that magic at the single point on its fist in form of wind cutter, 236, I have to make sure that the point is a singular and does not take much time to activate otherwise it will spread to an area making it much easier for the giant to absorb the magic. I opened the fan in an instant and with a screeching sound, the whole giant's body cleanly bisected in two half parallel to the edge split asunder down the middle by a clean sharp ultra-violent plane of wind and its each half of the body fell on either side. This fan can really do some special crazy things, as I kept on trying other ways of using my fan as a weapon and magic along with it, I wiped out the other four, without realizing the fact, that eventually I had made monster hunting a fun and an experimenting vendetta. 237. Monster Diary Chris Logigans Catastrophe class name glasses age dash race celestial crystal giants level 7800 HP 300,000 MP 300,000 SP 250,000 skills advanced magic sorption earth magic LV9 diamond skin heavy busting fist ultra self regeneration titles the apophorator 238 239 interlude a slice of life in flora it has been only 15 minutes since i woke up i was arranging the red spider lily flowers which lady alicia liked so much in the vase placed inside her room near the window where the light is most abundant every time i looked at the red color of the flower it reminded me of her beautiful eyes i used to wake up along with her late night and stand near her side Seeing her passionately work hard and study made me absolutely happy. I was not crying, I just, 
had already started missing her. Being separated from my master and being abandoned is the worst thing that can happen to me, but my master has already made it clear that I am free to do anything and if I want something to do then it is to work for her and dedicate my entire life in her name alone. That is my only wish, my only reason to live. I was already left with the duty to look after my lady's parents that is more than I could ask for and I know that she is grateful towards me to look after all their need while she is away, but the one who finds herself 240, fortunate is me, who is granted this opportunity to help my master and follow her orders. Whether it is regarding the cleaning of clothes, preparing bath water, maintaining the gardens, or keeping the rooms clean I do it all and these are just meager works that doesn't require much effort, and the most important task handed down to me by master is preparing all kinds of dishes for the family, and I really enjoy cooking food and especially when it is to their liking, which always it is, though I have been warned to maintain a balanced diet and make sure that no one falls ill because of the deficiency of any component or nutrition missing from the food. Since I have inherited all my cooking skills from my master, I always feel most near to her when I am cooking, and doing this alongside her and seeing her smile makes my body and the mind explode with joy. I see Flora you are early at work as usual, why don't you take some rest and then continue? It was Master's mother who spoke to me. Good morning Lady Carolyn, but it's my duty to look after the mansion and get all things done in the morning before everyone wakes up. You are sure one heck of a workaholic person. Maybe you should take a break from work. How about I give you a holiday? Holidays are meant to make people take a leave from work and recover from fatigue and exhaustion. But since I take my energy from the surrounding magic and the magic from you all I do not feel tired. So there is no need to rest or take a holiday. Is that so? Then how about come take a bath with me? I can use wind magic and water magic to clean myself. Just like I do with the plates. 241. Ah, you are sounding more and more like Alicia did when she came here. Probably you will end up like your master. Just come with me. Lady Caroline held me by my hand and dragged me to the hot spring bath and undressed me, in my directory cloud storage it's recorded as an act of violation, but it's fine if I have to follow orders, as I entered the bath, I was again violated by Lady Caroline when she started touching me all over, your skin is really real, no matter how I touch it, my skin is made of magetite or and was then alloyed with other materials to make it soft and appear like human skin. I said in a hushed manner, making attempts to stop her from moving forward. Well, Alicia and Zyle did an impressive work in creating you. I doubt there is any other Ginnam or robot that can even come close to you. But is it really necessary for me to take bath with you? Am I not trying to intrude in your private time? Because somehow I was feeling that it was not right to disturb people while they can spend some lonesome time. What are you talking about? I think we should do it every day, after Alicia and Lily has left, I would need a new bathing partner and who is more perfect than you who has such a beautiful doll-like body. Then I will later add it to my schedule, tell me Flora, do you miss Alicia? And what are you going to do when she is not around you, can you still stay happy? I miss Master a lot, and I have already got my orders so I will keep doing that. I am asking you, what you want to do with your life. 242 243 My life belongs to Master and I will dedicate myself to serve under her. I am sure that my work will surely make Master happy and in turn it will make me happy too. You do really love Alicia, but is that what you really want? I don't understand what you mean. I just want to serve my Master. Don't forget that even though Alicia made you, she has no right over your life. She gave you your own new conscience and even though it was something she built you have grown in this time to live and breathe like a living person. I am sure Alicia too wants you to live your own life and make your own decisions. Seeing you happy and act freely will what eventually make her happy. Think about it. Saying that Lady Caroline pulled herself out of the hot spring and left me in days. I pulled myself inside the water for a final dip and stared at the free surface from the bottom. The images of the day when I came to life and my first memory somehow came pouring in and reached the surface. Flora humanoid robot all stats are positive, I'll activate all senses and then start transferring of memory data. Who is speaking? Where am I? Why can't I see anything? 
It was a soft crystalline voice. Then suddenly the voice's owner appeared before me. Silvery hair almost pure white that fell to her waist. Crimson red eyes that would charm anyone who glanced at them. Her thin waist perfectly complemented her slender legs. Wait that's not what's important. Why can I suddenly see everything? Who is she and what is she saying? 244. I see you are awake now. It's good. Don't try to move, and wait for a bit, why you will start understanding everything. The person said at me smiling. For some reason I exactly did what she said. That smile was all I needed to think that she is a good person. But, wait who am I, really? Suddenly this very thought started making me nervous and my body started shaking on its own. Was I under the impression of fear? The person was maybe aware of this fact and held my hand. As I started feeling comfortable again, I could feel a sensation in my hand in response as if it was acting on something. Is that heat, the warmth of someone's touch? Al, transfer all the memories to shared cloud storage unit. Who is this person talking to? There is no one in the room. Who is she exactly? Why I feel so close and peaceful around her. Transferring data memories. Flora Cloud Storage Unit Processing. A stiff mechanical voice rang in my ears, when things started burdening my brain. In an instant a wide variety of information as if filling my empty brain, I realized that I was not a human. The girl sitting in front of me is one though and is also the one who created me. So, what am I? Am I by any chance now too? That means my life has only value when I am being used by someone. But why I am thinking in such pessimistic way? I don't know what I should exactly do. Hello, my name is Alicia. Why don't you try to speak? Tell me your name. What should I say? 245, Flora. That's my name. Wait, how did I get that? I see it's in my memory now. It's great Al, it worked. It really worked. The girl was overjoyed at my reply. But I really don't understand who she is talking to. Oh. No she is staring at me now. Did I do something wrong? You must be thinking whom I am talking to. Why don't you try talking to him too? What is she saying? There's no one else here. I am glad I could get through. I am Al. Nice meeting you Flora. A voice again rang in my head. Quite similar to the previous ones, but this time this voice had something different about it. Maybe the way it's speaking. Completely and utterly changed. But why is the person so glad who is sitting in front of me? Oh, you want to know that? Wait, you can read my thoughts. We are actually a collected consciousness, that's why. So relax. So, can you tell me why this person is so glad? Two reasons found. The first ever creation of humanoid robot with artificial intelligence. Second reason, Flora not suffering from identity crisis and her brain not going boff. For some reason this Al person talks so cheesy. But while conveying information it becomes so formal. Also the second part sounds scary to me. But I am lucky that nothing like that happened. 246. But what is going to happen to me? What should I do now? I am scared. I don't know anyone. Anyone help me. Wait nobody will come to my help because I am a tool. Then, if it's really like that, then I should be straightforward with it dash. Why did you create me? I looked straight into the eyes of my creator peerlessly. I am still afraid and terrified with the situation and with what ultimately might happen to me, but I want to know. Because I can't skip out now. For some time she stared blankly at the space in front of her and suddenly with a bright face as if having gained enlightenment. She said the most absurd thing to me that I would have ever first heard or will ever hear. Even I don't know. I just felt like making one. I was dumbstruck. How could she say that when it's a matter of life and death to me? If there is no reason for me to be created then why am I still active? No, that couldn't be. How can you say something like that? I am not a human. I am just a fake being that can walk and talks just like you. There has to be something more to my life than that. Why I am acting like this, shouting on the person who created me blurting out things that even I don't properly understand. That's why I think you should figure it out on your own. Your reason to live, decide it for yourself freely. Why is she still smiling at me even though I am the one shouting at her? Don't lie to me. I am just a tool you made. I am not even real, so how can I think freely? I did it again. 
Now she will definitely get mad at me and throw me away. 247. Being nervous around me, angry for yourself and at the same time concerned about me. See you are self-conscious. You can think for yourself and for me you are just real as any other person. I could not come up with any counter-response, because at that time she took my hand and placing it at the center of my chest, thump dot dot thump. For that second I really felt alive. S-C-E, you are real. I told you, as if at that very second time had stopped for me, the world had stopped spinning, like a dream coming to life. I realized in that moment that I truly became alive. That moment was real for both us. As I rose up to the surface, I realized the vision through my eyes was still obscured. I tried to wipe my face, but for a second after getting clear, it got drizzly and muddled up again. I was crying, for some reason I felt naked in my heart at the exact place where she told me that I was real. But I think I knew now. What I wanted to do for myself was to grow and prove that I like a real person can learn to protect what was the most important thing in my life. I got out of the bath, and after drying myself I put on my clothes, I went to see Lady Caroline as soon as possible. Lady Caroline, will you please teach me how to fight and become strong? I want to learn everything possible that will later make me able to help my master in any time of her need. 248. Why not? I am glad you asked. And from there on I started my training after I completed all my daily chores and learned about fighting with daggers, hand claws, machetes, bow and arrow, about the outside world, about a thing called money with which you can obtain items, about other existing intelligent species about various new raw ingredients I could get from the surface. The more I learned, the more I found myself vested into it and enjoyed knowing things. So this is how Master felt and why she is always happy when she do things she liked. Even if I am a non-living being created by my Master, and from what I have heard that, it is the God who creates living beings, then for me my only one true God is my Lady Alicia. If my feelings of loyalty and devotion for my master are not real then I really don't know what's real. How exactly humans define something is real, when they themselves try to imitate others, falsify their own identities, hide their own emotions, real intentions and betray their own kind and self-expectations by making false promises. Then I'm much better at not being real because I genuinely love my master. I also learned that there are repulsive and beings that are inferior to me called Gillums. I hate them, and I know I am the world's most perfect robot because she is my one and only creator. 249 250 Chapter 8 The Strongest Monster of the Abyss I see so you have been living here since the day you were born. I asked the little monster in my palm. Yes, my queen. Since the day I have been born, I have found myself confined in these walls, but finally our queen is here to look after our welfare. I am so happy. A tiny squeaking voice rang in my head. Yeah about that part. Can we discuss about it a little first? I showed a bit of hesitation in saying this but the queen part has still been bugging me. My queen is my queen. That's the only thing I know. And this tiny sweet voice doesn't seem to back down or take a no for an answer. Hugh H. How did it even come to this? I think. It all started when I entered floor 98. 251. I could hear clattering voices from all over the place, almost similar to a ticking of an analog clock, as I crossed the arc passage. It was a huge grass plain, with a water fountain on the very right corner and a cluster of magitite trees which illuminated the whole place like a glowing Christmas tree. It was more of a paradise than a monster lair, but the only thing that made me feel off was the clattering, metal scraping noises from the huge giant spiders inhabiting this place. To be honest I was more into enjoying the view than the thought of fighting them. Also for reasons, they felt so nostalgic as if looking at a reflection of myself which I was once. As I made my presence known to these spiders, I expected them to bring the fight directly to me. I prepared myself to send them off to the other side without hurting. I couldn't show them sympathy if they try to hurt me. Though if possible I will make it easy for them to pass on. All the spiders suddenly stop moving their front claws or doing the work they might have been doing. Maybe like washing their fangs or scrubbing their spider webs in the running water. 
whispered staring in my direction and then again in the left corner of the floor, where a huge black spider was resting on a huge pumice rock, maybe treating it like a throne of some kind. Suddenly the black spider made out a huge roar after looking intently in my direction and all the other spiders froze in their places. I didn't understood what was happening but it was fun watching them nonetheless. If they tried to act suspiciously I was going to annihilate them either way. So it's all in the good, as their distorted arrangement quickly turned into a classified special arrangement of rows and columns. They matching and synchronizing their movements marched towards me, in a somewhat akin to a parade or 252 processions I would see on television when the military rallies to the parliament. I was more than ready to unleash my spell. When the black spider appeared in front of me, it was so quick that I wouldn't have been able to react, if I didn't keep my guard up, was it teleportation, maybe shadow movement from the looks of it, they are all high level spiders after all and with huge bodies like that they are quite a monstrous sight to look at. Well, I did also look the same whn I was one. As I was immersed in my thoughts of my dark and harsh past. A shrill voice excitedly banged in my head, even though it did not cross paths between my two ears, was it telepathic communication, but with whom, as I focused on the receiving, I was awestruck. The queen has finally returned. Bow before the queen. Wait. What dot what's going on? A monster talking, but how? Could it be that I am hearing things? Am I that adverse to killing spiders now? But if they try to harm me then I have no choice. I should just burn them after all. When suddenly a status message appeared as if an oracle, to prevent the demise of these innocent spiders who were now bowing and shouting praises for their queen. But where is she? I failed to spot another huge or powerful spider except for the black one, but he too was a part of this entire parade charade, rather he is the one who initiated all of this and the others followed. Legacy of Goddess Arachne. Title Activation. Confirming Evolution. Confirming level steps, transferring rights, process initializing, 253. Wait, what's with my status all of a sudden? And why is Al acting on his own with his emotionless mechanical voice? Subtitle, Queen of all spiders, authority activated. How did I get this title now? Is it because of that weird title which I have since my birth? Why is it activating on its own? Is it some inner mechanism, with some conditions to be fulfilled? And if the title is the Queen of Spiders does that mean their queen is me? Just to confirm. I asked the black spider by directing my gaze at him. Since they can make me understand their language through thought communication, the vice versa should work too or at least I am hoping for it in that matter. Can you tell me who your queen is? It's you my humble queen. A loud voice again ran through my head again. I knew it. But what should I do with it now? All of the spiders almost numbered in hundreds, ranging from different colored shells, blue, green, red, gray, violet and the one who was standing in front of me was the only black spider. He appeared to be indeed the most powerful among them and the one at the top. So titles do work like authority, and the spiders instinctively respond to my presence. Before this I had never used the power of a title. But it does seem useful now. Maybe I should try to acquire more of them, but I have to make sure that I don't end up with a weird one. All hailed the mighty queen. 254. All hailed the majestic queen. All hail. Okay fine. I am your queen. So stop for now. I who got frustrated with their loud noises, without thinking shouted inside my mind. But it seems that due to telepathic thought path communication they heard it. A pin drop silence fell in the bottomless chasm of the labyrinth, and except for my worried looks, strained forward in the flowing downstream water, nothing seems to be moving. Are they mad at me because I shouted at them? I looked at the black spider and could tell he was eagerly waiting for something. So I tried doing this, being as direct as possible. By any chance do you want something from me specifically as your queen? I need to gain their trust. If by any chance we can reach to a conclusion to stop our fight, then I am more than willing for a peace negotiation. The black spider walked in front a bit and tilting his black spherical head, attached to its huge body, like bowing to me he continued in his ear-splitting sound, Oh, humble queen, as your subjects we can't ask you for anything, no, no, 
there could be something I could do for you. Just ask, my queen how kind of you to offer us your divine protection. Wait, but I didn't offer anything to you. You just went and decided it on your own. He continued, then if you must then we want to procure some nutritious food. We have survived till now by eating plants, but it doesn't seem to work for us that much in terms of fulfilling our 255 demands. Would you be willing enough to grant us food with your absolute power? Wait, these spiders eat plants and now they are asking for something nutritious. Sealed it be meat. So ultimately they are omnivores. But why haven't I ever thought of eating plants when I was one? Right while fighting monsters I would usually end up destroying the whole floor or burning down the whole place. Well, you learn something new every day, so I will leave it at that and take it as a lesson. As for their food, I have defeated a lot of monsters and with help of gluttony and equivalent exchange, I can recreate monster corpses, so will it be okay for them to eat it? Will monster corpses work for you all? Anything our queen offers to us we will be honored to accept it with all of our heart. Then how about this, I recreated a sandworm corpse to fill almost half the floor, which I once defeated inside the labyrinth, I wonder for how much days it will work for them. Thank you, my queen, this will surely make your subjects happy, how could we ever repay to you? Don't go crying on me, you asked for it, so you get it. You honestly don't need to. You are so kind M. Y. Queen, let us all dedicate our lives in your name, please use our meager lives to fulfill all your means. Wait, didn't you decide it all on your own? But I don't think there is any backing out now and it's not like I can't use their help. All I need to do as a queen is to make sure that they live a happy life and do not die because of any avoidable circumstance. If serving me, their queen makes, 256, them happy then I shouldn't refuse the offer, as long as I don't make their life less comfortable or put them in harm's way, but is this amount really enough for you all? Yes, my queen most probably for a month or two. Are they dieting freaks, with their size, even this amount won't last for an hour. Oh, I see that's how it is. I understood the whole fuss when they shrank themselves. That's right, until now they had been using body transformation but their true size is almost that of a nail and can still lower their body size to a thick markers. Color me impressed. They changed from abominable apocalyptic creatures to household innocent childlike spiders. Most of them were now feeding on the sandworm, while I was checking their stats through appraisal. To be honest, they were not much of fighters or attack magic user monsters. Though they have high resistances, but they are mostly sneaky type ones. Most of them possessed skills for hidden attacks like poison breath, confusion, paralysis, sleep, mirage, dream contact and even extended to mind attack skills like hypnosis and taking body control. Now I can see their troop potential as a mini squad a small army of spider troops. Good for scouting and directly taking out bosses of the opposing armies. To be honest no one would even suspect them and they can just go and do anything. Hiding is not a problem for them at all, if they learn advanced conceal, then not even investigative skills would work on them. 257. My queen is there anything I can do for you? The black spider came to me on its own violation with the exact proposal I had wanted. But first can you tell me what I should call you? I am sorry for making it difficult but I don't possess a name. Right I had doubt about that, only singular entity monsters possesses names. Then how about I call you Ellie, it makes me so happy to obtain a name from our benevolent queen. It looked like he was about to cry in joy, but now that he has turned his original body size small, his voice has become shrill and sweet. It's much better this way. So, I taught him on how to learn advanced conceal skill. I tried to make it a rather fun activity for them. So, by playing hide and skill with each other, but simply playing won't cut it. They needed to be engaged in combat too, and to catch each other they had to use their webs. It will improve their combat skills in the end and some of them will learn the required skills. Well, we will get to see the results in a month or two. As a compensation I made a promise to teleport lots of meat monster to this floor and also guarantee their safety when they needed me. With help of Ellie's skill we could even communicate over long distance and when I would need them ever in future I could just teleport them to my side. 
This makes me realize that what I am doing might be similar to monster taming but since they call me their queen then should I call it monster subordination. Hey by the way Ellie, do you know what's there on the lower floors? I am sorry my queen, but even we don't know. None of them have ever ventured outside of these floors. It doesn't seem we can either unless 258 you appeared. Now our restrictions have been lifted. That was something new for me to learn. Due to my authority, they are no more bound to the rules and dimension barriers that maintain order in this place. Yes, that might be true. When I appeared somehow they too got the title of worker spiders. Am I running some kind of corporate system now? Sorry for being useless my queen. No problem. You all just try to live a healthy and fun life here. But I can tell you one thing that whatever there is below us, is not alive. We never sensed any life energy coming from there but always experienced a cold powerful surging malevolent energy occupying it. That does help. Well I have a clue now, and I think I know what I should expect then. After that we said our goodbyes to each other and all the other spiders seemed to be overwhelmed by me leaving, but I assured them that I will help them whenever they have a problem. And that's how our little congregation came to an end and thus a spider colony was found under my supervision. 259 Floor 98 Who would have thought that I would be able to see such a creepy and yet fascinating sight someday? Till now I had only seen it in video games and novels, but they do really exist in this world. Those who sleep for eternity and yet walk the land, those who look straight forward at their goal and yet are mindless. Those that are not already rotten but yet immortal. The undead. As I was a step away from the gate, the lower land was filled with a dense pitch black mist. So, that's what is called a black miasma pool. For one to be here. It's sure is a mystery right now. Usually they could be said as naturally occurring pounds in the realm of dead, hell. But for one to be here and so huge to cover the entire floor. I needed to tread carefully in here. From what I have learnt. These pools is what power up the monsters, causing different changes in their bodies, pretty much like evolution, but it's way worse because it takes away their sanity and fear of death and instill in them the thought to destroy whatever is in front of them. I looked at all the humanoid-like creatures, creatures other than humanoid shapes with almost no forms. Undead, zombies, skull people, whatever one calls them were walking on this floor. The air was so cool to almost make my breath clog in my throat. The sight of these indescribable creatures, the cold black darkness did not only had consumed the floor but also had plagued their hearts which almost made me scramble backwards. But I had to move forward, even though this was my first hand experience with them, I had to learn to deal with such a problem at some point if I wanted to succeed in my and Athena's goal. 260. So. To first know of their weaknesses and strengths properly, I wanted to play it safe and avoid the black miasma and its adverse effects. Even though I have magic immunity and resistance I doubt it would be absolutely effective against such an overwhelming amount. I had to keep my promise with mother after all to not get hurt if I am able to. So from the stairs alone I decided to launch magical attacks since they won't respond to my presence unless I enter the F law or or step into the black miasma gravi, sphere, wind cutter, fusion sphere. I launched my preliminary rail of attacks, but unfortunately, it had no effect on them. On those whom I casted gravity sphere stay stuck to the ground. On those whom I cut through wind cutter, felled into various parts but continued to grossly walk with their cut down half bodies. With no choice I decided to raise the level of spells, black flare. In the next instant the whole floor was on fire, which confirmed the fact I had learned about the undead. Magic is ineffective on them. The black fire just spread over their bodies with doing no damage whatsoever and died out. The reason being, that the undead are specific creatures that possess infinite and zero amount of magical energy. They keep on alternating between them. For a body which ceases to have a soul, but when their escaping consciousness ends up in a loop of leaving and re-entering a body it gives rise to an undead. When the consciousness leave their bodies they have zero magical energy, and when their consciousness returns back by absorbing magic. 261 Energy from the surrounding and pure lack miasma they have almost an infinite supply of it. This process is fast in undead who have strong will and are powerful. While it's comparatively slower in the weak ones, 
This leads to the conclusion that my black fire magic failed and so will the other magic spells, I mean killing an already dead being sounds lame, though I have to do just that, to be more precise to defeat an undead we need to erase their existence. In this world people have only one solution of defeating an undead, that is divine light magic, which works well. In destroying the magical veins and severe their consciousness form their will. But for this humongous pool of miasma and undead numbering in hundreds it would almost tee ack an entire day, and I don't like to work like a bull, but take smart steps for quick total annihilation of my enemy. So, it was my best time to try out my new weapon that I once failed to control. But after regular practice with mother I was finally able to gain complete control over it. I will also able to confirm the exact potency of this weapon and its limits at the same time. Soul weapon manifest, Delia sphere. The next instant I was covered inside a translucent white color sphere. This was my soul weapon. Unlike any other soul weapon, it was one of its kind because I cannot use it directly to attack. The ground below me got erased, so I used wind magic to skywalk. I took my first step on the floor into the back miasma pool. Closing my eyes I hurriedly moved my legs and hesitatingly placing them on the ground. I was safely standing on the floor. 262. Finally, without a scratch, I looked around and was surprised to see how this black miasma pool was reacting to my soul weapon. As soon as the black mist touched the periphery of the sphere it vanished leaving an empty space which was then covered by the surrounding mist. The process continued forever, as if the sphere was acting as some kind of a sink or a drainage point, but the sudden change in the level of black miasma had already alerted the undead of their energy source being depleted by me, they took an offensive side. Some came running in my direction empty handed, some with rusted swords and wearing brown rusted armors. Even the monster looking type undead did the same and mindlessly attacked me. But I was not bothered, the moment they touched the sphere, they vanished. Not even a single trail left behind, almost being reduced to nothing, as if they were being deleted from reality. That's the feeling I get. I was happy as I moved forward towards the next gate leading me to the final floor. I did not need to do anything except walk as all of my enemies unthinkingly vanished from my sight as did the most of black miasma which was almost completely gone with few traces behind. Then not to forget about the undead mounting over black horses. Those really fired me up, watching them in real life was a dream come true, but they too found a similar ending of being erased. Within 15 minutes I had not only defeated all my enemies but also purified the land, but seeing the floor did not make me much happy. The fertility of the soil was gone, it was burned to the very bottom of ground, with almost all of magics being used to sustain the black miasma itself. 263. 264. I decided to pick up some soil, and later try finding ways to restore it to normal in as little time as possible. I might have to confront these good for nothing creatures in future later too. So it's better to be prepared. 265. Floor 100. The situation just can't get worse than currently what it is. I had started getting bad premonitions the moment I saw a four square gate sealing the passage to the final floor, just like an unwritten invitation or label. One labyrinth final boss monster, order up. Using my wind fan I slashed through the gate, ripping apart it into two pieces with a clean cut. It was obvious that mother's gift would prevail against these pesky ancient doors, though now I regret it when I think I could open a museum with these kinds of objects. The people would go crazy in my previous world on such a discovery claiming dash a fine piece of ancient work, a breakthrough in ancient times technological advancement, or what not stupidity over a dumb door. At least give it a rest, it might be just a door to someone's washroom in old times. But maybe it would be just considered an old dull gate in this world and the idea of a museum won't work that well in magical world because things needed to be put to use instead of being hanged on walls or bore the mind of school children on a museum trip. Then there are all kinds of restoration and sustaining magic which defeats the entire purpose of recording time artifacts, but the world which I was about to enter had no limits or boundaries as such, 
I would have thought as much when this floor is the only one separated with a sealed door. Danger is etched and has been echoing in this empty dark space. I could neither perceive a wall nor the ground. It was all covered in pitch black miasma much darker and denser than the last time. But instead of being surrounded by undead, a huge black sphere was floating in the center of the place. 266 With no choice I activated my soul weapon and stepped into the black miasma, and it still is ineffective on me, but I was still creeped out by how the miasma was reacting. It was a curious sight, but at the same time, it made me feel indescribably uneasy. For a moment I felt it was alive, as it started converging and bouncing over the surface of sphere. I had taken only a few steps, when the air instantly froze as if someone had forcibly for a moment stopped the ticking of all the clocks in the world. The black sphere started revolving at its place at an indefinite pace. Sometimes it took turns, tilted its axis, and changed speed. It was clear to me that this black sphere was taking some kind of a form when I started feeling an overwhelming presence from the inside. I used my appraisal and analysis skill at the same time and started studying the situation. So, now that would explain, why so much black miasma has accumulated on this floor. I was getting anxious by every second, as more and more of this dark matter spewed out of the black sphere and finally it completed its form. Skinless fleshless hands clad in a raven black robe with an invisible bottom covered in black fog, clutching a gargantian sword which seemed to be able to split the ground and sky at the same time. The gaze from its vacant orbs of its bleached white skull had a familiar sense of emptiness as though it captures the soul of anyone who dared to stare in them. In that moment of stillness, it had already concluded that I was the live prey. The final boss monster turned out to be none other than a soul reaper dash Thanatos, the guardian angel of gates of hell. 267 Maybe I should start praying, but unfortunately I have always been an atheist from heart. But even after meeting gods for real, my viewpoint hasn't changed. Gods are not beings that fulfill our pesky wishes but have much more responsibility to look after the world's order and maintain a proper balance in the fundamental forces of nature. They won't have time to hear our pleas and even if they hear, they have no obligation to fulfill it. And then there are people who says, God helps only those who helps themselves. Humans just cannot stay on the same platform. I think I don't need to pray to them, because I have befriended one of THM after all. Haven't I? So I am going to meet her and there is no stopping me. I am going to take this apocalyptic monster down in a beat. I instantly increased the reach of my soul weapon and holding the hand fan near my heart I firmed my grip on the ground and relaxed my muscles. In the next instant, all I was able to perceive was a black shadow and the shining tip of the sword heading in my direction at a lightning speed. It is faster than I imagined for a bag of broken ancient bones. I was more than ready to counterattack as I spread the blades of the wind fan and pushing my hand a bit backwards. Prepared to counterattack its blow, the reaper was about to touch the sphere and I was already dancing in the skies with the thought that I had already won. I can't move. What's happening? 268 My senses. My foothold all had started to suddenly whittle down. My strength receding into the background as if it failed to response to my urges. This has never happened. So why now? I was the only one who had stopped, while the reaper's blade was upon me in a flash. I had no time to be surprised and yet at this decisive moment, it was as though the connection between my mind and body was severed. I forcing myself tried to hold the wind fan in front and putting all of my strength into my all-seeing eyes of the gods used thought acceleration. The reaper was definitely being hurt by the soul weapon's sphere, but something unique was occurring simultaneously. The sphere was corroding. So, this is rot magic. I th think I have overestimated the powers of my soul weapon and underestimated the enemy at the same time. According to analysis rot magic, is an old decaying skill. Whenever anything comes into the vicinity of the soul reaper it starts to decay on its own. Time itself started decaying almost halted when it approached me. My energy started decaying as it touched the sphere which corroded as well. There was no more time to think, the only immediate solution to get out of this mess was to release all the stored energy inside the flag at once. A burst of light magic, 
and the Soul Reaper made a retreat with clanking bones sound, its rattle resonating in this hollow place made it even more sinister. I would have loved to open a ghost house here, but having such a scary ghost with such a dangerous unique skill should not be left loose. I needed to gain back my energy, and the parts of the skin burn I suffered around my hand due to its rot magic. 269. Divine Heal. The next moment I knew all the black miasma in my nearby vicinity got purified as well as the reaper seems to be frustrated by it as it let out a huge howl. I wondered how did it even manage to make out a voice without an Adam's apple or a tongue. That's none of you business, damn you. That's what it eyes appeared to be saying to me. How did I even miss that? Divine heal is the highest divine light magic I can use. Obviously it would work better than my soul weapon. But I think I only made the boss monster angrier with how the black miasma has been condensing behind him and acting so violent. This was a mistake from my side to use a spell without thinking how the monster would retaliate. Of course if I use a power that endangers its very existence it would come at full force. But I was still recovering from the time lag the rot skill has caused. I can't get my head around it of how to defeat such a strong entity without getting near it. It's obvious all magic spells would decay before it makes contact with it. I tried to ransack my brain as every second passed, but nothing seems to surface. It was a blank. Is it too due to FCT of the rot skill or am I scar red? This time, in these few seconds of negligence and ignorance I have left the reaper unattended. I tried to move, but this time my legs seemed to be sinking inside the knee-deep water ground. The black mist had turned into a liquid, while a small tsunami of it was rising before the reaper's back. What is it trying to do now? 270. The streams of black fluid repeatedly clashed in mid-air and before I could recover from the fact that I was sinking deeper into the quicksand of this dark matter a huge black gate manifested and floated on the turbulent surface. The reaper's body shook heavily as the black fluid now started flooding the entire region. While it went beyond my waist level and started draining itself into the black gate summoned by the black angel, my consciousness still fading. My body still not accustomed to such high concentration of black miasma in liquid form I was losing my willpower and magic that was being sucked out of me like a sponge being repeatedly unscrunched tightly to drain the last drop of water from it. My body was in a lot of pain but my only thoughts remaining of getting hurt as I was being pulled towards the gate and finally sucked into it. My only regret to be unable to put any resistance because I was too relaxed for someone who wanted to conquer a labyrinth. I just forgot how cruel and unforgiving this place could be. I was now completely immersed inside the black fluid, as it started entering through my mouth and nose when I opened it in search of air. 271. Monster Diary Thanatos. Dark Angel, Name, Thanatos Sage. Dash race, mystic soul reaper level, 9200 HP, 800,000 MP, 900,000 SP, unique skill, rot magic, skills, advanced black miasma LV10, purgatory flames, immortality, ultra self regeneration necromancy, gates of hell, titles, guardian of gate of hell, 272, Alicia Ascalon Ashbourne. It has now dawned upon me of how I forgot to learn swimming from mother, but I was drowning deeper and deeper into this endless, bottomless pit, going along with the current, being pulled down to its non-existent foundation, light fading. All I remembered was Benji hauled inside the hell gate which the reaper summoned. My hand seemed to be as empty as it only grasped nothing. The more I tried, the more my body hurt. I wished to live. I did not want it to die. I had felt this way more than I can count. This coldness in my mind, this single thought of living and a wish to survive, that all I had hoped for. I don't want to go out like this. It's so pathetic and maybe so much like me, as if someone then responding to my call. Two brilliant lights in my hands illuminated in this black pitch omnipotence for a second, or so I thought as the vestiges of darkness returned to the depths of hell. I immersed into it further and further until I finally fell asleep. When I was back on earth sometimes I always thought it would be a good to sleep and never wake up. Waking up day after day only became boring, more appropriately, it never felt like wanting to see a tomorrow. For me it was like the same day 
same things being repeated on its own, stuck in a loop where even if I want to, I cannot proceed on the desired path I wanted to. 273. It was as if someone was controlling my Liffy and I couldn't even do a thing about it. And that someone might be the one because of whom I can't do or become things I wanted to. I couldn't reach it. Neither can I fight it. So it would be good to skip out on some day. No one would mind. No one remembers me nor I want to remember them. Taking a break. Is that what I wanted? Maybe. Booty that is something I don't want right now. Because the feeling of each passing day, is like a loss that no living being can avoid. Especially in this life. This change and feeling was visible to me as one of the most. So was I not alive back then, were my days on earth of no consequence. Does that make the present me useless, in front of a powerful foe? I don't know. Why don't I answer it for you? Till now it felt like I was talking to myself and answering on my own. But this second voice woke me up as I realized myself sitting in the only chair of my room, my hands tied up by a thin rope and interlocked on the back. The person standing in front of me was yet another me wearing the school uniform with a weird smile, as if it made her feel pleasure in seeing her own reflection in a miserable state. What a bizarre situation. I don't think I could get a bit more worried or surprised because pretty much I have gotten used to seeing myself. 274. It's weird talking to other personalities of me, like last time it was a kindred one and other was a devilish one. I wonder which kind of me is this one now, to be creepy enough to tie her own self in her past home. You have the answer. I asked in my weakened state. My head still felt heavy and numb, as if recovering from the shock of the attack from the Soul Reaper. Well I do but I am not interested in telling you. This new me gave a quick response and she sounded a bit rude and awful at the same time. Can I have some tea and biscuits when you are at it? What do you need those for? She still questioned me like an investigator would question a criminal, but I am not one, even though I am tied like this. Well I do need them but I am not interested in telling you. I smirked, but playing tit for tat or teasing my own self is not my kind of fetish. You think it's funny. You know that right this moment you are dying in the real world, do you still think you have time to play around? She kicked one of the legs of a chair making it unstable on its three footing alone. I guess it worked. It really provoked her. This was just an investigative question. I wanted to confirm whether this person is really me or someone else, and I would say none. I would never get angry or frustrated on these kinds of replies. So is she some kind of shadow personality of mine? Is it because of my dual swords, that these kinds of meetings happens between myself? But what is it that the swords want from me to make me go through this? 275 Why aren't you responding? She again repeatedly kicked on the legs of the chair which shook it for an instant but was not strong enough to topple it. It's clear that she is not a friendly type. I still remained quiet I needed to sort my thoughts while I still had the chance to think of a way to get past its rot attack magic which always surrounds it like an invisible blanket, but nothing is going to work, my ways won't cut it this time. Even if I use the first ability of the dual blades and that the black sword is able to cut through magic and absorb it, it will be only for an instant and the rot magic would activate on itself again. Anyway if you are going to die. And since you have made up your mind, I will kill you myself. Wait I never made up my mind to accept my dear th. What are you talking about? The whole point of being you here is that you accepted your death. This me, really hates talking. Is too loud and is not at all behaving as how I would do. Anger. We need to control it all the time. If I don't then it will probably make others hate me more. Not that it would make a difference. And yet I was always averse to showing the feelings of anger and hatred. I never hated anyone. Though I did get angry and sad of how people show their true faces to me and what people want from me. And yet I found it useless, because those cannot deliver solutions of my life problems to me. But why do you want to kill me? Well I ought to know the rears on, if the killer is willing to offer it up himself, then I should probably not hold back. You are seriously asking me. Shouldn't you know the answer already? No, I really don't know. So while we are at it, 
Why don't you tell me as my final wish? 276 She made a kind of annoyed face as if she was about to punch me anytime soon, if I pushed her even a bit more. Because it's all your fault, you did this to me. What? Did I do to her again? She is the one keeping me tied and suddenly memories started playing like a film in my mind. Times when I was alone, when things were unfair towards me or when I had a problem and I wanted someone to help me out. Those were not exactly my memories at the moment but ho w this me specifically clung to these memories, but why? I thought I had already left all of it behind. So why they are so much hurting me, it's because you kept me closed up, all this time. Kept quiet, did not stood for yourself, it's all because of you I am so miserable and in so much pain. That's right I am your pent up anger, you have kept stored up until this time and even now you are bottling it all up but I won't allow it anymore. Her serious tone and the pressure anger which I was feeling from her now was enough to give me goosebumps. I gulped, but decided not to be intimidated. So, what exactly you want me to do? Snapping out like you are doing now wouldn't have solved the problem it would have only worsened the situation. Don't sermon me on ways of peaceful noble life. If you can't make yourself happy you transfer all the pain to me while you sat back act all innocent as if nothing really happened, I want to let loose too. The wooden floor of the room started shaking, the ceiling flickered as some of the white powder fell down from it. Well I already knew this room had a weak built, and it would collapse any time during an earthquake. 277, but why is it moving so much? The windows cracked with shards of glasses flying into the room. To my horror, outside the window, a huge raging storm of the same black miasma was forming that pulled me in here. This dreamlike or conscious world too was now being invaded by the black miasma. As each day passed, you gave up hope and decided that it couldn't get worse. While you kept quiet I was tormented here locked up in the corner. Why didn't you try to stop it? Why didn't you just destroy everything in your way? This girl, even with so mu ch going on the outside, she is still continuing with her nonsensical fuss. But why does it hurt so much when she is speaking like that? I don't think it's true. Or could it be that she has really been here all this time? Because there is no reason for H her to lie. She is just me. So why would she lie to herself? How can you even say that, when you knows that is not the right way to do things? You can't just change people's thoughts about you, so it's better to stay away from than facing them. I still can't agree, if all one wants is to take out their anger on others. Yes you are right, maybe it could be better solved by killing everyone who stood in my way of happiness, it won't be that difficult for the current you, I know you too crave for it, I could tell because we are the same person, just imagining all the ways to make them suffer and watch as they scream for help already makes me wanting to do it. Her eyes narrowed as if they were being controlled by the evil residing inside of the miasma, I needed to get out of here, wake up. What are you doing? Stop spouting nonsense, you know we can't hurt innocent people. So how can you say something like that? I 278 screamed at her. Maybe because she was me, I thought I could get angry with myself at least, no, one would get hurt or dislike me this way. So, you two are going to stop me from doing what I want you to. You couldn't speak up then, so why now? Don't go thinking that shouting at yourself would not hurt your feelings. You don't know what happiness is, so you ignored and snatched away my happiness too. She came close to me and bending a little, pointing at my heart, she whispered in my ears. My eyesight began scorching, as everything turned fuzzy. The shock had rendered me numb to the extent that I couldn't feel the moisture that had surfaced in my eyes. I was burning from inside, because of the rage of this person who spoke in my ears dash. Because you will be the only one hurting the most. So burn with me. At that moment the roof got on like a massive storm and all other natural calamities had hit the place at the same time. Black miasma started seeping in from below the closed door. It started hurting more and more as I screamed. I was really scared. Scared for my own life this time, not knowing what would happen next and the only thing ahead I see is a blank, it made me more scared of taking another step. So this is how she felt, with nowhere to go, nowhere to run, with no one to show you kindness and all on your own, she endured, all of this alone, and yet again, 
she took it all upon herself, as I felt a sudden relief from the pain which was bursting inside me until now, light returning back in my eyes, I looked for her. 279. Seeing that the girl was now drenched in a tornado of some kind of black mist as she stood there shouldering all of it on her own. I wanted to shift my gaze away, but her screams chased me down and knocked my ears, the debris of the roof, the burning effect of the black mist and my own unwanted feelings, she again took it away, but why? St. Stop. Get away. This time I screamed at her because I couldn't look away anymore. Because I had left her abandoned and forgotten. She turned out like this. This side of mine, or even though I am just imagining things, maybe it's right to voice your own thoughts, when you can avoid others from being hurt and especially when you are hurting yourself. I did little to prevent the abuse, other than to refuse to react, presumably in the hopes they would tire of bullying me if they couldn't get any reaction from my side but learning of her abandonment, it seemed common knowledge at the sight that, over time, my ignoring the bullying backfired. So, I marked myself off as emotionless, to go along with them, you cannot accept resistance from anyone if you are weak, and both the sides know very well about it, but I at the same time did not try to change things, and even now this powerlessness is showing how laid back I have been and how hollow my dreams are, don't sit and watch there run away, don't die on me, and if you try to die again, before that I will kill you myself. I could tell from her voice that she was barely able to speak and was being tormented by that black raging mist, more than she is letting to show it on her face, she stood so strong, while I gave up every time so soon. 280, 281, run away, leave me here. I won't die this easily. But we don't know what will happen to you if that black miasma continues like that. I begged her to stop going through all of this, don't take pity on me, now go. I needed to move, I needed to save her, especially now, when I think I have gotten stronger from before, and if I show my weakness again, it would be like lying to the hopes of people who have cared about me. So, let me move once more even if I am feeling so helpless now. The back ropes which were keeping me tied to my chair, suddenly burst open, as if I had finally broken through my own restriction binding me, I ran closer to the other me, but with how dangerous the storm was, I couldn't seem to get closer to her. I am sorry, it's all because of me, don't come closer, this will take you in with me, run while you still have the chance. The words of her got muffled in inside the storm but I still understood her. I am not running away, you suffered because you had to fight alone with my true desires, but not anymore, I am not going to leave you alone, if you stay here then you will definitely die. That might be true, but it won't be similar to your death if I die here. I will just disappear, like I always have been. But isn't it good, it is because I can die now, that I can appreciate life. I don't get what you mean, but since we both have same life, you have a heart too. That means you are already alive, you don't have to go this far to prove yourself and take all the burden. Dying will be a proof that I have a heart, and I can take more than this. This has nothing on me, just remember that I existed within you and maybe sometimes get angry for yourself, just maybe. 282. I stood there for a moment and the next thing I knew. I was forcing my hand through the revolving wall of black miasma that stood between me and her. Kaluach. Wait, what are you doing? You don't need to die with me. I am not dying, neither are you going to suffer any more because of me. I am leaving this place and you are coming with me. Coming with you. Get moving. I have always been here since the day I have known I existed. I don't think there's any else place I belong. You told me you were alone, but it could be the only reason that I came here to get you. You taught me that there's no reason to fight against it if it's your true desire. Now, I don't understand what you are saying. There's no need to. There is no reason to be here anymore. You said you wanted to get loose, but doesn't that mean you wanted someone's company too? So, isn't IT the right time to be together? Together, with you, ah uh -huh. The black mist was ripping my skin and burning at the same time. If I kept at it any longer, my hands might also be ripped apart. See, if you stay with me, you will get hurt more and more and I don't know, whether this anger is controllable or not, I do realize no w, 
that anger might be the cause of others hating me too and I don't know what I will do if you start hating me too, just come with me because there's still so much you can do with me than better dying here, you might be just my imagination with different 283 values of life attached to you, but there's no reason for you to be here, grab my hand and let's leave this place, fine then I won't hesitate, you asked for me and I will give you my power, right then let us be together as one from here on, clasps, my hands fumbled in the dark in search of her hand as she held out her own and grasped it, a special culmination of black and golden light surrounded her as it consumed the entire vicinity and the next the whole world around me, the only thing I remembered from there was her confident smile and that I was finally able to understand myself a bit more, dual blades, white and black swords, skill, absolute life and death control activated, 284, floor, 100, cold and hollow, an infinite valley of darkness and the silence of death, the soul reaper brandishing its huge long sword, beckoned through his hands as the gates of hell which he had summoned through his own power closed its doors upon this mortal world, the place returned to its quietness again and the intruder had been dealt with, the soul reaper stood in its place, one could say that it was relieved by meditating in the peacefulness of its own creepy dark domain or it was sizing up the peacefulness before the storm would hit, after a few seconds, as if there was an uproar among the souls inhabiting the black pool, but even though the source was untraceable, two streaks of bright light flashed upon the gate carving across and a white figure jumped out by slamming the indestructible gates of hell dual wielding, a Renealist technique, first form, quad spectre, a powerful single concentrated quick draw attack from both my blades converging all my energy at a single point, I slashed the gates of hell open, my sword left white and black traces behind as it flew forward and collided with the soul reaper's blade, sparks flying in every direction, but only the reaper was knocked backwards by the force of impact, leaving a huge gap in between, I held my swords perfectly still before me and let a smile curl the corners of my mouth, I have come back for my sweet revenge, 285, the bones of the reaper again rattled and crackled as if one were putting salt through pyrolysis or playing a clamshell as a living instrument, by any chance, is your whole body like a music instrument in itself? I tried to ask a question out of curiosity, I do hear some blowing instruments and organ pipes are sometimes made up of bones, and if for him it is natural then maybe he should join a band called Deadbeat, Jiawah. As if disturbed by my offer it let out a huge scream and refused to be a part of such a prestigious entertainment production group, responding to the cries of the soul reaper, the broken gates started submerging into the water, and thousands of souls flew out at the same time, forming black circular masses in the huge sky, they kept on growing in size until they were huge enough that they could destroy an entire building if allowed free fall, the reaper pointing his sword at me went for another piercing thrust aimed directly at my heart, at first I leapt in to face the enemy with my own blades, without missing a moment's guess, I blocked the sword which he swung hard at me with my white sword, as I was about to aim my black sword at his neck, I instinctively jumped back, leaving a space in between, making a blue barrier over me, I blocked the huge black meteor of souls falling on me, I knew the barrier couldn't hold it any longer, as several cracks have started appearing on it, but I had already a new ace up my sleeve, I switched on the new skill of my black sword and making a piercing shot in a vertical direction a peaceful single touch of my black blade which was still much darker than the cumulonimbus of souls it dispersed and yet it reflected light as if conquering the darkness itself. 286. In that moment all the souls were put to rest altogether. The shadow of clouds which could have shadowed even the brilliant rays of sun was extinguished by a knight's black spell of my sword. This was the effect of the new second ability my swords had gained, the first ability, in which the black sword could absorb any magic and the white sword could re-emit it, the second ability was even more fearsome, as if it was handing me down the very essence of life and death itself as the name of the skill stated, the white sword had the ability to kill anything whatever it touched if it is alive, while the black sword had the ability to kill anything or remove the existence of any non-living or dead. In simple terms a single touch from my sword meant game over, 
my black sword since could kill any non-living thing, might be an undead, a skill or even magic itself, as such, now the rot magic of the soul reaper had no effect on me at all. Erupting in rage and unable to understand his attack failed the reaper cast a sharper, icy and dangerous glance at me with its eyes. The aura of darkness it exuded instantly thickened. How dare you steal my reaped souls? That's what the eye of the soul reapers says since he couldn't speak on his own. He was unable to understand how did I get passed through his unique skill. Don't worry I am going to fix your problem of your raging heart for dead bodies and souls. I said smiling at him as I prepared myself for another close combat exchange, quite I was made to rule the darkness I am going to make this your grave. That's what the soul reaper's eyes said in return for my favor I was going to do to him. The aura of darkness surrounding his being amplified again. I felt a slight fierce blowing form behind, the air, the water and the very being. 287 that might have made up this floor was being pulled towards him and absorbed into one entity. Drenched in malignant darkness a new being merged out of the omnicolored light, tendrils of darkness emerged forth behind him. At the same time the air cracked and two black feathered wings spread out, as if darkness burst outward to burn everything into it. Holy crap! He is really a messenger of death or rather a dark angel maybe. I am going to send you to a dark, cool and comfortable place. That's what his lit up eyes were saying, pointing his huge blade at a young innocent girl like me. You don't have it in you to defeat me, you empty dead brain. Both of us dashed in midair as our swords met in a stalemate again and again, like a dance between total darkness and the light from my white sword and the radiance reflected from my black sword. I cut through its every attack as every time his sword came to a halt before scratching me with an eerie sound. Both of us knew a single scratch for many of our sword would mean an instant death now. The white and black swords rattled violently. While my weapons weren't being corroded, I could still feel the power of its rot magic slowly making its way towards me. The closer he got, the harder it became to defend, for thin stick bones like him. His raw strength was astronomical. Paying no mind to the few blows that the demon blocked, I continued with my attacks, tightening the grip over my blades I went for a combo attack, a continuous flowing attack which increases in strength after each rotation I made on my foot. Forming a twisting, swirling vicious flow of wind I blocked all the black projectiles he threw at me from all sides, while I increased the number of strikes and made continuous slashes. 288. It was working. The Black Angel, seems that he couldn't maintain this form for too long. It might be putting too much pressure on him. He then again started to put distance between us by going himself on defensive and increasing his ranged attacks. Dodging my next vertical cut it flew back and again made a rattling noise with its bones. It again started collecting power from its surroundings and was preparing for a final attack, which I could tell from the looks of it because he is pushing himself to accumulate more of it than usual. He was at his limit, while I know I have grown stronger with this new ability, and had adjusted pretty quickly to this dense miasma now, but the rot magic even though being blocked by my black sword's skill, it still is not nullified. If this bag of bones has got a little brain. Then he would probably put all his magical reserves in its unique skill and go for the instant final blow. So, I needed to do the same. To respond its strongest attack with one of the strongest of my own. You are not leaving from here alive. It will be the end of you. That's what the soul reaper's eyes says as it roared while condensing all its magic power in a twist around its sword. You can't stop me. Anyone who stands in my way will die. I gave my final reply to him taking an offensive stance, with a deep trust in my swords. Before meeting her I might have frozen up with the power the soul reaper has been emitting this entire time. The press of death was lurking everywhere. And yet I could still feel a new flame of courage glowing brightly as a star even in this dark age. Dual wielding. Aranealus technique he. Second form. Red Garden Tempest. 289. Magical aura shot forth from both of my swords and body, which burst forth in a nimbus of colorful vibrant light transcending all the powerful attacks I have used until now, as if all the darkness evaporating from the black miasma pool, small buds started appearing on the surface, 
the malignants being absorbed as the nutrients to the new young buds, it blossomed into a beautiful red spider lily flower garden, covering the entire floor, the soul reaper devastated with his magic supply being reduced and his domain snatched away. It burst into motion and so did I making a vertical downward cut from the top it wanted to slash me through between. I leapt forward in the same instant, bursting ripples through the air. My white sword moved to intercept his sword midair. Clang. Sparks flew. Unstable release of magical energy due to our collision released almost immediately, devastated the whole area. And when the smoke and tides of water fell back to its place, my black sword was piercing right through the middle of its chest, while the white sword ran through his sword, almost slicing it in half. It crumbled with cracks, shattered and fell to pieces on the ground. The bones inside the black gape started turning into grey fairy dust, mixing itself in the steep water, never to be separated from its home. My eyes fell on the ground, still flooded with water, but this time it had a clear luster to it. But my red spider lily garden was now all shriveled up, as its petals fell on the surface of water after purifying it. Out of habit I swiped both swords and returned them to their scabbards placed alongside my waist, appearing and disappearing whenever I wanted. Just then the voice of mechanical owl rang through my head, as if 290 declaring the end of the match and bringing it to a final conclusive chapter. You have leveled up. You have reached level 30. Acquired title, Shadow Lord. All seeing eyes of the gods activated. Eight form, Eye of Nevma. An unsavory feeling went past my head, as if all the energy was being drained and forced into me at the same instant. I knew I needed to go to sleep now, but I just can't fall asleep in water. With the remaining light in my eyes, I conjured a small room out of wood and earth opened the door and fell on the not-so-fancy bed in the inside, in an instant. Exactly after five days when I woke up and crossed the door of the tiny room I had conjured, I could see a clear blue ground of water with red spider lilies growing all over the place. It was a sight to behold and to be engraved in one's memory, never to be forgotten. Maybe it was a gift for defeating the Soul Reaper. At the same time I remembered I had earned the title Shadow Lord. According to analysis skill, this title would actually fit what one would call a necromancer. But I think it's still different. According to the authority of title, I can turn a dead body into a special existence called a shadow. 291, as for how it works, is by creating a soul copy for my gluttony skill and then overwriting its very being and giving it a physical form and ultimate loyalty to their master. So it's not bringing back people to life but more like resurrecting the dead. I had the best test subject, the monster I killed just now. Arise. I said in a deep tone. Wait, it's not like it's necessary to speak this word, just imagining the use of authority makes it work. But I wanted to try saying it either way. At the same time I was upset with how stiff the title sounded. I would have liked something more along the line like the Witch of the Doom. Well it's not like the system allows me to file a complaint for its bad naming sense, but this new ability seems highly useful. If I consider all the strong monsters I have defeated and with their special abilities, I can already have subordinates who can do things even my spider subordinates can't do. For now, from my gluttony skill which had absorbed the Soul Reaper, now started taking a new form, as a hazy radiant black smoke slowly converged into taking a flickering shape similar to the original appearance of the Reaper. There was nothing like the deep screams of the dead, or the scent of dead bodies, rather the place smelled fresh due to the red flowers and there were neither graves nor hands popping out. I am scared of watching horror movies, but at the same time my dreams and expectations might have been crushed with what the prospects I though this title might have entailed. Making a bow and curling up both his hands, I was taken a bit back, with how the monster who was then out for blood of mine was now bowing to me. 292. How could I ever repay your kindness, for bringing me back to life, master? A strange metallic voice reached my brain. I looked straight up and it was probably from this guy in front using thought communication. Black bones, purple glowing eyes and a faint dark purple aura wrapped around its entire body, not to forget the noble, dignified robe he was wearing now. If not for anything, he looked more like a priest than a messenger of death. 
The only difference was that he was actually dead now or maybe he was already dead. Then I again killed him and again dragged him back to life. Anyways it's pretty clear to me that all death reapers have it rough when it comes to their personal life count. Please allow this insignificant one, to serve you for the rest of my life. Wait, serve under me. Now that I think about it, it would be my responsibility now, since I brought him back to life. Please bestow, upon your insignificant servant a name. Wait, wait. Isn't he going too fast with it? First a spider army, and now I can see that I can summon an undead army. But I won't probably needing one now. If I think about keeping him as a servant, all he needs is my magic. I stared at him, while he pushed his head more towards the ground. He won't ask for a salary neither complain for food or about living condition, because he can merge with any black spot. IT doesn't seem to me the bugging type. If he can really follow orders and can really lend me his strength, then I see no harm but only the advantages. As for the name, let me think. Better than calling him Mr. Nobody. Necros. How about that? Henceforth, I will be called Necro S. 293. I witnessed a sharp purple light lit in its hollowed black skull, which gave me the feeling that he might have liked the name. At present I wanted to think more about what to do with this power, but more than that I wanted to leave and get to the surface immediately. So, Necros, do you know the way to get out of here? Yes, if Master goes straight from here, then she would find an altar using it you can go back to the entrance of the labyrinth. Well, then off we go. Necros merged with my own shadow reflected on the water surface. I made a final peek at the blue ground and the black sky. But now things might be just reversing. 294. Soul Reaper, th at what his eyes says. For the first time since the age of gods and during the great wars someone else other than those absolute beings, a mortal was able to stand against me in a fight. Not to forget a mortal strong and bright enough to come back alive from my own purgatory and the gates of hell. And finally, someone who had a pure heart to cleanse this cursed water and purify my own heart, to break me free from this cursed demonic sword that made me mad with the thirst to steal away souls, not even gods whom I once served as a messenger, tried to help me, but instead detesting me and falling to the disgrace of a fallen sealed my entire being as the guardian core of this labyrinth. How beautiful! and grand is the purity of this lake where now beautiful flowers blossom, which was only once a mirage to me. A place of doom for the lost souls who escaped from the battlefield to here and were finally released from an eternity at such a scared sight. If only I could know and learn more about this person who freed me from my fate and defied the very impossibility. I have stayed in this place and in a world where life has no value. I would like to see whether such an existence is an aberration or it would be a new beginning of hope for this world marred and built over blood of those who sacrificed themselves or were sacrificed to hold it. Will this true light able to shine upon the entire world or will it fade in the shadows of those who lust for power above all else? 295 Status Window Name Alicia Escalon Ash Born Age 2 Year Race Human Level 30 HP ERRMP ERRSP ERR Unique Skill All Seeing Eyes of the Gods First Form Eye of Investigation Second Form Kinetic Eye Third Form Eye of Adrana Fourth Form, Eye of Soul Fifth Form, Equivalent Exchange Sixth Form, Eye of Being Seventh Form, Eye of Vox to a Sixth Form, Eye of Nevma Skills, Glutton ELV10 Eternal Poison, World Severing Webs, Sage of Advanced Fire Magic, Sage of Advanced Water Magic, Sage of Divine Light, Sage of Advanced Wood Magic, Sage of Advanced Wind Magic, Advanced Sound Magic, Sage of Advanced Space Time Magic, Sage of Advanced Ice Magic, Sage of Advanced Gravity Magic, Sage of Dark Matter, Sage of Advanced Lightning Magic, Sage of Advanced Earth Magic, Bioengineering, Element Manipulation, Abnormal Status Infliction, Advanced Barrier Magic, Title, Legacy of Goddess Arachne, Secretive Plotter, Immortality, Merciless, True Demon Lord Candidate Master Chief, Shadow Lord. 296 Status Window The Dual Blade of Dawn and Dusk White and Black Swords Skills Absolute Magic Control Absolute Life and Death Control Skill Description Allows the user, 
to change the laws of magic up to a certain extent, the black sword devours all kinds of magic without exception, the white sword has the ability to transmit this magic and also copy the spell signature and recreate it for the user, allows the user with the white blade to kill any alive thing, while the black blade allows the user to kill or erase the existence of any dead thing, which further extends to non-living, like, skill effects, items and forces of nature. Weapon Description Level Authority Not Reached Scabbards of Rubrum and Kerulium Skill Description The Red Scabbard provides body temperature maintenance in all situation and divine fire magic control. The Blue Scabbard provides special healing abilities and divine ice magic control. 297 Igth Form Eye of Nevma grants user to see others' soul core and interfere with their domain can also manipulate others' thought waves and take control over the soul realm if level authority exceeds or the individual is weak-willed, allows the user to implant new thoughts and foreshadow impressions of the world on target's mind, title, Shadow Lord, allows the user to give an alternate form to the souls and dead bodies, also grant the power to communicate with these shadows. Shadows also possess the skills and to some extent memories of their previous lives. The user has full control over the mind of the shadows and the shadows gains a personality of absolute loyalty towards the title holder. Shadows since do that of a perfect physical existence, that means they are indestructible however weak to light magic. 298 299 Epilogue it was finally time I decided to leave the labyrinth. I will probably never miss these dark, empty long alleyways that made me afraid. Weak and spiteful but at the same time fearless and strong. Though I might now have an army of spiders and shadows to look after, but all I need is to provide them with food and they are good with it. That's not that difficult, if I think of the benefits I can get from them later. A powerful spider and shadow army which is reliable, is a power I can't obtain easily to make others follow me, for that purpose I have to act and be worthy of as their acting queen and representative. Fine now according to Necros, I have to walk to the black pedestal in front and place my hands on it and channel my magic into it, that would simply transfer me to the entrance of the gateway, let's do it, 3, 2, 1, just like games indeed, I wondered whether there were any prizes or not in this matter for clearing such a dangerous labyrinth. I placed my hands on the pedestal. A swirling black light covered me from everywhere and in the next second my consciousness merged into a dark place where I failed to open my eyes. Achieve Emt, conquering the great Tathai labyrinth. Processing rewards. So there are rewards, for completing this dungeon. Could it be some kind of special life-giving elixir or a mythical weapon? What could it be? 300. Acquired title. Diarchy Iris Tease of Labyrinths. According to the title's analysis, it allows the user to take dominance over any labyrinth and act as its administrator by making few changes in its structures and design. It also grants authority over the guardian core of any dungeon or labyrinth. Creating your own labyrinth is also a possibility. To be honest I don't find this power much to my liking but who knows when it might help in emergency situations and to point out any abnormalities. The next moment I was able to open my eyes and found myself standing over a huge plateau covered with small dense layer of green grass, and felt that with time the entrance of the labyrinth might have gotten buried under this huge hill. It was good that no one could enter this labyrinth now and disturb mother and father as my thoughts continued like a long railway line stashed with raw coal ideas. It abruptly came to halt. The fiery rays of sun grazed my pale skin. I felt the warmth of the real sun and the cool wind of the heights as my hairs drifted with the flow. A gentle breeze brushed my cheeks and a pleasant feeling invaded my olfactory lobes. No smell of dreadful monsters. No stale air and no walls surrounding me. I looked up high, spotting a single sun in the huge vastness. It was the real clear as you blue sky. The real one which I have been longing to see. It's so blue dot dot and normal. 301, 302, 303. Afterward. Hello there. This is Noel Alicia. It's been only a short while since the third volume. And here you have the fourth one already. Isn't that amazing? I still consider myself new at this and trying my best that you enjoy the journey where our character meets new people and create new bonds with them.
This time I tried to tune up things a bit by introducing you to other reincarnates and also Hauzaki, now Alicia, mends her relationship with her little sister. I'm not sure if this book betrayed your expectations or fulfilled them, but I'll be glad so long as you derived some amount of enjoyment from it. In my mind, this work of mine is meant to be a simple, fun read with a slant towards comedy and a romantic approach towards magical fights. The atmosphere of this book's pretty different from other volumes, and as I'm sure many of you have noticed, it's more inclined towards creating a totally new personality of the main character and how she grows outside from her comfort zone. I'm not sure if you guys liked that more or less, but as long as you enjoyed it, I'm happy. 304. I have also started preparing grounds for other reincarnates as their actions to drive the storyline further and makes the plot even more interesting. A return of a strong character, who was thought to be dead, a friend searching for you with no clues, people who vest their hopes in gods and those who shake hands with the evil to throw the world in turmoil. In this race to gain power and control, whether it will be our main character who comes at the top or the ones who are willing to do anything to make their ambitions come true. Volume 5, Synopsis Alicia has finally reached her true destination, as she sets foot in the world in which she was reborn. Unfortunately, after blaming the outdated map for her getting lost in the mountains, she was suddenly dragged by a red-hooded girl to her village. In an attempt to save her from a monster horde, as Alicia later fights her way through a sacrificial ritual to save her and uncovered the true secret behind its existence. 305 As I'm sure those of you can already tell that I am a huge fan of Aizkai genre. Potent enough that after writing the fourth volume I am aiming for the fifth. I hope you're all looking forward to it. Once again, I'd like to thank my readers for letting me enjoy myself all the way through. May we meet again in the next volume of When I Got Reincarnated as a Spider with My Goddess. Noel Alicia, contact me, noelalicia14 at gmail.com. 306. See you in the next volume. 307.